It is eight minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Rick and Bubba Show. Blazing Silverman, hard at it. He's our intern today. We all hope you had a great weekend. We are bubbleless today. He is uh, scheduled to be off today, be back tomorrow. Uh, we have a number of things to discuss, look back on some busy weekends, and a whole lot more. Uh, we had a lot of action, with not only just families and life, but sports. Hey, wow, football. Uh, it's back uh, and uh, is busier than ever. Uh, so we'll break all of that down uh, and uh, maybe even take some of your phone calls. They'll be screened today. 866 Weeby Big from Blazing Silverman. Over to my left is Mr. Greg Burgess. To my right, it is Michael Hams. What's up, guys? How are y'all? Nope. Pretty good. Pretty got good. A, got a case of the sniffles. But, yeah. But okay. outside of that, Sniffle. I'm pretty good. I came in, you know, a little runny. But, um, gracious. Uh, y'all's uh-huh. weekend's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is hard to believe, I, I, and it just is, because, you know, we, we've, we've even done studies. Greg, you even brought the story to, to the table years ago about as you get older, time moves by faster, and you look up, and a year's gone by, oh, it's and, and, and the reason behind it. Um, but it does not seem like 21 years ago, 9-11 happened. No, uh, no, and that, no, was, right. uh, that hit yesterday uh, on, the, uh, wow, on Sunday. If uh, you're listening live, it's the 12th. But 21 years ago, and, and at church we were reflecting back to that and, and with the family as well. Uh, of course, that's one of the markers that you everybody remembers where they were. And a majority of, of those staff members at church, when we were just sitting around talking, believe it or not, were listening to this show. Hmm. When it happened, said we, we heard it live and, and heard y'all trying to make sense of it all. Some weren't, and they told us, hey, this is where I was. This is what I was doing. Um, but 21 years ago, 21 that's hard to believe. It is. Yeah, it's very hard to believe. Um, so you got I, you got people who were born after. Yeah. I wonder how you know hearing about it and then seeing it is one mm-hmm. one thing. Yeah. But you know in their minds, I mean, yeah. I know it was a horrible thing. Right. But you know, well, my kid, all of my kids. Yeah. They you know that they fall in that category, yeah. and we always have this conversation. Normally, they do some kind of memorial at school and those type of things when it's going ahead, going on during school. I don't know how they approached it this year with it being on a weekend, but. It, most um, most are observing it today. Yeah, most, but I don't know. And I'm yeah. sure the older you get, the more you'd be like. But because when we were kids, we'd hear things. We're just kids. We were like, yeah, whatever. yeah right, you know? yeah. But two of the three. So Jason, for Tyler, uh, was about um, he was about four. Uh, so of course he doesn't remember, uh, and and because he's so young. But then to your point, and really I have to treat all three of them like this. But JC uh, nor Reese were even born, and th- they don't know life. The yeah. way it was yeah. before. And we were talking about how lax some of the security was when it came to flying before 9-11. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> everybody had their own little travel story about how, you know, it used to be. It used to be, don't forget, you could walk in with, with a family member or a friend and see them off on the plane. Walk them to the plane. Oh, yeah. Let them, oh, let them yeah. board the plane. You know, you weren't, uh, you weren't having to go through a lot. I mean, it just changed everything. And, uh uh, just hard to believe it's been 21 years. Uh, I was telling us that's, that's crazy. I was telling a story, uh, and this is a true story. Uh, when Don Juan and I went out to um, to uh, L.A. for backstage at the Grammys for the show, and we were literally boarding the plane, sitting down, and someone came in and wanted to take a picture uh, of us le- leaving out because it was a big deal on the show. Yeah, and they let her moan to take a picture and then leave the plane. And before we taxied well, off, well, you ain't get none of that now. I mean, think about this, but think about that. That's the way it was. Yeah, prior to nine eleven. Uh, so uh, we uh, are looking back today and and remembering and honor those honoring those who lost their lives on nine eleven. It's just hard to believe twenty one years. It really is. Um, also, some other uh, some other news today. We have a new uh, AP poll out that uh, we think is meaningless right now, but you might find some that are. Uh, going to move up a spot, down a couple, whatever. Georgia grabs the new number one for the AP Top 25 poll. Alabama slides to two. Ohio State three, Michigan four, and Clemson five. Some notables uh, are Notre Dame, who is now unranked for the first time since 2017 after getting beat by Marshall. Uh, you have Texas A&M, who slid way down to 24 after getting beat by Appalachian State. I would never play App State. Never. No, they, no they're, they're known for that. I would play anybody else, yeah. but I would never put them on the schedule. No. Yeah. And then poor old App State, I, I saw them celebrating back uh, 
on campus with uh, everybody running to that little downtown area and, and the, the fan. The oh yeah, oh, and yeah. then they also the ones that were at the game took over College Station. Yeah, and just went nuts running in the streets. The streets oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but after pulling up the seventeen fourteen, uh, pulling off the seventeen fourteen upset against number six, by the way, Texas A and M. Uh, mechanical issues with the team charter forced the team to spend the night at the hotel they had slept the previous night at College Station, and they couldn't even leave. Uh, they spent about three hours Saturday night at the airport before returning to the hotel going, all right, that's it. Let's go back. And so they couldn't even leave. But um, they beat <clears throat> Texas A&M, and then Nebraska has fired uh, their head coach, Scott Frost, after one starting one and two. Uh, they were defeated by Georgia Southern. Uh, and uh, that, that I believe, let me look here, is who, yeah, uh, that's who UAB hosts this uh, coming Saturday's Georgia Southern. How about that? So Tiny Scott Frost is out. Tiny Scott's out. gone. He's Think ready. about what he had, uh, and then he goes back to, to coach where he played thinking this is this is it. And oh, he, and he was owning it. He just couldn't, couldn't turn it around, man. You know, is it is Nebraska just not? I mean, maybe they, whoever they hire may come in and win the national championship. I don't know. But it's been so long since they were, you know, relevant. Mm -hmm. Is it just something that doesn't have the allure it used to have as far I don't as getting players? I just, I, I'm seeing this year, they, they, you know, transfer portal. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, they're going to do good. They got all these kids in the portal. Well, maybe that's the problem. You've got right. a bunch of people transfer in, you throw them out there, and they're supposed mm -hmm. to be a team. But I'm just saying, you know, there was a time when Nebraska was like, hey, if you were a, a highly recruited player, you definitely had them on your list. And I, I just think those days are gone. Yeah. Because uh, Scott Frost somehow, I mean, I doubt he forgot how to coach when he considered how successful he was at Central Florida. I well, mean, he obviously can coach football. Well, and even when they brought him in, though, to me he wasn't a big name. Like, it's not a sought-after job. You don't have yeah. these big-time coaches. But him playing rumor, there. But him it. playing there. Is, That's the yeah. only reason he was hired, probably. Well, I mean, that and his success. Obviously, he had success. No, wait a success minute. They went now. Central Florida won the national championship. Obviously, he had some success there. Yeah. Okay, but but I you never well, I thought hear it was a good hire. You yeah. you never hear yeah, the big coaches rumored for that job yeah. when it does come up. When he was we'll uh, when he time. was up for that, you didn't hear. Well, my goodness, how's he going to get over this guy? Help 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 me remember. Didn't wasn't there a story when he went there about how? Some of the seniors and others, uh, they kind of were setting their ways, and and uh -huh. didn't he either let some go or he came out and was like, hey, you know, he's trying to change the atmosphere around there, and he was getting res having res some resistance yeah. uh, against. That's it. probably why they gave him four years. I guess so. You know, so I don't know. Give you time to but I guess they've decided that's it, uh, and so he's out. Uh, and then late last night, I talked with my dad, and uh, he's like, hey, what's this trending on social media? This is when all the rumors start happening on. On coaches that it's you know like for instance uh, Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M, so it's being a big thing on social media where uh, these these sports reporters or I have confirmed sources within Texas A&M that Jimbo is out or, or that I, the rumor mill has started. So now that's that's trending well, that that Jim Jimbo is on the hot seat. I will say this: they probably need to finish strong. This well, year. and that, again, it's App State, so they still win the conference, still yeah. do some good yeah. things. It's yeah. not that's, or just like last year, they lost four that. games, but they beat Alabama, so everybody yeah. didn't yeah. care. But You're if you right. really look back, they were rated higher and, and ended up losing four games. That's really not a very good year. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but they beat Alabama, so everything was okay. To your point, very, better finish strong. Yeah. You better. Yeah. Now, I don't know what strong. I don't yeah, know what the definition of strong is for them, but. That's a lot it of better money. Be. They have poured a lot of money in that <laughs> yeah. program. It better be some bold coffee strong. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that SEC West schedule starts every weekend. Mm -hmm. Woo. It's going to be hard to be strong. Rick we'll be right Bubba, back. Rick and Bubba. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts. That's why we use Upside to earn cash back on every purchase. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out, which we all do. Download the free Upside app and use promo code Bubba25 to get 25 cents or more back on every gallon of your first tank of gas. That's 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank of gas using the promo code Bubba25. And find a link at rickandbubba.com 
under the sponsors. As you gear up for the fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier and to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on linkedin.com slash Bubba to reach your network and beyond. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Bubba. That's linkedin.com slash Bubba to post your job for free or visit rickandbubba.com under the sponsors for a link. Terms and conditions apply. Folks in Dalton, Georgia, our friends at WizKid Clean Pods make smarter cleaning products where you bring the water and their cleaning pods bring the clean. A lot of you are already loving their glass cleaners, their bathroom cleaners, floor cleaners, and the very popular pet cleanup urine blast. These cleaners defend surfaces against the buildup of dirt and grime, which reduces cleaning frequency and saves you time. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Well, if we're being totally honest, maybe we don't always make the best food choices. The CDC says we should eat up to six cups of fruit and veggies a day. Now, there's zero chance of that happening. So that's where Field of Greens comes in. With Field of Greens, you have more energy, you feel healthier, and it can help you lose weight too. Join us and take Field of Greens too. To get you started, we got you a 15% discount on your first order and another 10% off when you subscribe for recurring orders at fieldofgreens.com with promo code Bubba. Fieldofgreens.com or go to rickandbubba.com. The U.S. Navy chose EnviroCleanse air purifiers to help stop COVID flus and colds from spreading on board ships and subs. Now it's cold and flu season and EnviroCleanse mineral technology is available for your home for you and your family. This is how you stop colds and flu from taking your family down. And it neutralizes allergies by destroying toxins, pollen, and mold. It's made right here in the USA. Just go to ekpure.com. Use the code Bubba for 10% off plus a free air quality monitor. That's ekpure.com, code Bubba. Okay, folks, the MyPillow team is offering a huge BOGO extravaganza, and that means buy one, get one free, on a bunch of their great products. Now's the time to join millions of Americans who have changed the quality of their sleep with MyPillow and improved their lives with other amazing products. Right now, you get to buy one, get one free pricing on bed sheets, Giza Elegance MyPillows, six-piece towel sets, a roll-and-go anywhere, MyPillows, and so much more. Go to MyPillow.com slash Bubba for our special show savings and discounts or rickandbubba.com. Mom, Dad's doing a crazy dance on the patio. Ooh, really bad dancing. Sweetie, are you okay? Vicious mosquitoes everywhere! Save yourselves! I'll call cooks before you pull a muscle. You don't have to live with mosquitoes. Get proven protection from Cook's Pest Control. Call or go online for a free quote. Cook's Pest Control. Helix Sleep mattresses are made right here in the USA, and folks, they ship right to your door for free. If you don't love it after 100 days of sleeping on it, they'll pick it up for a full refund. But based on how we feel about our mattress and what the 12,000 five-star reviews say on Helix Sleep mattresses, we know you'll love yours too. Head to helixsleep.com slash Bubba for $350 off all mattress orders. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash Bubba for $350 off, or visit rickandbubba.com under sponsor. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds offer quality sound at half the price of other premium audio brands. They have optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, making them comfortable enough for all-day wear. And with three different sound profiles and 32 hours of battery life, you can listen to whatever, whenever. It's no wonder why Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. Go to buyraycon.com slash Bubba and get 15% off your order. Buyraycon.com slash Bubba or Rick. Bubba.com. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts. That's why we use Upside to earn cash back on every purchase. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out, which we all do. Download the free Upside app and use promo code Bubba25 to get 25 cents or more back on every gallon of your first tank of gas. That's 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank of gas using the promo code Bubba25. And find a link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. 21 minutes, uh, not 21, I'm sorry, 22 minutes past the hour. It's the Rick and Bubba Show's kickoff hour. Bubba not here today, scheduled off today. 
back tomorrow. Uh, we um, have discussed the 21-year anniversary of 9-11 was yesterday. If you're listening live, it's the 12th. Uh, we have uh, mentioned that. We'll talk more about that during the main show today. Will Amit could spin in a whole lot more. Uh, we've also looked back at a very busy weekend with college football, new AP poll out. Uh, just on a personal side, um, Saturday turned into a kind of a crazy day for me. Because crazy. Crazy. <laughs> because I had a remote with our flagship station. And so I go and I do a live broadcast, which felt kind of weird because it, it was right in the middle of the Alabama-Texas game. And for those of you around the country, when Alabama and Auburn's playing, um, that's normally when some people that don't care about football want to go shopping uh, or get out and about because there's nobody out. You yeah. know, you see Tumbleweed, you know, rolling through wherever you are. And so it was uh, – the, the roads were a little little empty as I was going to the remote, and we go and we set up and uh, had a great time, actually, and, and the, the, the game was on inside. And, <clears throat> and so I'm kind of seeing that. And then all of a sudden I get a text from my oldest, uh, Tyler, and said, Dad, you want to play, play golf today? And I'm like, well, I, the, the forecast here was weird because I was talking to my dad. And he said Huntsville got just drenched over the weekend. And I'm like, but here it was like hit and miss. It, it, was, a, it was a lot of rain, and then it wasn't supposed to rain and all this. And I'm like, wasn't well, it supposed to rain, son, and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, he's like, no, let's squeeze it in. And I'm like, okay, let's go. So um, I meet him uh, at a golf course close to where I was, and we check in to play to play 18, and the Bama game was on in the clubhouse. And it volumes up, and I noticed that nobody was really on the course and when I walk in, there's uh, probably a dozen people in there looking over at the screen. And, uh, and, and I didn't realize what was going on because I was trying to keep, keep, you know, pay attention to the game. But when you're working and all that, you can't really pay close attention. But then I see that it's like down to two minutes and, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, what's happening right now? And the range of emotions, you, you know, because guys have got to talk out loud. To, to, to kind oh, of reason it. People showing off. Oh <laughs> man, it was. Hey, we don't deserve that. We don't deserve to win. And oh, then the other, the other side. Win. What's that even mean? What's that mean? The other one. The other one. Because you didn't beat him fifty to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Then I heard something about, and I, again, I we didn't see it. I didn't see it, so I don't know. But it's something about who paid the referees in this one. You know, uh, I, 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 guess, I love that. One. Did Bama get a lot of penalties or something? Well, in that yeah, game? they did a, a bunch. Yeah, they did. And then yeah. I heard somebody. Now, else. of course, Saban talked about how undisciplined they were. Yeah. So it's maybe that. I mean, it may not have anything to do with I mean, the rest. Yeah, if you're jumping off sides, yeah. like that's pretty obvious. <laughs> now, th I will say this. The play that the, the quarterback for Texas got hurt on, they mm -hmm. threw a flag. That was – I don't see the, – the Alabama defender didn't do anything wrong. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I, I that's mean, just he, a football play where he got hurt. Yeah. Was, that's all they, it was. And they called rough Sorry. The yeah, I agree. I mean, but you got to understand, I'm opening the door to this. I mean, I'm like – I'm literally having to walk through them because <laughs> there's a sitting area just outside the clubhouse where I was going in to pay for the round. And so then the, another one is, uh, hey, don't worry. They, hey, too much time's on the clock. We got this. You know, and, and everybody's kind of – I thought that. When they got it back, I said, they need a field goal. He'll yeah. take them down. These are yeah, the I things. These are the statements I'm hearing as I'm going, excuse me. You know, and then I get through them, and then I turn around, and I, and I say, oh, wow, look at here. Yeah. And then I see Bama make the last drive. They kick it. And, and then, you know, they survive uh, the, the, uh, the trip to Texas. Yeah. And and they win, uh, like most a lot of good we teams do. It. Yeah. We it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Heard some of that. Heard some of that. <laughs> hey, you always deserve it if you pull it out. Right. Okay? Hey, we deserve this. Hey, we shouldn't win this, you know. Okay. And then the one guy's, hey man, I look, I we're young. We, this is going to help us grow up a lot. We're going to grow up after <laughs> this one. And but but guys have got to talk it out. We do. We have to talk oh, yeah. it out. Well, you know. But it was doomsday to. You know, Mr. Positive over here, and that's what I'm walking through. Uh, it was just, it was, it was unbelievable. So we go, we play, and there was nobody on the golf course, and it probably was one of the most enjoyable rounds of golf uh, with with Tyler. It's just the two of us, and there is nobody out there. Well, I bet you okay, like it. well, but think about it. Who's going to play? No, you're right. I know guys that specifically who don't care anything about college football but love their golf, mm -hmm. they will specifically go to courses they don't normally get to play and mm -hmm. schedule tee times during Auburn and Alabama games. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, because yeah. nobody's out there. Yeah. And so you had that one wrapping up, and then Auburn was kicking off at, at around dinner time, yeah, no. and so people couldn't squeeze in 18 to watch them, so you had both fan bases not playing. Yeah. And so uh, – and, and look – 
Tyler was, uh, his wife, Mabry, was working. So he was like, hey, I'm free. And I'm like, well, let's just go. And I knew that Mississippi State didn't kick off till 10 p.m. Yeah, hey, buddy. So we go back, and, and Terry texts and says, hey, and she sends this to the family. I've made barbecue chicken. I've got coleslaw, baked beans. I've got, I've got the fixings. Y'all yeah. come on over if you're available. Well, Reese had gone on a, a dove hunt and fishing trip with some of his buddies, and I knew Jay. Anyway, Tyler and I, we wrap up. We're starving. We're like, let's go home. So he comes by, and we eat, and, and Mabry comes by after work. So before we knew it, we looked up. It was like 830, and we're just sitting around talking close to 9. And I'm like, well, I might stay up for the Mississippi State game. And kicked off yet. It's had, had 9 o'clock. o'clock. Yeah. So yeah. then, I, so then I go over uh, to um, I think it was Fox Sports One is that, that what it was supposed to be on, and the game that that was currently on was uh, a really close game. So they started on Fox uh, on Fox Sports Two, I believe, and so I start watching it, and and I, I'm just sitting there watching it. Before I know it's eleven eleven thirty, and I'm talking to myself, going, "What are you doing? You've got to work sound at church tomorrow morning. You know what time you've got to be up. You know you're not young. You're fifty three years old." Yeah, go to yeah, bed. Sleep. I felt like my parents were standing in front of me. Go to bed, son. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm grown. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I, I said, all right, that's it. I'm going to bed. So then I lay there, and all I'm doing is just sitting there like, thinking about, you know, just the day and, and the game, and I can't go to sleep. So I'm like, that's it. So I get up. I watch the entire game. I go to bed at one something. Oh, oh my gracious. And Wrong get up you. at six something to, to go work sound at church, and I hurt. All day. I, was say, I bet you felt good. All day. Can't do that. But how come we can get five hours of sleep? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go to bed at, you know, nine, get up at two or three or whatever we do, but we can't stay up to one and get up at six. It's a good question. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Folks, a big welcome to our new friends at WizKid Clean Pods. You're going to love these cleaning products. First, they've developed formulas that defend surfaces against the buildup of dirt and grime in between cleanings, reducing cleaning frequency, saving you time. And of course, this reduces the amount of chemicals used in our spaces. You bring the water, Clean Pods bring the clean. These are concentrated cleaning products in water-soluble pods. And you're getting your homes clean with a smarter, cleaner system, which means less plastics in our oceans, rivers, and landfills. These are high-quality spray bottles with high-quality cleaning pods that get the job done. So get yourself some WizKid Clean Pods and embrace the smarter, clean philosophy. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. That's cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Use the code Bubba or find a link at rickandbubba.com. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts. That's why we started using Upside to get cash back on every purchase. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out, which we all do. To get started, download the free Upside app, use our promo code Bubba25, and get 25 cents or more back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business. Pay as usual and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's that's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use the promo code Bubba25 to get 25 cents or more back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using the promo code Bubba25. Prices on just about everything are still rising, but thanks to CarShield, you don't have to worry about how much it will cost to fix your car when it breaks down. Their price will never go up, and they help handle everything. Here's why we we love them. CarShield offers protection plans for around 100 bucks a month that cover more parts than ever before. When you need a repair, you don't have to deal with the paperwork or the headaches. You can also count on CarShield to help take care of you when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road. 
Every protection plan comes with coast-to-coast roadside assistance, courtesy towing, and rental car options at no extra cost. So as long as your car is covered, no matter how old it is, you're protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs. Get coverage today. Go to carshield.com slash Bubba or call 1-800-391-8888 to save 10% on your plan. That's carshield.com slash Bubba or call 800-391-8888. Hey, folks, our friends at TheraBreath have some good news. If you have bad breath, try TheraBreath Fresh Breath Oral Rinse. TheraBreath is dentist formulated by Dr. Katz himself. Over 25 years ago, he created an oral solution for his very own daughter and her struggle with bad breath. Now, today, that expertise is available to your family with oral health solutions and a range of clinically proven products. The stuff works, and TheraBreath does doesn't mask bad breath like those burning alcohol mouthwashes that can actually irritate sensitive mouths. TheraBreath has a gentle yet effective mild mint flavor that is, and listen to this, alcohol-free, free of gluten, and is certified kosher, plus no added dyes or colors. If you need one more reason to believe TheraBreath is effective and worth a try, they offer a money-back guarantee. Find TheraBreath in all your favorite retail and drug stores. Just look for that bright orange cap or online at TheraBreath.com. You can also find a direct link at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors. TheraBreath confidence in every capful. Okay, folks, listen up. It's buy one, get one free time at MyPillow. The MyPillow team is offering a huge BOGO extravaganza, and that means buy one, get one free on a bunch of their great products. Now's the time to join millions of Americans who've changed the quality of their sleep with the MyPillow pillows and sheets and improved their lives with other amazing products. Right now, you get buy one, get one free pricing on bed sheets, Giza Elegance My Pillows, six-piece towel sets, rolling go anywhere my pillows and so much more great products start with a great company my pillow delivers style and comfort with the good old american products from a great american company and remember all my pillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee and a warranty they even have dog beds for your pets so what are you waiting for Go today to MyPillow.com slash Bubba for all of our special show savings and discounts. And don't miss the buy one, get one free specials. Once again, MyPillow.com slash Bubba. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't stop. All right, 25 minutes until top of the hour. It's the uh, kickoff hour here on the Rick and Bubba Show. But I just brought up me staying up so late, and the whole time I knew I shouldn't be doing it. You know, the whole time. Uh, as Mississippi State played at Arizona, 10 p.m. Central Time kickoff. I don't know. My goodness. Uh, and, um, but I just, I, and I knew it was one of those things. I mean, you know, we're not rookies, we know how we're going to feel. You know, for some and, reason and, Arizona's one of those teams I forget it's a team. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, right. I never see them play. Yeah, you know, it's like oh yeah, I remember them. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, something about the, the Arizona State I kind of are familiar with. Uh-huh. Something about Arizona I'm not. Yeah, they got a new coach and and uh, everybody's fired up. They were um, I think one and zero going into that game, but um, anyway, uh, that was just my life, and I knew how I was going to feel. And guess what? I wasn't wrong. No. I, I felt really bad all day Struggling. Sunday. <laughs> and then you got to get up this morning. So but you know good. what? I taught myself a lesson. Don't do that again. Oh, you know what? You, you know, know how to that, that, you won't, that won't be another 10 o'clock kickoff. <laughs> right. You know. right. <laughs> I had a – it was opposite of you, it was, but it was a weird sleeping experience. Okay. So went to bed at my normal time. Uh-huh. Okay. Amanda had to work Sunday morning. And usually, if I'm not already up, I'm usually way up early for every, before everybody else. So I'm usually up. I've been through a cup of coffee or two by the time anyone else starts scurrying around. Okay. Okay. Amanda's already left for work. She leaves like at 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Braden comes in at 8 a.m., kind of standing over me and goes, <laughs> hey, are we not going to church? And I thought, what time is it? And he said, it's 8 o'clock. Why are you still asleep? And I looked, I thought he was messing with me. I looked at my phone and it was 8 a.m. on the dot. And I thought, what, am I sick? Like, what happened? <laughs> did I, you have an I, alarm set or no, anything? No, I, I never did. I never set an alarm. I just wake I, up. Yeah, just wake up on the weekends. And this is the longest I've slept in 10 years. 
In ten long, years. Ten years. You you decided first it was time 10 years? I have slept past eight a.m. at least ten years. Mm. Not me. I sleep past. Question all question whether or not I was okay. Thought you might have a little something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I must have a low grade. And fever. the thing, and all I can think about is if Braden wouldn't have woke me up, would would I have just kept? Yeah, I wonder how long you just slept. I mean, goodness gracious. That's crazy. Kind of like this scene if you'd made it to 10. And it yeah. was about 9.30 <laughs> or 10 when I went to bed. That, well, that is a great question. So it wasn't question. even late. So it if wasn't late does, when if, I went to. If he doesn't wake you up, yeah. how asleep were you? Were you out? I, like, I, could you have gone to 9? The fact you know, that, to uh, listen, to, to what Greg uh, said. Look, and all, every husband can relate to this. It doesn't matter how many times you ask. There's always going to be way more lights on than need to be on, and they're going to be way louder than they need to be. And yeah. that usually yeah. wakes me up. That's, I, I mean, that's just a – not this time. Yeah. Like, I was really confused by it most of the day, going, <laughs> like, what is uh, – What you happened? To... you got to reevaluate yourself. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Um, and then fe- felt sluggish for, like, the next four or five hours because you couldn't get felt going. like I'd wasted two and a half hours of my day. Oh, okay, Good. calm down. I did. Two and a half. Well, um, I saw I where like. um, I saw where uh, Albert Pujols tied Alex Rodriguez with 696 career home runs, and then passed him hitting 697 over the weekend. So that that's there. Uh, How many great games do they there. have left? Oh boy, that's a great question. I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I just, I but mean, I, I, he's closer and closer to that 700. A couple, uh, just a couple away. Um, and okay. then and then did I see? Uh, Le'Veon Bell and and Adrian Peterson in a boxing ring, and they I were boxing, and, and Bell and knocked I, out Peterson. I, I mean, I'm talking sure. about knocked him out. Yeah, I saw he was laying on his. Why were they boxing? I don't <clears> know. <throat> what, is that one of these? I know it wasn't celebrity boxing, but they, it don't sound like they need. Well, well, I saw where they had. They were at some venue that held like a crazy amount of people, and there was a there was a reporter standing there. And they had only sold like two hundred and something tickets. Well, yeah, Who and would... so they started giving them away, and people coming filing in or whatever. I didn't even know it was happening. And why was it happening? We got two former running backs boxing. Yeah, and wow. and and I didn't know what this was. Sounds I, like McPherson's is not as good a boxer as he was a running back. <laughs> I, I I don't understand I mean, what Pearson. happened. Hey, yeah, <clears throat> I mean knocks him out good too. Wow. Of course he's trying to he's fighting it. No pun intended. He's trying to get up and 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 get his feet under him in the. Referee says that's it, calling it. Well, kind of on the same vein here. Did y'all see? You, you know how UFC fans are, right? Mm-hmm. You know they're a rowdy bunch. Sure. Well, they tried to do a, a tribute to the Queen of England. <laughs> oh no! And they put her up on the big screen, and you know, and was going to do a tribute, and the crowd starts chanting <laughs> "USA, USA," and drowning it out. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah. They were having a moment of silence, but during it, during it, during the started... moment of silence, they started chanting <laughs> "USA." Good night, alive. <laughs> You can't right. even have a moment of back silence. To, back to pool <laughs> What holes. in the world? Yeah. Back to pool holes. Oh, wow. They've got 19 games left. 19, okay. He only has to hit one every six? Yeah, I think that, so. Because that's I, a possibility, yeah, guys. I would think so. I would think so. We're, he's going to reach 700. We hope so. We hope so. All right, I'm excited now. <clears throat> don't don't mow I thought you were going to – I thought when I looked it up, I was going to see like six games left. And I was no, like, no. Because no I remember we He's did got it. got 19 games left. I remember we did it a couple of weeks ago, and, and we had, you had mentioned yeah. Yeah, they had 40. So I knew it had to be okay. somewhere around 20, 10, 20 or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, we'll see how, how that plays out. But He uh, he can hit, hit one hit a week. You yeah. Especially if they're throwing him meat so he can – Greg, so that's not happening. That? Yeah. Don't okay. don't say that. Here's something else, <laughs> huh? You know they are. <sighs> I just think it. Hey, look, you better you better embrace this. Yeah, that's all I'm telling you. Um, you talking about dang the luck too? Uh, two two pretty uh, well known players in the NFL looks like they're in a handle. So T.J. Watt, one of the Watt brothers, looks like he has torn one of his uh, like his pec area, and he's mm-hmm. out for the season in game one. He has yeah, that injury. Right. And then Dak Prescott, uh, they uh, they hosted Tampa Bay, which, by the way, uh, Brady looks just fine. It looks like um, his home struggles really bothered yeah, him on the football as, field. As Chris yeah. Collingsworth said in a very hoarse voice that, that, that <laughs> bothered me a little bit, um, he might be 45, but he throws like a 20-year-old, a uh, 25-year-old I, still. I, I watched the half, and they got a good defense too. Yeah. But Dak Tampa Prescott, Bay. on his follow-through to one of his throws, hits a defensive uh, lineman's hand or something and messes his throwing thumb up looks like he's got to have surgery on it out probably six to eight weeks after Good game night. one in game one it happens and they the lose. cowboys can't get a break can they? god poor old dak man um 
good guy too. But and and speaking of of uh, hey, what you thinking? We got a restaurant owner or a manager here that attempted to honor 9-11 victims, but instead angered the customers because he named the menu items, okay? Uh, it's located just about an hour outside of Washington, <laughs> D.C. So he tried. And he released the 9-11 themed seafood menu last week, and, and it just backfired on him. Uh, he said, I named some of the meals like first responders flatbread, 911 oysters, mm. flight 93 redirect crab dip. Oh, uh, about that one. Pentagon pie. Uh, key lime. Mention the places that were blown up maybe yeah. not. Never forget sampler and stuff like that. Um I, mean, I don't it, know if anybody get mad at him. It's just it sounds like he was trying to make it work but it never it just didn't it yeah. just didn't sound right. Yeah, it's uh a lot of the customers said, "Hey, look, it's a time of remembrance and reflection." And don't think menu items uh, and naming them after uh, the events of 9-11 um, is something that should happen. And so he quickly took them down. But that's uh, one of the main stories today is we uh, it's, we honor the 21-year anniversary of 9-11 that was yesterday. Uh, but he said, my intention was to bring, um, you know, honor to those uh, that um, were affected uh, on that horrific day 21 years ago. He said, I want to apologize for the menu I was there. It was supposed to honor those who lost so much as well as those who gave everything that day. Um, I apologize for those who it offended with the 9-11 seafood uh, menu items, weird. Sunday quite, Post. Well, it doesn't even sound, the thing you said doesn't even sound right. Yeah. I mean, that's a stretch. Mm-hmm. If it, I mean, you can't make that work. Uh, but it's a seafood place that's located about an hour outside Everybody of D.C. Him. Oh, yeah. Just couldn't believe it. Well, you, I don't know if it's doing? that offensive, but I mean, not a great idea. I don't think it's a good business model. It yeah, I don't think it's that offensive. Yeah. I just think it's kind of it just didn't work. Right. Took I it mean, down. I don't know if he was being disrespectful by any means. Probably good intentions. Trying to be sharp. What he's trying to do. <laughs> he that, he thought everybody that, was going to love it. Sometimes that'll backfire on you. Yeah. Hey, he thought, hey, people going to get me. Have, y'all, love have y'all ever done anything? I want you to think about it. Have, have y'all ever done anything that you thought was a cool idea and it backfired on you? Oh, no. plenty huh? of time. I don't know. <laughs> Say, because that's uh, what happened no. here. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Today on Hey Culligan, soft water, cleaner environment. What do you say, Greg? Hey Culligan, are you saying if I have a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, I'm also helping the environment? It sounds like you're saying it, Greg, and yes you are, because with the Culligan high-efficiency water softener, you'll use less detergent, soap, and harsh chemicals, and that's good for the planet. Now you're saying it. You bet I am, Greg. Soft water and a cleaner environment is already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Did you know a fire department responds to a fire every 23 seconds? First Alert is reminding you to be prepared by installing smoke and carbon monoxide alarms on every level and in each bedroom of your home. Don't forget to add First Alert fire extinguishers on every level plus in common spaces like the kitchen and know how to use them. Protect your whole home with safety you can trust by visiting firstalert.com and Lowe's stores today. That coffee cup you're holding, the radio dial you're turning, the sweater on your back. You may not realize it, but all these things that you use each and every day arrive to you or your local store by a professional truck driver. This week, we are showing our gratitude to the truck drivers that deliver in the rain, sun, sleet, or snow to ensure your deliveries are made, whether it's to the doorstep or store shelf. It's National Truck Driver Appreciation Week, so say thanks when you see a truck driver. Sponsored by Trucking Moves America Forward at truckingmovesamerica.com. That coffee cup you're holding, the radio dial you're turning, the sweater on your back. You may not realize it, but all these things that you use each and every day arrive to you or your local store by a professional truck driver. This week, we are showing our gratitude to the truck drivers that deliver in the rain, sun, sleet, or snow to ensure your deliveries are made, whether it's to the doorstep or store shelf. It's National Truck Driver Appreciation Week, so say thanks when you see a truck driver. Sponsored by Trucking Moves America Forward at truckingmovesamerica.com. Wendy's new French toast sticks are so delicious, some are saying that they're better than their mom's breakfast. Excuse me, did you just say Wendy's new French toast sticks are better than my breakfast? Mom, is that you? 
answer the question. I said some people are saying that because they're so crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside and perfect in every way. Uh-huh. And what do you think? I think it's time to tell people to choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new sweet and crispy homestyle French toast sticks. That's still not an answer. At participating U.S. Wendy's during breakfast hours. Dell Technologies semi-annual sale has arrived, and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus, get amazing deals on server, storage, and cloud solutions, as well as top work accessories, including docks, monitors, and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. Folks, a big welcome to our new friends at WizKid Clean Pods. You're going to love these cleaning products. First, they develop formulas that defend surfaces against the buildup of dirt and grime in between cleanings, reducing cleaning frequency, saving you time. And of course, this reduces the amount of chemicals used in our spaces. You bring the water, Clean Pods bring the clean. These are concentrated cleaning products in water-soluble pods. And you're getting your homes clean with a smarter, cleaner system, which means less plastics in our oceans, rivers, and landfills. These are high-quality spray bottles with high-quality cleaning pods that get the job done. So get yourself some WizKid Clean Pods and embrace the Smarter Clean philosophy. Get 10% off any purchase plus free shipping with code Bubba at cleanpods.com slash Bubba. That's cleanpods.com slash Bubba. Use the code Bubba or find the link at rickandbubba.com. We've learned that our busy schedule does not mean we have to compromise on wholesome, delicious meals thanks to HelloFresh. HelloFresh takes care of the shopping and prepping, which saves time and stress on those hectic weeknights plus they save you money hello fresh is not only cheaper than the grocery store it's also 25 percent cheaper than getting takeout hello fresh lets you choose from over 30 weekly recipes and 70 seasonal and convenient items every week including quick and easy meals to delicious snacks and sides and just because summer's coming to an end that doesn't mean the fun has to hello fresh now has family friendly baking kits Featuring do-it-yourself sweets the whole family can get on like peanut butter cup brownies with chocolate, coconut, ganache, frosting. Get 16 free meals across seven boxes with the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. That's the code Bubba at HelloFresh.com slash Bubba. Or go to RickandBubba.com. You'll find them right there under the Sponsors button. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, there is no other. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Waking on that blubber. Rick and Bubba. All right, 10 minutes until top of the hour. It's the Rick and Bubba show. This portion of the show sponsored by a to bcom slash radio. We want to talk to you, uh, all the business owners in our audience tuned in right now, the uh, the managers that run those businesses. We've got some good news for you, especially if gas is a big expense for your business. You know, you now have access to the A to B fuel card, which until now was only available for fleet owners. This fuel card is accepted anywhere they take Visa. You can use your A to B fuel card for maintenance, repairs, and more too, or restrict your card to just uh, f- fuel purchases for your, like your employees to use. Uh, A to B will even watch out for the misuse and suspicious transactions that you need to know about. But these fuel cards uh, are more than just saving you money. A to B also will make it easy for you to manage all your fuel and transportation-related costs to, uh, to help Quickly prep your taxes and are um, always there to help you with 24-7 sur- uh, support that uh, will answer any questions uh, in seconds. Uh, you can um, work hard for your business, as you all do each and every day, and now you need to have a fuel card that's working for you, uh, and that's what A2B slash radio does. Go there today. Uh, for a limited time, you'll get a $50 credit. That website, again, is A2B.com slash radio. You can get a $50 credit. You can also find a link at rickandbubba.com under sponsors. There's no credit check required. I actually have a friend of mine that owns a company uh, and called me. Um, it's one, he's one of those friends that's like one of your really, really close friends, 
And but with when he just calls me in the middle of the day, uh, it's like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Because it's normally a text or something like that. And he just wanted to know about A to B. He goes, hey, A to B. I, we, we need some help here. We got too many trucks running. What's going on? You and said, I got you right here. He did. I Flip did. Card. I, and he said, thank you. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, all right. So as, well, we are, as we are rolling <laughs> through tonight, uh, Russell Wilson goes home. The Broncos go to Seattle for Monday night football. That's going to be kind of weird for him, I bet. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, the um, Broncos and the Seahawks. For Monday Night Football, if you're interested at all, mm. that. didn't give NFL anything yesterday. Yeah, I will try to give a little bit tonight. The U.S. Open is o- over, it so is. finally, who so won? A, who won all that? Carlos Alcaraz. Okay. Um, as as some of my friends call him, they can't get his name right. They call him Alcatraz. Okay. His name is Alcaraz. He like is the next best. He, the, you're all over that, by mm. the way. That was brought up. Um, he's the next best thing. To, by the way, number one player in the world now. So wow. that that got him. There, but I'll give that a look. Now, the Baker Mayfield going back and playing the Browns didn't work out for him yesterday, I saw. Yeah, they got beat on the last second field goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he played okay. Did he? Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of really good games yesterday. I I, I, I watched a lot of highlights. So yeah. I, only, I watched the first half of the Bucks and the Cowboys, but the rest of the games I just watched highlights. Mm-hmm. So, I, it, my dad was very upset um, Packers got about the, uh, the Titans and the Giants. Uh, the Titans giving one away. I, I didn't get to see any really either, but I did see that the Falcons were, were beating the Saints pretty good. And then all of a sudden I see the Saints won. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the uh, the Dolphins, a big win. Um, and then the, the Steelers and the and the the uh, the Bengals was a good game. Uh, the Colts, Texans tied. So, yeah, there was a lot out there. Something, and then <clears throat> the Vikings won, Bubba. Yeah, how about they that? Beat, they beat the Packers. Yeah, uh, something I noticed. This mm-hmm. has nothing to do with the quality in which they will play the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I saw where our Washington Commanders, yeah, um, got their first victory, and I got to say, I like their unis. Yeah, I'm not a bit. I've never liked Washington's colors or the uniforms, and I there was something about it's them. Just weird this weekend. The I like. I, well, I know, weird. Greg, but that's what it is now. So yeah, well. it's same thing with the. The Cleveland Indians. I'd rather. What are they? The I, I, Crusaders I or something? No, I don't think they're the Crusaders. Or something are they? weird like that. <laughs> what are they? I don't even know. Commanders. No, no, I'm talking the about the Cleveland, Cleveland Indians. Indians. Oh, they're oh, the, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Um, Cleveland. Nah, that's Cleveland. A, that shows you that it's just hard to to get your brain. I think it's around. ridiculous and stupid. That's what I think it is. You know, Guardians. 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 I, I like Commanders better than Guardians. Yeah. With the Guardians mm. of the Galaxy, is that what they are? Yeah. Ooh. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I if I was a Cleveland Indian fan, I would not pull for them now. I don't know. I saw Guardians. I saw Get a, out of a, here. a highlight this morning from the Commanders, and uh, I it got a very it got look a lot like Minnesota would look on yeah. the college front. Yeah, just yeah, it's pretty cool the, helmet. Of course, there's Carson Wentz with another team. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that pan out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's why I said about they won, but again they played the Jaguars, so you know he'll that be hurt mean anything. by week five. Hmm. Thank you, Greg. He will. Um, gracious, you know, for those of you that think you have um, like family issues or, or daddy issues, have you heard the latest from Britney Spears on her dad? No, she, um, you know, the, who needs tabloids when, when she just puts on Instagram how she feels? Oh yeah, uh, she uh, said, and I'm gonna. I'm going to clean it up here. I hope my dad burns in hell. Uh, well, that's well, usually that's an awful. indication. I'm not a psychiatrist, but that's an indication there's a problem. Yeah, right. Um, Pretty specific. She claims, well, I mean, I don't know about sitting down working that out. She claims that she um, – Let me ask, she when had, she was she saying that, the, was she doing a weird dance wearing a thong? Or she, she just come out and say it? Because that seems to be her thing. She gets yeah. on uh, whatever they were, social, one of them deals. And right. Half naked doing weird dances. Right. She claims that she um, was made to have multiple MRIs. Uh, all kind of medical procedures. Uh, she doesn't know why. She wrapped up uh, her little post saying what I had just said about her dad. Uh, so if you, you know, I'm not saying you need to always compare yourself to Brittany, but if you think you got it rough, just take a look at that. <laughs> hey, that's a mess. That's a mess. Good night. And, and we got to play it out in the public. Eye. Yeah. But oh, that, of course you do. I mean. Huh? You know, her sons and yeah. her at odds. And, I mean, you get they just put it out there. Yeah. How about that? Um, I have a question for you, one Greg Burgess. Uh-huh. I saw a post from your beautiful wife about being able to just hang out with the dogs, and yeah. and it was um, Mr. Buddy and Marty on yeah, the back. Did you see porch. the pictures? I did see the pictures, and I thought about them a lot 
coming through the woods and running and going oh, yeah. crazy. Were you involved with that on the back porch? Were you yeah, back I did there a with them? Yeah, boy. We've also got another visitor. Oh, you do? Yeah, we seem to look in, and another dog has shown up. You know, oh, really? I have this thing about my house. It must be a magnet. Uh huh. So, but she won't let you get near her. And I think it's a female from from what I can see. Okay. And uh, of course, Lisa just just real skittish know, dog kind of. She loves the dogs. Uh huh. Yeah. So about midnight. 30 this morning oh no you know how you you wake up but then you and you go well, where, what and she's not there and you hear people walk she's she's it's raining so she's looking out the window because uh-huh. the little the little dog it'll come up and then if we go out it runs off and it, it don't like the other it'll run off from the other dogs too so, and she's like oh it's raining and i and she put food out for it. of course marty ate it <laughs> and she did that a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> so goes, Marty, that's not for you. So you never know if Marty's going to be there because right. a lot of times he goes to his other home. Yeah. Well, he'd gone to his other home. Then we look; he's out there laying beside that food he ate. <laughs> and but she, uh, he's got it good. He's eating. But two anyway, places. so <clears throat> all places for stray dogs evidently is my house. And this one here, she she she's skittish, and Lisa was worried to death about her at midnight thirty. No. Yeah, and Lisa's got to get up early too. She goes and keeps pace. And I said, Do you realize? She says, I'm just, I, I just, I can't sleep. Oh, so she was looking because she was afraid it was out. But fine, when I left, it was uh, on the sleeping on the rug outside the back. But if you get near her, she cuts out. And what kind? I uh, some mutt. I'm not sure. So it's gonna be y'all's dog. Mm-hmm. I don't know unless she she's got to warm up a little bit. Next thing you know, you're gonna be taken to the vet, get checked up. Oh, but yeah. If you can catch it. Yeah. Right now, she she won't let you. Does get it look? Near. Is it just real skittish? Kind this, of yeah, scared. She is. She, she's cowered oh, down. Don't know it's, what that thing's been through. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when Buddy showed up as a puppy, he was playing and carrying on. Yeah. This one here, that's that's a different situation. But it may be Nopey. It, well, it could, could be. be. It could be Helmsy. But I don't know where it came from. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, we're we're isolated. You know, mm-hmm. I don't have somebody like, uh, in a neighborhood next door where I can go. Well, I'll tell you why, Greg. Because everybody, you are known to be the big-hearted animal guy. Oh yeah, well, drop that's it what off. This is about drop hey, it well, off there. Well, drop it off mine there. Mine don't compare to Lisa's because I wouldn't have been up at midnight thirty looking out the window for it. I can tell you that. So y'all have a new dog. Congratulations. No, don't go that far. Do you but think? Anyway, do you, think just, Marty, you have a name for it yet? No. You think Marty and Mr. Buddy will fight over the new girl? I don't. I don't. I don't even. I don't know where it's going. That's in your house, it's, inside it's, your house. Yeah, that's where it's going. We'll go run. inside. I can tell you that. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. They're shoulder high in some places. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know if I got something on me, or you know, I'm kind of allergic. To, I've got grass allergies anyway. So. Never had that problem before, but that while I was driving the tractor. But you know, I guess getting out probably. That, if I'm it. in the little, if I'm in the glass, if I'm in the little glass bowl, everything's but, but, good. But if you, know? you get over and start running your hand across the blades that have been through every kind of grass <laughs> gods you ever created, yeah. that could be tied to that. that. Yeah. I'm gonna bet that's it. Bet that's it. My left eye got blood red. Oh, buddy. Blood like I'd been punched, blood red. Oh. And I thought, well, this is bad. Is God punishing yeah. you for running right. out of the house? That's it. <laughs> I thought, golly. So you know that. that was, you notice I got sunglasses on a couple of shots just yeah. just in case. Yeah, it's still, it it's looks still, fine now. It's still a little itchy today, watering a little bit. Did you so. panic like, hey, I got to get out of here? Or what? Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went back and took a shower like I was, you know, been in a toxic spray. Right. You know, it's like hazmat. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He got sunglasses. <laughs> there, there, there's sunglasses. Nobody again, wants to see your red eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, I thought. Phew. I was panicked though a little yeah, bit. Well, look, look, but I can't believe you were sending pictures. What are you doing? <laughs> well, it was. It, I wasn't thinking. I, bet See, I didn't. I bet it was a little cold when you got back. Uh, well, it's it's been so busy. Don't right. nobody noticed I got back. You know? <laughs> That's what you're I just stayed yourself. out of the way. No, any time that our wives are in the middle of some handle and we and we go off to the to, it, it's not it's not joyful. It's something we had to do. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, yeah. this did have to be done. Yeah, I mean, that was. Some of those ruts wasn't going to make it. Hey, what? We're getting ready for what? <laughs> Good night. Look at this text from Gary. We got a barn door broken down there or something. <laughs> Golly. He's I better, I better I need water to go. shooting up 10 I, foot high. Good, Good night. Man. We got a water issue down no there. No way to cut it Just off. don't be specific. The water issue might be the pond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that need fish taken out of it. <laughs> hey, we got an issue at the farm. Wow, we got too many of these, you know, you know small half pound bass when you get out of there. Rick, 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 who am I? <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't send pictures right. of what a, what a great time you're having. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Because <laughs> you'll, you'll get a, a boy text right back. Well, I'm glad you're having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, 
it was a yeah. We we'll we'll, we'll come back and, and we're talking about the the weekends too and, and some of the stuff that went on. Um, <laughs> I guess y'all. I guess some other people uh, escorted uh, out. Uh, yeah. So so we, so we got uh, so some people are at at, at the graduation ceremony. Right, <laughs> Rick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to go back this again. <laughs> back, but, I mean, no, we don't. You don't send happy pictures from it. No, I, I, that's a mistake, buddy. Well, I tell you one thing. Can't tell you how what the, how how this solace is right now. Just <laughs> me, God, and the tractor. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Come on in, Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler, all here. You can reach us at 866-WE-BE-BIG, can't have nothing. Earning her degree in common sense from Rick and Bubba University and an unnamed intern. We'll try to get her. At 866-WE-BE-BIG. Uh, as we start this hour, and we're looking back over the weekend. So anyway, I, I did do that. Uh, I did learn that the Peach Pass, if you don't have it, you got to get out of that lane. And I uh, begrudgingly. Uh, got out of the lane and got over there by the else. Now, was I in the lane too long? We'll see. Uh, I, so, let me ask you this. What is the ticket price? Well, let's that? see. We got a caller right here. I do want to tell you this. And I, you go from, what is it called? H what? HSV line? Or what? what when you can, HOV. Whatever. HOV. If you have more than two, two or more, mm-hmm. you can ride in that lane. Well, that's what I was doing. And then it turned into yeah. Peach Pass. And, what, and what you know, and, and my accountability son – Showed me that I was, there was, uh, what is a peach pass, Dad? And then we got out of the line. Now, did we get out? <laughs> did we get out in time? Uh, Leon in Alabama. Leon, how are you? Uh, Green Acres, gentlemen. Hey, how about it, Leon? Go ahead. Go ahead. Beware the peach pass <laughs> if you ain't got the pass. Uh, yeah, I got a $48 ticket myself. I don't know how long I was actually in that lane. I went from HOV just like you did. Right. And uh, then all of a sudden, I had those little rails on my right hand side. I couldn't get out. Oh yeah. Uh, but my yeah. ticket was forty eight bucks. Well, so is it I, I more? Tell you that's let, worth me, it. let me ask you this: Is it more <laughs> based on how far you drive probably, in that lane? If probably. Every time you pass a camera site, yes, does probably it so. add up? Yeah. Probably yeah. So. Every every time you have an opportunity that you could have exited, hmm. right. hmm. then you're going to get bigger a bigger ticket. That hurt. But yeah. anyway, well, look, Rick, I'm thinking your ticket's going to be eight hundred dollars. No, look, how about this? <laughs> I didn't understand it, uh, and and I and this was told to me many years ago by a judge in Panama City. Ignorance of the law uh, does not make me Ignorance innocent. Not bliss. You're right. And so uh, once I discovered that I was where I wasn't supposed to be, I did move as soon as I could safely get over. So uh, so anyway, uh, I will I will I will pay the fine if I was in it too long. Rick, they actually say you can go online and search your tag uh, <laughs> on, the, on their website, right. and and you'll see that what invoice you're getting. Look, that's uh, fine. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's fine. ticket fee or, plus penalty for using the line. I think I'm gonna be going to Atlanta <laughs> enough over this this summer, and and with as long as I got one living there, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get one. Yeah, you got to. But but, it, but I will say this: this is how they but get Rick, you. Rick, that's how they get you. You go on the site looking that, that admits guilt. Well, so but, that, but, but, but listen to this: they start looking for your tag. What, what do we often talk about? We often talk about. Speed traps. That's yep. when the speed limit goes, say, from 70 down to 45 within a... Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick Six minutes and Bubba. past Ooh, the hour. The knees. Rick and Bubba Show No Name Studio is burning again for another day. We're thankful that you are here. Uh, we start this hour... Uh, you know, this began 21 years ago uh, when uh, we were yesterday attacked uh, on 9-11. We started playing the national anthem to start this hour. And today, that tradition will continue.
It is eight minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show, and we are excited to start another hour. Uh, Bubba is out today. He uh, should be back with us tomorrow. Uh, Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, already giving you a kickoff hour. All along the Rick and Bubba platforms. And look in there, Rick and Bubba University students, Blazing Silverman, taking your phone calls today at the number that I just gave you. Uh, 866, we be big, and we'll chat with you today. Break down a busy weekend. A.D. Van Adler settles in. He's ready for the YouTube experience uh, and also cranking out all kinds of content live and uh, archived. If you have not subscribed to the Rick and Bubba YouTube channel, doesn't cost anything, but do that uh, so you get the alerts. It also helps us uh, in some of our ongoing uh, business uh, opportunities, which keeps this, that, that's what fuels the old bus. Uh, so anyway, uh, subscribe today there at rickandbubba.com. Uh, the guys, as I said, have finished their kickoff hour, and uh, I join them now. Uh, Bubba is uh, – today was something that was already scheduled. Uh, you know, after Bubba had some uh, health setbacks, uh, they had some testing they wanted to do today to, to you know, just check and rule out any, any other problems or maybe try to find – uh, a problem that still needs to be dealt with, and he's doing that testing today, and he should be back tomorrow. So we, we hope so. Um, I will tell you that um, the, um, the 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 whole thing of, of locking in today, looking back. So I, I will say, and I know y'all may have mentioned this briefly in the in the kickoff hour. A couple of things I will say that the debut of the golden ticket seats exceeded my expectations. I agree. Mine mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I, I thought that went very smoothly. Uh, I thought I it. Uh, I thought it felt uh, fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did not feel, you know, like uh, intrusive. It, it it added to the energy. It's definitely a different setup, and in ways, I think for the golden ticket seats for them, it might even be a better experience. Right? Maybe. Uh, it's uh, it. You, well, you're right here in in the action. Uh, you know, you don't have a row in front of you. Uh, or anything like that. You, you, that. You've got your own seats. I think eight people are easier to handle than 12. Uh, and um, so that seemed to work a little smoother. We only had one guy that had to go to the bathroom yeah, uh, because we cut it down to only yeah. two hours being here, so you shouldn't have to go to the bathroom as much. Yeah. So and he seemed to get there and get back somewhat. He missed a segment. He did miss one segment. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was my next question, so there's the answer. Yeah, yeah. but they sta- they were back in time, but just stayed in the hall. Yeah. Was it wild? Yeah. Right, okay. The segment was rolling. Um, I, I thought us finding some of the old signage. I thought Bubba did a great job getting all that up and Speedy, the stuff that you did, made that uh, made that easier. Um, and and we'll get it out on all of our platforms today. But uh, we 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 actually shot some stuff and Speedy put it on his his social media. But we'll get it out on the Rick and Bubba stuff uh, this week, so you can see really a, a little montage of what it looked like for the first group to come yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that uh, that that was. Uh, that was fun to watch. Um, I, I I left there saying I I, I think um, I think this will work. I think I think it'll be. Good. I, mm-hmm. I'll be I'm gonna be straight up. This is as honest as I can be. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Yeah. I left there going, wow, okay, yeah. that was a great experience. Yeah. It, it was one of those things. I was very very concerned about it. Like like you, I, I honestly there were times when I was thinking of of the potential pitfalls. There was one time that I thought we'll be so frustrated with this, I know. and the audience will be so frustrated with it that we'll just decide this is a part of our history. It's over. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it, yeah. it but it worked. No, it, it was, did. It, it, it did. Well. It worked, it did. and yeah. and that's good because that's yeah. one of those things that we can do that uh, a lot of places can't do. And I even had some <clears> of them <throat> that that told me that have been. We only had one couple, one two. They weren't a couple, but they were friends. Uh, two women who um, who said that they were the only ones of the eight that had ever been in, in the you the great eight the great mm-hmm. eight they never they had already been to the old place and they said that um, in some ways this was better oh wow well you know they got big boys so they like yeah. that yeah. Oh, he's yeah. in here with them he's right there and smiling. if you've been to the other one before you like to say something different I'd like to see something different. sure sure and I and I like the fact that six of the eight had never never been to the golden ticket seats ever yeah yeah mm-hmm. I like that I like new people getting getting a chance to try it so. So we'll work through that. Speed I, I was mad about it. I'm not sure. What? No, I don't say stuff like that. <laughs> but but I but I did also though. I think we got this sense, and and Blazing Silverman did a good job, uh, and we were fortunate to have uh, Mark after dark as well. But Mark I, AD. I, I did find myself thinking, yeah, you do need interns. That, yes, that, that, you yeah, that's a requirement. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. It's yeah. because it's um, everybody else. Um, 
it, it, it is shocking sometimes when I tell people how small our company is uh, and how mm-hmm. it's just a, a band of dudes, everybody taking multiple responsibilities and making it happen. But you can get to the point where there's it's impossible if you do everything you have to do yeah. mm-hmm. if, if something else is added. So, Well, so, I think we did a good job as a staff yeah. of not saying, mm-hmm. you know, oh, man, everything's going to be great because then if it's not, then you're, like, disappointed. We had ourselves in such a frenzy of the problems that we encounter daily, yeah. like bathroom yeah. mm-hmm. and, and, you know, booking guests and them finding the right door and all that. We had worked ourselves up so much that when all that worked out great, we were it like, really all did. right, this is, this is good. And the, and the eight, the Nobody great, the great eight were low maintenance. I they think were, that's a key too. They had a, that's a huge a key there. The time. bit meter was very low and they, that, and, that was and, a rock star <laughs> bunch. And I yeah, love their, their, was, their energy was. Uh, was great. Yeah, and yeah. and we were. fed off that. It was yeah, just good, a good day. Good it, was. it was a good day. Well, you know what? That's a great point, and I think we need to use that as, as a coaching opportunity. Their attitude probably had the most to do with it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, they were great. And their attitude was was fantastic. It was. Well, I think we had something to do with it. We had beat down them uh, so much <laughs> on, on what to expect yeah. that I think they were even surprised. Well, <laughs> Sherry, we pretty much told them they were going to be miserable. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. My, my wife has been studying me now for, you know, Really, if you count the time that we dated and were engaged for thirty years, and she said, "I've noticed you'll you'll protect little Rick Rick," and and I, I said, "She goes, you are a doomsday guy on everything. Your team's never going to win. <laughs> right? Every well, every, every, every vacation is going to be a disaster. Yeah. And uh, and the opening of the golden ticket seats is going to be a nightmare. And she said, then when that doesn't happen, you, I said, well, I'm protecting myself from disappointment. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's and, good. Uh, so, so anyway, <laughs> and Gary and his pies added a lot to good. it. Hey, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, good old pies. Yeah, that that was a nice little ad for them yeah. to More get left, for man. them to get Gary will of meat pies all oh, in one visit. Yeah. You kidding it's me? Right. You kidding? Yeah. So that that it, I, huh? I I went into the weekend on a very high note. Uh-huh. And I needed that because I would deal with Atlanta all weekend. But, oh, uh, no. Uh, and, hey, uh, drive. Isn't that fun? Let me tell you, Atlanta can take your good attitude and ruin it. <laughs> oh, Rick. <laughs> you know? Rick, you know, I've never seen anything like it. Good <laughs> night, <laughs> Atlanta. Good. Well, good night, 285. <laughs> Welcome to Atlanta. And, and there's no good. It ain't like you go, well, this way nah. is not good. Let's go the other way. It's bad, too. <laughs> here comes here comes the, the statement that is <clears throat> that is Atlanta. Nothing's easy. Nothing. Nothing. Hey, you know what it is, Rick? Stress. Everything's hard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's I mean, getting across trying, the streets hard, right, trying right. to go from one <laughs> spot right. to another. Right. I can't believe that that many people are willing to go to the aquarium. <laughs> I don't know how. You, I mean, you can't be. You, can, you there's no way you had a good time. No, still people. <laughs> I, mean, it's a, I mean, just the trying to get in there. You got a park. At one point, Sherry said, "If you say one more time, we're all here to see fish." Yeah. Okay, because I kept going. So this many people just want to see fish. Yeah. I mean, we're just gonna see fish. There ain't even a ride. <laughs> You know, I know, and uh, I, I mean, know. I mean, it's a great. She said, "Rick, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, this is a little nostalgia." Rick, we'll watch to be, swim to be here. We took our kids. I said, "I know we took our kids here." That I'm talking about that in my mind too. I've already been here. <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. So it's, I'm gonna see these same fish. That's a big aquarium. A lot of fish. Yeah, tons Tall of beluga long. whale. Hey, they're good. Tremendous amount of water. Yeah, lot of water. <laughs> hey, lots of water. Millions of gallons. Imagine having to keep yeah. all that up. Yeah. yeah. By the way, though, they they got to tone down that it's really. Let's not have. I don't want to walk in a place and the whole time I'm there, you make me feel like I'm evil because I'm human. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. You're, you're ruining all. The- and y'all ruined the dolphin show, by the way. Oh no. That ruined it. <laughs> We're back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. A mile. Over a hill, over and you here. can't see it coming, and and somebody's hiding in a bush over there. If I could tell my brothers and sisters who are in charge of Atlanta, there and maybe maybe I missed it. Okay, maybe I did. Okay, because I want to give benefit of the doubt. There needs to be something that says HOV line is ending, Peach Pass is beginning, because it's the same line. Rick, I think it does. Does it? (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Rick, I'm going to guess they put some pretty big signs up about it A lot of Peach Pass. A lot of Peach Pass. There's rate cards. It's just weird, y'all. It's a lot to look at. We try not to get killed out here. Can't look at all that. What do they tell you, Rick? Don't drive distracted, right? Yeah. So what do they do? They put signs for you to read all over the highway. I mean, don't Think drive distracted. It. Peach Pass, here's our rate card. Lawrenceville, 10 bucks over here. Where am I going? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very confusing. Rick, you got direction signs. you got speed limit signs. you got reader boards Good up there. Good gracious. you got outdoor all over the My place. Goodness. I mean, how do you drive and not be distracted? Yeah, there's an amber alert. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. Are you spinning this and playing the victim is your role? That's, that's a good that's a good. Well, it, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to be selfless and help others. Right. <laughs>
Uh, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But I want to thank my son for holding me accountable right. and quoting uh, how to be a man the forty day journal. Yeah. All right. Good. So so let's uh, let's uh, yeah, uh, just talked about integrity. <laughs> well, we we did stay there, didn't we, son? Uh, let me pull right on over here and cut this guy off. All right. So anyway, um, another thing from this weekend. Um, God God love the idea of having a vehicle that you can take the top on and off of. Yeah. Hey, that looked good on paper. And there's a lot of, you see all these happy videos of people doing yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, um, but, uh, <laughs> happy videos. So, and, Rick, and they look hey, like Rick. they're having a blast. Rick. I mean, they, 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 Rick, they, welcome to Jeep life. Right. And then they'll show you a video of them taking it on and off, and it looks like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're I, having a party. I'm like, man, yeah. look, no, no offense, two girls did it. Yeah. You know I mean, they, they've got one of those where two girls are surfing or whatever. It looks so easy. And, uh, and it looks so, so easy. It just looks, it so, and it looks like so much fun. Yeah, everybody's well, smiling. But the problem, Nobody's sweating in yeah. those. You ever know? Oh, boy, no. I'll tell you, there's one large daddy that sweated his rear end <laughs> off yesterday afternoon. So we had taken the top off. Now, when you're taking the top off of a Jeep, we, and my son has a soft top, uh, I think it's like a 2011 Jeep Wrangler or whatever. So when we're taking the soft top off, and we all know we do it, and I know human nature and I know me. I'm not, you know, we're all delusional to some point. I just don't want to be crazy delusional. <laughs> I realize as we're having fun taking the top off, we're not paying attention like we should. Yeah. I don't pay attention really well anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, as, as, a, as I saw a group email go out about this class that I teach on Sundays, they're trying to get the schedule of who's teaching when. And in it, it says, let's not bother Burgess with this because he, he's constantly distracted. Let's just tell him when he's teaching. Yeah. That's how I operate. Yeah. I told my wife, I follow instructions very well. You know what I mean? But but I, I don't expect me just to come up with this own plan. So we're all so happy we're about to ride around on this perfect day, mm-hmm. you know, s- several weeks ago, that we were so excited that when we were taking the soft top off, and to get it off, we celebrated, we were excited. We, we Remember I told the story, mm-hmm. we drove around singing songs about country oh, roads. Yeah. Right? And it was so good. Take me home. And then all of a sudden we realized that our son turns 16 tomorrow and he's going to have to take a driver's test in this vehicle, and there's rain in the forecast all week. So, and if there's one thing you don't want, Rick, is a state trooper with a wet notebook. No, uh, you know what else you don't want, even if it's a clear day? I don't think troopers want to ride with the top on. <laughs> Probably not. You know what I mean? Because that hat will fly I'll, right I'll, out. Yeah. You know what I mean? start to say, that hat is not it's really. It's not a wind hat. Yeah. No, it's not. But, but anyway, so, so, so yesterday, you know how you do that? Now we got to do it. I said, we need to get that top back on. Nobody wanted and it. Nobody, you bring it up. It's like you bring in, you know, we're going we're gonna to turn loose a, a rabid, you know, skunk through here. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, we. We got we got a car in the garage. We got to get the top back on. So so we're watching the rain and trying to watch the window. And then 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 foolishly, someone says, "Well, it, it didn't look like it was that bad." <sighs> now I don't know when the last time anybody's ever tried to accomplish something with a teenage boy. <laughs> so me and you know he's at that age we've all made fun of on there where you know he speaks and grumbles and. You know, of course, he said you're in the peach pass lane, really clear. Yeah. But, but anyway, so I, I said, I said, hey, we got to work together on this now, okay? You know, because I, I, and I'm gonna get frustrated in the process, and it's not gonna go smoothly. No, I, no, Dad, I got YouTube. I can watch a YouTube video. I said, you know, the YouTube video though, they don't show you the intricate details like where these things fasten. They don't get a good camera shot of that. And I've looked at the instruction manual, and you might as well throw that and start a fire with it. <laughs> I mean, it's a bunch of cartoons with errors pointing places, but there's nothing close up that says this thing attaches this way. Mm-hmm. So we get to the point, we follow all the different steps, and then we had a couple of start overs and do overs. And then we get to the point to where it should be fastening. I said, son, there's nothing else left. And we, we got into various, you know, moments of, of where, you know, we didn't love each other like we should have. <laughs> and, I, and so I said, and, you know, everything you say, The hour, no Bubba. He'll be back up. All right, so uh, unpacking another thing I want to talk about too, guys, uh, gentlemen, as we still uh, continue to get settled in, have been at this studio for less than a year, but our first year is almost here. It we're, is. we're nine months into the new place, um, and, and there's a lot of change. And, uh, you know, so l- first of all, let's say Golden Ticket Seats debuted two thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, two yes. thumbs up. But okay. it's early. 
It's but you got it. We're let's don't let's don't do like everybody did Florida and go ahead and rank them at number twelve. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's hold on. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 get past more than one game. Right. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so um, all, really, all everybody should have said about Florida when they beat Utah is, you know what, Napier is probably a good hire, and, and that that team's looking better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, as opposed to giving them the national championship after they won the East. But anyway, so um, I don't know. Hyperbole is completely out of control. Yeah, it's like they snapped their fingers and the, the Gators went spurrier. Yeah, like, right. And, oh, man. Where's Danny Werfel? Hey, hey, the program looked better. It did. But anyway, but then, of course, we'll get into Kentucky look great, too. So didn't see any football, but I will well, – I can – A lot of upsets, there's, right? But there's a, a lot, lot of upsets. things I, there's a lot of things I know about football and fan bases – Without me seeing one play, I pretty much know what the narratives are all, with every team, because I've been around yeah. for for a long, oh, long time. Yeah, right. I, yeah, I know. I know that Bama beat themselves. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I know that Texas <laughs> didn't have anything to do with it. No, uh, no. that that Alabama the played bad, had a bunch of penalties. Look, I did not see one thing of the game. I don't know anything about the game. But well, when I, ago when I, when I see a close game or a loss by Bama, I know the other team had nothing to do with yeah. it. Yeah. I know that I know that the Bama. Uh, it's all if give we, it away. Hey, hey we gave it away. Yeah. We we played sloppy. Didn't we're, deserve we're, to we're, win. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm gonna be honest with you. When they got the ball back and it was over a minute left, and all they needed was three, I said it's over. Yeah, right. I said they they'll get this. Well, that's three. what great teams yeah. do. But. Yeah. Bryce Young, wow. So anyway, um, but <laughs> he's pretty okay. pretty calm and cool. <laughs> yes. So so I get I get to the the one thing that we talk about a lot the ever changing routine here at the studio dealing with the building and you know the company and all that. So. And I don't know what we need. At one time, all I needed, I needed a card, and that would that would take care of my day. Okay, swiping it, an access er, card, a, yeah. access card. Then I was told I need an access card and a key mm-hmm. because we now have a door that that doesn't have an access card, and you got to have a key for that door to get back in once you go to the bathroom, and then you're back to cards again or a code. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Today, I, y'all watched me going in and out because yeah. nobody had told me the current state of the door that that, that requires y'all a key. Y'all discovered it yeah, this it's morning. New. It's yeah, new. yeah. So, so I, I, I get. Like I realized that I can't because y'all know what I was doing, and I'll just be honest. I was just unlocking the door, going to the bathroom, then locking it back. Yeah, I was not. Going, I was not going to add a key to what I was doing. Yeah, That's know. what I was doing. Yeah, and yeah. and well, well, I get there this morning and I don't have my key. And I don't know they put a pad out there. So I, I, I look and I go, well, there's no way to unlock this door. So I've got to go back to my truck and now go find that key. So that was me going back. Then I go to find the key, then realize you don't really need the key because now, yeah. now there's a pad there. Oh, you didn't see Correct. the pad? Correct. Yeah. Well, you can't it, see it from the inside. Yeah. I didn't. So I didn't know it was out there. I didn't at first. And I tried to stick my key in there. I did too. And I was like, and I said, this key ain't going to work. But Same thing I looked, happened to me. And I said, well, there's the pad. Well, like, when, so I, when, when I went snug to. Up on. Y'all well, were informing me about this. I haven't. I knew had you were looking kind of way. puzzled. I, yeah. So you code I knew the key door was temporary until the other was there. Are you saying the other's there now? Correct. And here's what you'll really hate. The fact yep. that the other door is there, it happened to me, Greg and both of us, because we didn't know what that had been changed. You think, well, no big deal. I guess they've done this so I can't unlock it and go to the bathroom, so I'll just use my key. But then you get your key out, the one that they assigned all of us, and it won't work on the new door. Okay. And then you're like, at one point, I said, well, I'm, I'm stuck. I, I can't get And the get whole back. time, the keypad's right here. You yeah. would have saw the keypad. Right you would have saw the keypad. Yeah. I so, finally, after I tried both keys, I went, well, there's a keypad. Yeah. And so does our same current access cards same work Correct. on that? Yeah. Okay. There's changes. They changed it in the you, back. You can too. go code or card. Okay. I'm code guy myself. You still have to give your card on the main door. main door yeah. before yeah. Seven. Seven. Exterior building. Correct. Right. But you could now take the card and and, and just roll. Yes. There's no scenario now Correct. the card won't get you where you're going. So, Correct. so no need yeah. for that key they gave Right. Us. Correct. No, so no, that no. key is a complete waste of your time. Now, okay. keep in mind, I went as far. <laughs> as to go out. Listen, I went as far as to go get my keys because, see, I, my, my truck has a fob. You went out and got your keys. Well, because I, I wonder where I, you I were. I, I wonder where you I kept going. I, I didn't think I'd go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> I, I, so, I thought you, I saw like bless his heart. He's trying to find something. So well, it was my key. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but I find my key only to discover now it doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, and I even put my fob on my key, saying, "Well, I guess I'm back to a keychain." <laughs> and then I realize when the key won't work, I see the pad, and I'm like, "Okay, so I guess it's pad everywhere now." Yep. And so I'm, I'm back right, off back the keys the now. Now I'm back off the now, keys. Now, I right. will ask this, Rick, because this is going to bring us into another area. I don't understand the double door there. Either. It I've makes said, zero again, sense. Again, I haven't seen uh, maybe, it, so I don't maybe know. Maybe someone they've, ha- they've got that one open 
propped open. But why did two they doors. even build that little yeah, room? No, there's two. Uh, so uh, you know where they put up? They put up a little. Am I going to need a key for it? Well, that's no. why. Are we eventually going to have to have the key again? There's no reason to have the two little doors. entrance. I agree. The little entrance box thing, whatever. It's little, like that thing at the. They bank. didn't put the pad there. They put it inside. The gl- with the glass door that Another they put up. Oh, I got to go look now. I'm so it confused. Is, well, it, well, it's confusing. Shouldn't I, been us. I, don't, I don't understand the concept here. I don't here. know why they have It's like doors. you walk in and now you're in a little chamber and then you go. At one time, I thought they were setting up, we had to stand in there, be sprayed for COVID, then yes. come in. Yes. Have you oh. ever been to the banks? Because those doors appear to close. You walk together. in and the door behind you closes and then the one in front of you opens. Mm-mm. Yeah, there's some banks. See, the there. one with the lock and key is now propped open. And you just walk through it, and, and then pad. there's the glass door that they've just put up. It's brand new, on that new wall they built for some reason. And you just hit the there, and you hit the pad. pad. My question is, are you do like me and are they, use our key even though it's right there beside it? They have that door propped open. Is that going to be closed at some point? Yeah, I think, I, I think they're going to make that a case open, and they're going to take it out. Yeah, I think so too. too. Yeah, they. I say, hope so. Otherwise, sounds like they just haven't taken that door out yet. Should I get but rid I don't of my know key the or not? Of the other. Do I need my key or not? No, at Rick. this moment, no. I guess not. You but, do not. But here's my question. I can't wait to go see Here's my question. It. Why, Why on they... earth could we have not just put the glass door where the other door was? Why did we have to build that chain wall? I have wall no idea. And, yeah, and then spray us for COVID when we come in. I hear about this. I'm going to tell you this. I uh, don't. I don't. I it's think... like we've come in from Mars and we've got to do that right. before we get back on the show. Yeah. 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 No. Can I tell you what I think? <laughs> I think. I think that is a breakdown. And communication, I don't think it was ever supposed to be like that. And I think that door will be gone, and we'll only have the glass door, and they never intended to be back recessed like that. Okay. I, th- I think that's a total breakdown in, in who drew it up. What if you're oh. sprayed with common sense as you enter? It's wasted space. Right. That. Well, we're going to have to spray more people. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. They're doing. Are you doing feeling like Yes, sir. So you've done that? Yes, sir. Okay. Then then came the, the dad moment that every dad says, now we've turned into our own fathers. When I said, you know, I started doing various things about hummingbirds and right. all that. <laughs> How and, they fly and, back. And, and then finally, and, you, you remember this one? I wish I could do it all. Yeah. I wish there was some way I could sit back here pushing <laughs> the thing forward and be sitting when you were in the front seat fastening the fastest. But I can't do both. My arms aren't long enough to do both of these. Yeah. i got to have a partner here. So I start looking – Trying to, I start fiddling around with the fashion myself, the little thing that has to go in the front. Yeah. And I notice an extension. I said, Are you flipping this extension out? Because we're inches from this thing connecting. Mm-hmm. It looks like that'll do it. No, I've done that every time. I said, So you're flipping that out when we get up and it won't fit. Are you pushing that thing out to, for the extension to reach? Oh, that's what I've been doing every time. Yeah. And it, so I, it kind of goes here and I grabs said, it. I said, and it I said yeah. Are you absolutely sure? Now that I've shown it to you, I have a sense. I'm on. We're gonna get in this jeep, and it's gonna fasten this time. I can tell by the look on your face. <laughs> no, I've been doing that. Are you certain? I think so. And I think you know. And so we sit down, and all of a sudden we go forward like that. And I hear. Hm. I said, "Well, uh, hi, no. buddy." I, I said, <laughs> did, did, "Did I hear that thing fasten?" <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe we finally got the other part right. No. <laughs> now I'm gonna bet that for, I've been sweating. I've been yeah, yeah, I've man. been sweating like I've been stuck in solitude at the worst prison in this country, <laughs> in this jeep burning up. And I said th- th- about three times ago we should already had this fastened. We've gone back and redone this, and you just didn't see that extension. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> And I just thought, well, how lay? I mean, it's, 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 it's like, and, and then of course, I, I knew you were gonna say that. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say it because it's okay to say, well, I don't think so. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, th- look, we all know this thing. Or where, I don't understand what you're yeah, talking about. I don't understand about. what you mean. Hey, I just noticed that too. We're all working together, son. Now I'm drenched, <laughs> real sweaty. And, uh, and I said, you know, then you do this. Yeah, I've never taken it off again. <laughs> That's it. Never. That's it. Never again. Don't you rotate me off. Rick and Bubba. Oh, you might find deal or no deal. You can watch it. I don't wear it too pain. It's my hair. Donald Trump in Israel, uh, he has he has landed. Uh, he is making some comments. Um, now, we got live coverage up there, Rick. On the we, we uh, you said something a minute ago that we're like, okay. By the way, that's that's not my – the garden tomb is better. But anyway, so um, I'm looking. He's at the uh, Church of the Holy – how are you saying that? Sepulchre. Yeah. Sepulchre. I was going to let you wrestle that a minute. Yeah. 
Uh, I wasn't even going in, but uh, the Garden right. Tomb place is better, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so when now, is that the one where they claim the tomb was, or uh, I don't know which one. Which that one is. is it where they claim the stable was? They, they built a church you know, on that. Too. You're right, Bob. I don't remember. I, I'm just telling you of the two tomb yeah. places you can go in Israel. The Garden Tomb is better than the other one. It's a much better presentation. It's a little less. You know, like we've turned it into, you know, when they build churches on top of things, it kind of takes away yeah, I, a little bit. The, the garden I, I tomb, was the thing and they're not claiming that they, this is it. They're just saying this. if this isn't it, it's a lot like the one the Bible talks about. Right. And it's a really incredible presentation. But uh, we had the Lord's Supper there, and it was really moving. But but And, of course, you remember that's when I got turned around in there and lost the family. Right. And then right. I walked out, and there was another group coming in of Nigerians. And, you know, my hair was long, and I had the beard, and I walked out. And I just said he is risen. Yeah. And uh, and and they they started singing hallelujah, you know, and all that. And then then I heard the, what I've heard most of my life. Get over here! What's wrong with you? Well, I, I got turned. You know, you have to duck to come out. So I came out. And uh, but if another group's coming in, you need to get out. But mm-hmm. but anyway, so he's there. You know, I heard him make a comment a minute ago. And just to be consistent, I've heard others make the comment. And I'm not going to say if Trump makes it, it's okay. But others can't make it. He, he he said this is not a conflict between two faiths. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you don't understand the spiritual side of this conflict between the Palestinians and the Arab world and Israel, if you don't know the religious connotations of it, you're wasting your time. And I've said that about others, and I'll say the same thing about him. That's an incredibly naive statement. It is two faiths against each other. Well, I think in that... In the speech he was given that, Rick, was when he was addressing the Saudis and all that, the more moderate bunch. Um, but I, I don't know if he would exactly. Boy, the video of that sea line, that's incredible. Yeah, I we, didn't realize the video that, was that good, we, by the way. We've got that coming up. I've gotten the sea, Sorry, that was a, the sea line attack. <laughs> it was my number one e- email from the weekend, and we'll get to that here in a minute, all over social media as well, as I've tried to warn everyone about animals attacking at an alarming rate and doing things that are uncharacteristic. But back to this, if you do not understand in the, the Middle Eastern conflict that one religion... I breaking folks in a single term. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about that? It is uh, 35 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. 866... We be big is the number. I love fieldofgreens.com slash Bubba. Go there now. Let me tell you something. Fieldofgreens.com. Put that promo code Bubba in. Get 15% off your first order and 10% off any uh, future orders. This is a product that, um, and, and even we were packing, uh, Sherry and I went to see uh, one of our sons, Brooks Big Love Burgess in Atlanta. This past weekend to visit, and I'll, I'll give you an update on that uh, on that visit. But um, so you know, you're you're trying to pack light, and uh, Greg, you you remember uh, back when you and I were were growing up, and we were you know well using the word young men is probably a stretch, but we were in between that time we were kind of young adults, and you remember that no matter where we were going, I had to take Credence Clearwater Revival. The Chronicles with me. Yeah. Hey, let me get my Chronicles. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Uh, for some weird reason, yeah. Well, now that Field of Greens has become that, and, oh, it's, and, it's, getting on, and it's getting on Sherry's nerves. She's like, all right, look, we uh, I, and I, I'm, I'm walking in here with my little tub, and she goes, you're not packing that. Rick. And I said, I got to take my Field of Greens. And she said, we don't have a blender or anything like that in the hotel. You got to eat it raw. And I, and I, I said, well, I, I can't. I, I, now I can't, I can't get up and go without Field of Greens. She goes, so you're going to pack that. And I said, well, yeah. I, she goes, we're just going to be gone for two days. That is a little much. And, uh, and so anyway, but I got to have it. That's a little much. Be- because uh, I'm getting, uh, you know, all the uh, vegetables and fruits I'm supposed to. I'm getting prebiotics. I'm getting uh, science back herbs. Um, it's completely organic, gluten-free, vegan, certified, non-GMO. And I'm just, I'm, I love the clarity. And I'm telling you, Greg, as we're getting older, that, that fogginess you get a little bit. The well, clarity, I, I got good energy. It's clean energy. I feel good. I like it, and you will too. So get yours now by going to fieldofgreens.com. Use the code Bubba to save yourself some money uh, immediately and on future orders. Also, we have a link at rickandbubba.com under the Sponsors button. And loving the feedback, by the way, on this. So I'll, I'll give you some choices, guys. 
Do you guys want to discuss <laughs> a little college football before I get into, you know, recapping uh, weekend and and uh, and all that? I mean, I <clears> did. <throat> l- let me be clear. I did not see one down of football, not one play, not one anything. And and there were moments on the trip where opportunity tried to prevent pre- present itself. Yeah. But I had to be very careful. Now, all of you know this. If you've been married for any amount of time, and and my wife is certainly not anti-football. She's if she married me, she was been to. We've had sons play. Uh, you know, we've had. You know, uh, you and I, Greg, grew up with dad coaching. Mm-hmm. Now your son coaches. We we've been to, as I said, so many football games. So Sherry's been, been to exposed to a tremendous amount of football, uh, but it's not as big a deal to her as far as from a hobby standpoint enjoyment standpoint as it is for me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i look at the weekend and see uh, because big love had to work a little bit on saturday morning if if he's working and we can't do anything with him right now not gonna violate that Mm -mm. uh you know the game's on you know but but I, i i was instructed uh pretty clearly that we're going to go around where he lives and look around and we're going to go out and get some coffee and we're going we're going to check his town out right. you couldn't yeah. believe it because when we moved him in we didn't really have time for that mm-hmm. and we have not been back since we moved him in i think back in mid june yeah so sherry now wanted this trip to go i want to see where he lives i want to look around i want to find out about you know his job more and you know, where does he go to church? And, and he's still, you know, trying to solidify what church he wants to land in. But by the way, I did find out one thing, and it's very, remember this if your kids are going and, and your people of faith. One of the biggest struggles he's having is finding a small group for young single adults. Uh, because, uh, you know, even when the churches have them, a lot of them meet off campus or during the week where his work schedule is conflicting yeah. with, the, with the, the church he likes the most right now. When, when the young professionals or whatever, when they have their small group, it's at a time he can't go because they just don't do it on Sunday morning at the campus. Uh, so that's been one of his big struggles is finding that. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of great worship services, but as we've tried to train him, worship service isn't enough. Yeah. That, that's attending church. You, you need to immerse yourself in the church. You need right. to be involved in the church. Yeah. You know, if you really want to have a life-changing experience, mm-hmm. you know, and really grow. So that, so we were, you know, we were, we were t- checking out some of that, yeah. we visited the church with him, all that. And uh, so, um, so Sherry informed me that that was our whole weekend. There would not be a time that I say, "Let's turn the game up." Yeah. And uh, and so, so I I didn't see, I didn't see any. You well, know, I, you I, missed I, a lot. We, we can give you some headlines Bama, and that Texas really is 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 really going to, I guess, uh, <clears> tell <throat> you everything. <throat> a new AP poll is out. Georgia now <clears throat> number one. They jumped Alabama, but that's going to change a little yeah, bit right now. Matter at this point. Uh, some uh, big jumps were Kentucky. They moved eleven up to nine after beating Florida. Uh, some other ones. BYU jumped nine after beating Baylor. They're at twelve. Uh-huh. Uh, Tennessee jumped nine. They're at fifteen now after beating Pittsburgh. Overtime um, game. That's a good game. Uh, Frost got fired at Nebraska because yeah. he lost again. Heard, uh, heard, this heard time the kickoff fired for me on the. It, it was time to fire Frost. Uh, Texas A&M yeah, dropped Southern eighteen. Listen to this one. Eighteen to number twenty four after beat, uh, getting beat by App State at home. Texas A&M, uh, right? and yeah, that. and Notre Dame is not in the top twenty five for the first time since twenty seventeen after getting beat by Marshall. All right, so this was one of those moments. Sherry and I are literally having coffee. You know, we're we're having. You know, we're having a great time together, mm-hmm. really concentrating on. And Sherry was saying, "Look, look, he's working like crazy. Let's let's start looking at all these different churches around here, the ones he likes, these visited, and let's start looking to see if we can find some options for a small group that might fit." Well, I was doing that. <laughs> I was doing that, and uh, and she goes, "Are you checking football scores?" <laughs> And I said, hey, Bama's in trouble. Had some, had some shock. Hey, and I made the mistake. It just came out. And I said, hey, Bama's in trouble. She was, you're looking at it. And and I was like. Just getting an update. I was just getting an update. I said, well, it just appeared. I said, yeah. I'm just checking it out. I yeah. said, because, you know, sometimes things just come up here, you know, feed and stuff. Yeah. And she goes, so there's a feed that came up while you were looking at churches, small groups. They were giving you scores. That comes up. <laughs> I said, no, no. It, no I, but I'm just telling you it does. It's out there. 
I just tried to stay real broad. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What, but you, are, are you telling me you were looking for a small group for your son <laughs> and Bama's score came across your screen? <laughs> Well, I, no, I'm not saying that. No, I'm not, who is saying is that? Is that what I said? <laughs> uh, I, I said I said they they update scores. Yeah. Well, but did you have to access the update? Well, I mean, it just my thumb accidentally hit it, honey. Mm-hmm. I said I'm just telling you, Bama's in trouble. That's so good, right? Well, are um, you saying you is that your way of telling me you want to go watch the game? <laughs> it's not I'd like that. to see how it ends. Well, well see, so you get the best. I, of both it's not worlds. that at all. Watch the app. Yeah. I how would, about how about Texas? Moved uh, seven spots to twenty one, and they lost. Wow. Uh, that's that's a little crazy right there. Is. But Arkansas was at wrong? number ten yeah. uh, now. They beat they got uh, pretty good South team. Carolina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, was it wrong that I said I would like to live in a world where I could either get an update or watch it? Yeah, I think I and, think getting uh, an update's okay. Right, right? Yeah. update don't hurt. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you go, this game's close. I think I, you, it was, I think man. knowing. Because when you got those updates about being in trouble, there was only a few minutes left. I think it would actually have been okay if you'd have pulled it up on your phone and watched it there. Ooh, mm. that was That's a tough. great drive. Tried that one. Tried that when she went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that went bad. Yeah. You wish you had better connection. Are you watching the game? <laughs> Are you yeah. Wa- well, well. <laughs> come, I on, said, come on. I said, come on. Come on. I said, hey. I, I said, I, I said, um, do you know what the Wi-Fi mm. password is? <laughs> <laughs> so I can look at more websites. <laughs> right. Just doing research on where we should go. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's See? so good. And then I threw out Randall. Probably, there might be something on Wednesday night because mm-hmm. I just thought that was probable. Yeah. yeah. You know? it, it made you sound like you were actually searching mm-hmm. for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, by the way, that being a young adult and <laughs> finding a small group, that's difficult. Yeah. Uh, especially, it's a when meet, especially when it meets on Sunday morning and actually on campus. Good luck with that. Right. Uh, you know, that's all this newfangled mm-hmm. stuff. So – so you just gave me. I missed a just lot. Some, yeah, some, I, I yeah. missed a lot of big things. Yeah, and there's some other stories, mm-hmm. but those are some of the bigger stories. I saw this uh, when I was trying to find a small group. I saw that the the coach for Marshall mm-hmm. said one thing that everybody and I would go back to App State on this too, and I'd also go to Scott Frost. He says what everybody's got to understand, even if you your team is one of these big teams. Mm-hmm. And it was a great statement, and I'm paraphrasing. But what he said was, none of us are afraid of these teams anymore. Yeah. And he said it mainly because of the transfer portal. Exactly. He said, right. do you realize I had, I think he said, five players on my team that have played in Notre Dame before. Yeah. They're not so afraid. They're, 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 they're not afraid. Because they weren't intimidated by the Gold Helmets. They've seen them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good right. point. He said, we're good not point. these little teams that come over here looking for a check anymore, and we're afraid of these teams. That day's over. Yeah. And and by the way, that's always funny when they list how much they paid for them to come beat them. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. one point something million yeah. to come yeah. beat them. Well, what he said, though, he said, now we don't have the depth they have. No, that's true. Right. But they're starters. He said, but play. our starters can play with anybody. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. He a said, lot of good players. He said, he said, so the days – and I love the statement. The days of teams that are level being afraid of the power teams, we're not afraid of them anymore no. because we got players who can play with them. Right. Yeah. And, and they have, do and have played. So, yeah. so. And uh, by the way, who schedules App State anymore? I know. Do I not love schedule. App State. Do yeah. not schedule App State. So their they, attitude is so, we'll play anybody anywhere. Yeah. yeah. We don't care. A side story. So they beat Texas A and M and couldn't leave to go home because something was wrong with their charter. Or so they, they ended up having home. to go back to the hotel and yeah. stay there. Yeah, and part and, and <clears> celebrate even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, Rick. I'm gonna ask you this question: mm-hmm. After week two, mm-hmm. which team do you think would be in the top ten? Texas A&M, Notre Dame, or Kentucky? Well, I, you know what I would say. I would say I would say Texas A&M. <laughs> or you, you, and your uh, second choice would uh, be Notre, Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, and Kentucky will find themselves right there in the top. So 10. the quarterback yeah. lived up to the hype. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, that he's, whole he's team good. is good. <laughs> I don't know how good. I don't know if they're top ten good, but they're. We'll find out when they play Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that'll solve it. This is a different Kentucky than we're used to looking All right. at. All right, we come back. We'll take your phone calls at eight six six. We be big as we look back. Eight six six. We be big. Your phone calls. Blazing Silverman, taking those now. More of the Rick and Bubba show coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. One faith doesn't want the other one to exist at all. You can't do anything. There isn't. There's no amount of land that you're going to give the Palestinians. They go, hey, we're good. That's been tried because they do not want Israel to exist. They want it all. And if you don't understand that, 
than going over there saying we're going to sit around and I'm going to do the art of the deal and I'm going to sit down and talk to the Palestinians and the Israelis and I'm going to work this out because I'm a good businessman. You're out of your mind. I mean, that's just a very naive statement. Uh, and we've said that about everybody who's tried it that way. You know, it, look, the only person that's ever been consistent is George W. Bush. He understood the biblical ramifications of it and, frankly, didn't fool with it. Do you remember? He's like, well, yeah, he, he got criticized for not being involved more, and I think his position was uh, there's no need to be because yeah, it that, ain't going to get fixed. It's not going to get resolved right. and, until Christ returns. So it's um, – now, I know he was ostracized for that, but at least he understood it. There's something, and I don't know what it is. It's just kind of strange when you see Donald Trump there with the uh, – uh, you know the the Jewish uh, what what with the, has the long hair? What's the you talking about the, the Orthodox, Orthodox Jews, Jewish, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, th- this is the church that was built over the cave that uh, the early Christians claimed that where Jesus' right. body was lying. That's right. Yeah. And what it was, I looked it up here. Um, Let's see, uh, one of the Roman emperors, and it, I won't bore you with his name since I can't say it, uh, in the second century built a temple dedicated to the goddess Venus on top of the cave to basically destroy the, uh, the story of Jesus' resurrection. But a later emperor ordered that it be turned into a church because of his mother, I believe, was a believer at the time. Yeah, well, there's and, a lot of that back uh, and forth stuff. Helena as a matter of fact, was her name, Speedy, right. is believed to have rediscovered the tomb. Um, and they say it's some of the earliest writings that indicated that's where the tomb was. Right. Even though the garden tomb set up looks I mean, that, more like what you would think. That would be like me rolling up to the Michigan-Ohio State game, and I said, this is not a game between two schools. <laughs> yes, it is. You know what? I mean, it, 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 when did he say that, Rick? Well, they were showing up there. They were, they were putting the quote up on the screen that this is not a disagreement between two faiths. I mean, that's that's the quote they keep putting up on the screen. So I, I guess he just said it a minute ago. I don't know. But I but, think it was this weekend at the Saudi deal. Was. Yeah. But but it, but it is. I mean, it, and I mean, and one does not want the other to exist. We've talked about this how many times on the show. So uh, I mean, you're not going to art of the deal, prophecy. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I mean, it's not going to happen. You know, I've, I've said this before. If you ever want to, the only thing that peace ever follows is all out victory. Pick a side and win. Uh, and, and that's the only way that, and I know what side we're supposed to pick. And, and I, and I, I think he, in a very inch deep mile wide way, I think at least has some comprehension of that, but, uh, but that statement is not a very wise statement. If I had to guess Donald Trump's mentality on it, he is probably trying to reach out to moderates to try to get everybody to work together on some level. No, no. I, I, oh, I, not, fully, yeah. I fully understand the strategy. I, I understood it when Democrats tried to do it. I just don't agree with it because the same thing's been tried before. And, uh, and, I, and I was critical of that, and I'm critical of this because I, it, it is a conflict between two faiths it is and 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 one wants the other one to be eradicated off the face of the earth that's important to know going in on the art of the deal you know what i mean i mean it's it is a (laughs) if not you're going in at a very naive point of view uh, got up and walked out of their commencement because mike pence was speaking and of course we all know how controversial a speech on telling people uh, to have integrity and values can be, uh, which is what he was talking about. Well, as, as Greg, people it, at Notre Dame walking out. Yeah, as Greg said, they they they, they were they're walking. They don't even know why they're walking out. They they have no. I mean, idea. at Berkeley, you would expect it. Sure, I, I would think Notre Dame would be uh, you know home court. Yeah, if you're if you're a Notre Dame student, what objection do you have to Mike Pence, and and the man he is and the things he stands for? You're at a very yeah. strange college if if you if you don't. Uh, but again. Uh, it, as Greg said, this is sometimes that young and dumb thing. They're, they're walking out because they think they're supposed to because he's a Republican. They don't really know why and Trump and all that. But anyway, so, yeah, in the speech, as we said, Bubba, you would think if there was something that would be bipartisan, it would be integrity and values. Yeah. Which yeah, is what he's, he's, and he's telling we all agree and, on that one? And that's what they sure would like.
It is eight minutes to the top of the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show. 866-WE-BE-BIG is the number as we make our way back. All right, so uh, we'll take some phone calls here uh, and find out what's on your mind uh, in um, unpacking the the ball games from the weekend. Uh, of course, 9-11 anniversary 21 years ago, the attack on America. Uh, that was yesterday. Uh, so we, we have that too, uh, and we'll get into that before the, before the day is over. Um, so uh, hang on to seven right there, Adler, because we may go to that during this update. Um, all right, so let's go to uh, David in Prattville, listening to us on I-92, WLWI. David, welcome to Rick and Bubba. How are you? Uh, good morning. Great show, always. Uh, Thank you. Bubba, but, hey, I was going to say, Alabama didn't beat themselves. Alabama got exposed, and this is coming from an Alabama fan. Look, <laughs> you, Will Anderson was tackling guys after the play was over. I'm telling you, Alabama fans, do not be in a hurry to buy those national championship game tickets. Dial it back a little bit and just understand, look, we might lose to Tennessee this year. Oh, There's games oh, that Alabama's going to lose. If they play like that, it's over. Yeah, Alabama's going to be all over. That's just silly. Don't worry about it. It, look, look at, uh, look at Saban. Gracious. You know, remember the, the horns down thing uh, that he was acting like he didn't know about? Apparently, some of the players were doing this, what, after it was over? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and I agree with him. When you're, what were they favored to beat Texas? Three scores. Well, weren't they weren't they a twenty one point favorite? Um, it was high. It was, yeah, I, I don't think that warrants a, a horns down no, victory. And, I, and and Saban feels the same way. Yeah. Uh, and, and this and, was immediately yeah. when the game was over. Right, okay, yeah. so I saw it. Live. We and, are you going to unless it? it's beeped, we can't play it. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay, right, cut so, this blank out, boys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right, that are you <laughs> you, you got it. I will, I will edit mad. it. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. I, I will right. edit it on the fly here. Oh, but um, I hope you miss it. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm kind of rooting for that, but I shouldn't be. My favorite thing that happens is I'll, I'll turn it right back up afterwards, and you'll hear the announcer just go, "Nick Saban," because that clearly went out on the air. Uh-huh. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it did. I was listening. Oh, live. I, I, heard. I heard it live. Here we go. Let's it go. And incomplete. And that's a ball game, folks. They're doing the horns down. Comes back, and they defeat Texas on the road, twenty to nineteen, in a thriller. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh, he's Nick Saban. <laughs> Nick Saban. Nick Saban. Nick Saban. Nick Saban. Not thrilled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I'm happy with the horns. Don't down. do that. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it on the TV. Yeah, clear. Clear, clear as day. As day. Yeah. Clear as day. Yeah. Yeah. I pictured that big round microphone that they right. had. Well, I, I agree with the coach uh, a thousand percent. <laughs> this, this this is an, a time when you need to be shaking the hand of the Texas team and say, hey, y'all played us down to the last second, and yeah. uh, you deserve our respect. Yeah, hey, good uh, job. But, now, we did win. We did but, win. and uh, great, That's what and, great teams do. And great teams go down there and do what they have to do. I don't think that belittles Bama either. But it was not a, hor- a horns down no, moment. It, wasn't. it, no, it, it wasn't. was a, you know what? You guys proved yourself that you 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 fought hard, you battled, and if you're Sark, you got to love your yeah. team's effort. Yeah. yeah. Matter yeah. of fact, it but tells especially you- since you have two quarterbacks hurt. Yeah. Playing against yeah. one of the best defensive yeah. programs uh, that that college football has ever known, and you're you're hanging with Alabama with your starter out. And your backup who can't plant his feet. Yeah, he yeah. had people open a right. couple of times. He couldn't get it to him because he couldn't set his feet. But yeah, look. Like I said, Bama, great teams do what they did. Hey, yeah, got absolutely. in a dog fight and got down the end, we're still going to pull it out. Yeah, right. and it tells you, you left where, us some time on the clock, we made you pay for but it. But to Saban's pro- point, that's not a horns down moment. No, it's no, not. No, no. It tells you where both programs are, too. Practice this week at Alabama, probably won't, won't, don't want to be there because it's probably pretty intense on, on yeah. what happened. You're at the Texas – Practices. I mean, they have a lot to build on, so they're they're probably thinking. You know, I don't do that typical where you come out the next week and just get hammered. Which yeah, could, right. foe, which could right. happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, ask uh, Ask Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, for real. Notre Dame fought and clawed, and then was going against somebody that they should have beat handedly and and laid an egg. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to uh, to Dalton. Dalton, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, got you loud and clear. So I just wanted to go over a couple of statistics I'm sure y'all don't know about uh, with the Texas A&M versus Appalachian State game and the magnitude of the loss for them. So Texas A&M has 56 four- and five-star recruits on their roster. Appalachian State only had one four-star recruit. Um, the uh, average spending 
for Texas A&M is 36 million versus uh, Appalachian State's 9 million. And they spend 9 million on Jimbo Fisher's annual salary versus uh, Sean Clark's half a million. Mm. Uh, it's just, and, and it's, the magnitude of that loss is just, it's crazy. It really is. And these statistics come from Late Kicks Josh um, on YouTube. So, just well, well, well the, the thing, first of all, you got to look at just because the internet gives somebody stars, uh, probably doesn't mean they've evaluated them to the level you probably should. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, there's, there, it shows once again, back to what the Marshall coach said, everybody's got players now. Of course, yeah. App State's always got. I'd never them. play them. Who, what, yeah, they, they put 60 up on North Carolina last, uh, North yeah. Carolina had to put up 63 to win. Right. There's a couple of, I wouldn't play. Yeah. I, there's no way I would play App State. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Absolutely. let's go to Artie. Uh, uh, Artie, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Are you guys familiar with the midnight yell that Texas A and M does before their games? I, I've heard of it. I really don't understand. They got a lot it. of weird stuff. Like yeah, but I, but I, but I have heard of it. Yes, yeah. hmm. they've got seventy million traditions. They're very culty, but whatever. Um, <laughs> they get together and they chant, uh, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, wah, 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 this boom, ba," and pump each other up, but. They had a guy with the the, with my, the microphone leading the chant, absolutely insulting Appalachian State, calling them hillbillies, rednecks, mm. uh, saying that they have two brain cells, low IQ. Uh, if you can find it, it's very cringe now to watch it. it it'll make you a bit now, like, yeah. oh, my goodness, I mm-hmm. can't believe he said that. And now it's, it's aged very poorly. <laughs> it is aged poorly. Even, no. even without the wind. So I got some guy that's making fun of me that's up there going rah, rah, sis, boom, ba in a yeah. microphone. Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't yeah. know. If, uh, I'm just checking. The one who looks like they don't have any brain cells is the guy that gets up in the middle of the night and does an old cheer <laughs> while I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's, uh, yeah, I, it, it comes off really rough, I bet. I bet it does. By the way, I like Artie's delivery. I did that. Did too. <laughs> Good job, Artie. <laughs> Top of the hour, we'll be back. 866 We Be Big is our number. More of the Rick and Bubba show coming up. We'll meet back and play for another week. Uh, also, find out what's going on with Rick and Bubba show by going to rickandbubba.com. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. All right, so let me let me help all of you out again. A, a great decision for you right now would be go to m o i n k box dot com slash bubba. That's moink, you know, like an oink. Let me tell you something: the sixty percent of U.S. pork production comes from one company owned by the Chinese. Just so you know, uh, their hogs are given something that uh, we have outlawed here, uh, and it's been banned in one hundred and sixty countries, including China. Yet, they they still find a way to get it to the grocery aisle uh, every day. So, if you want to eat delicious pork along with uh, the other things they offer at moinkbox.com, uh, go there now. And when I say other things, like right now, if you go to moinkbox, that's M-O-I-N-K, moinkbox.com slash Bubba, right now, you get a free, how about free filet mignon in every order for a year on top of the delicious pork. If you remember uh, Kevin O'Leary on Shark Tank when Moinks uh, uh, brought their bacon there, do you remember that? Kevin O'Leary said it's the best bacon he'd ever tasted. Uh, And also, if you remember, uh, the Ring doorbell founder, uh, he actually jumped at the chance to invest in Moink and did. So why don't you go right now and get delicious? We're talking about grass-fed, grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and they bring it, bring it right to your door. You know who provides these meats? Moink farmers, like our grandparents. I mean, these are uh, you, you feel good knowing you're helping out family farms to stay financially independent. So go to moinkbox.com slash Bubba. Get free fillets uh, for a year with your orders. That's M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Bubba. But there, there we go. Uh, so, uh, but the animal tag from this weekend, I got, I got this a lot. Oh, oh, what me? As we've said in our animal updates oh, for years, uh, this show has been pointing uh, to what we feel like is, you know, and and, and this is can be this is mentioned in, in prophecy that animals are now attacking 
human beings at an alarming rate. You know, after we've said so many of these things, we have to. We at some point we have to stop saying in an uncharacteristic attack. Well, uh, you, but, you have animals you expect it out of. You know, tigers, lions, yeah, yeah. occasional elephant. There's some that you just don't you just don't think are going to be. You know, they're more docile. We we have documented during the time of, of this warning that has been sounded, the siren that has been sounded by this show, we've had uh, a fish come out of the water and, and gore a man to death. I mean, the guy was in his boat. He wasn't in the water. Right. I mean, came out of the water and hit him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had a kangaroo grab a little girl by the a ponytail and not, hey, I got close to him and he kicked me like they would do normally, mm-hmm. bit her 14 stitches. And and the list can just go on and on and on. You know, we, I hate to bring up the stingray attack on the beloved crocodile hunter, but <laughs> it but, is but, the baseline, right? But anyway, so <laughs> we we look at all these attacks. They're 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 dive bombing us from the air. You know, we have we've had videos of birds of prey just you know going after human beings standing on the bank of a pond, coming out just dive bombing. Mm-hmm. And then you'll hear these animal experts going, you know, in a very uncharacteristic. Well, over the weekend, I got it. Alligators, folks. don't forget that. Oh, yeah. They're, they're grabbing right. people everywhere. Oh, we sure they are. Remember that tragedy at Disney? Oh, yeah. yeah. By the way. And, I mean, you're at Disney. I mean, you know, you, I mean, that's come on. the happiest place on earth. Well, not. So now I we have alligators on record, though. They will attack. Yeah, but not at Disney. You don't expect to be out at your Disney place. No, that's and, 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 you know, but hey, it I, seems like hey, there's I'm more Disney. of them now. Hey, if I'm in yeah. the Everglades yeah. or I'm swimming in the Florida Lake, sure. I'm at Disney. I got hit mm. at Disney. That's horrible. So so anyway, uh, so they're they're coming after us, and then of course this this one this past weekend, a sea lion goes out of the water mm-hmm. to pull a kid off a pier. Now, yeah. Rick, sea lion. When I think of sea lion, I think of a cute little animal that plays horns, that balances balls. You know, you see them in the in mm-hmm. the in the shows at marine places. I never have heard of them grabbing somebody. Have you never? I mean, didn't never heard of that. No, I haven't. Hey, anybody. Uh, yeah, if you no. watch, I don't know. You know, they were playing with it. It was yeah. there, and they were feeding it. Yeah, and it was. You know, it was yeah. showing out. You know how they do. It almost. I don't know if he jumped up and was just. I don't because he let her go when he pulled her in the water. I don't know if he was just. I don't know. It didn't look like he was like attacking. Like I'm going to eat you. It up. almost looked playful. Greg, yeah, it's like he yeah. was g- playing Greg, around. Oh, Greg, this is not a NASCAR sea lion. No, it really yeah, did. Right. Yeah. It does look playful. I mean, I but, but they pulled her in the water and they're dead. Well, there was one time I've, I've watched the video a number of times. We're about to play it, the audio or something else. But about hey, don't play I, with wild animals. I've gone yeah. in about a minute, 18 seconds, because it's just kind of swimming around. And as it comes up kind of to the pier, uh, that's when you can tell they're kind of messing around with it. This some of a great some time to have RBTV language. right here. You've got mm-hmm. different languages there on the pier, but uh, I'm pretty sure it can kind of. So there it is. It's close to the boat. A lot boat. of, <laughs> of different languages. <laughs> By the way, it looks like it's like in. <laughs> see, uh, right there is when you go get the kids back. <laughs> Might want to get the kids back. Well, see, they think they're going to pet it because, you know, they they believe in all these Disney shows. Disney yeah. shows and all this stuff. <laughs> yep. And here's about here's where it gets real right yeah, here. Yeah, it's gonna get Check real. <laughs> and here we go. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, the guy jumps in, but there goes sunglasses. Yeah, yeah I saw that. <laughs> you have to love the speed they got out of the water. Are you all right? <laughs> We're not giving that guy enough. I Nobody's know. thanking him. Yeah. <laughs> it's about to be a <laughs> Are you all right? You're not injured? Oh. You're good? Okay. All right, now we're going we're gonna to put it in slow motion for you here. It is uh, six minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us as uh, we start uh, hanging out again with you today with Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, and Adler, also Blazing Silverman, Rick and Bubba University student, banging out a degree in common sense, which has now become a superpower. Bubba is out today. They were doing some additional testing uh, that his doctor scheduled, so he had to go do that today. And... Uh, He'll be back with us. You know, I was I was thinking um, because I remember many many years ago. You know, when the the, the term upper and lower GI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um, it, it was such a weird position I found myself in when the doctor said we're going to do an upper GI, and that's a you know just a drinking the old barium milkshake. And if we don't find anything, we'll do a lower. Mm. And I found myself going, man, I hope something's wrong with me. 
No. <laughs> uh, I, I hope they find something with the upper, which is – that's a weird place to be. Is, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it almost, you start pulling for that's the upper GI. Yeah, yeah. It, that was yeah. – uh, Hope they find something. Yeah, right. I, I remember they did find something the first one. I remember the doctor saying that you have a stomach ulcer that is so severe the milkshake won't even come down. Ooh. And I was like, oh, okay. You, you know, <laughs> anytime you – I know it's a term, but I didn't like hearing my doctor using the term gross. No, you don't want to hear doctor. Yeah, they normally don't say that. Is that a medical that. term? I didn't, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, so, uh, but, uh, you know, living a much different life then and made a lot of adjustments. So, and, you know, that was one of those things when they were finding out, uh, which was kind of cool. Uh, you know, back in the old days, they didn't think you could do anything for stomach ulcers. Uh, and they would do things like have you drink a bowl of milk and all this kind of stuff. And then they went on to find out a lot of them are bacteria based and they actually can treat them with. Uh, high doses of um, very strong antibiotics, and they did with mine and got rid of it. Hmm. So kind of cool uh, to be living in the times that we did. Uh, all right, so this past weekend, I'll, I'll give you guys the, you know, I told you earlier. So this was this was on the calendar uh, that we were going to Atlanta, which is uh, where Big Love lives and works now. That is, uh, that's hmm. our, our third kid down, um, and he is 23 uh, graduated from Mississippi, Mississippi State, so another big win for State this weekend. Yeah, um, and uh, and so um, he uh, he got a job with the marketing bunch over there in Atlanta, and uh, does a uh, does a lot of marketing and fundraising for a lot of, of the big nonprofits and all that stuff. And uh, you know, entry level jobs, so you know they working them to the bone, and uh, you know that he's got all kinds of wild hours and updates, and here's how we're doing, and he's getting you know coached on how you know you you, you can you learn on the job too, and. Uh, trying to work his way up, and so uh, you know, Mama was like, "We got to get over and check on this one. I want, I want to know where he lives. I want know what's going on over there." And I'm like, "Okay, you know, you, you know, I'm a dad, so probably I was not near as uh, devoted to this, but but anyway, I, sure. I, I, but I was looking forward to seeing him because I hadn't <laughs> yeah. seen him well, yeah, in a while. Yeah. Yeah. That's begin- unsaid, yeah. right? But I did, I wanted to go over and just hang, you know, and uh-huh. and, and say, but yeah, you didn't need a but but you itinerary. know, Sherry and I were were laughing is, um, you know, this empty nest world that we're in. Uh, you you think that you're going to be so free, but really, what's happened now is all the things that you used to could tell people you couldn't do because your kids had a game or mm-hmm. I've got this. Now they know you can't really say that yeah. anymore. You don't have so you actually end up involved in more things than you were involved with before. <laughs> right, yeah. I, and I don't know how in the world that happened. Uh, and uh, so for us to have a free weekend was kind of a an oddity. But we also have noticed that we're having a tremendous time. It's like we're it's like Sherry and I were living, and I don't know why we've even started speaking in song, like you like we're living out a musical, and okay. I, and uh, and I, I don't and we and we get to laughing about that, you know, and <laughs> and and so now we're really like playing it up. And she's like, "It's time for us to get in the car and go," <laughs> you know, like that. And I'm going, hold Grease. on, hold on, just a minute. I got one more thing I need to grab, <laughs> like that. Are you gonna shower? Or are you gonna take a bath? I think I'll soak. You know, and I mean, and, and we're just and we're just having a ball. I mean, Sherry and I have a really good time together. And for those of you that don't that think she doesn't have a sense of humor, she married me. Yeah. Uh, so so anyway, and so we're we're cutting up, and you know, we're and and we're and you know, and I'm you know me. I, all I can think about, and Greg and I are the same way on this. All I can think about in Atlanta, Sherry's like, well, you know, we we uh, you know. Brooks doesn't get off work to what amount of time? I said, no, 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 no. We're not delaying. I said, the minute I get home from the show, we're getting in the car. And I said, and we're gone. I you said, got I, a window. You I, better I got to get out ahead of Atlanta. Yeah. I, I got it because we did have dinner. Is there an hour ahead? Well, we also, yes, we, also we also we also tried to do a two for one. And that was that, we, you know, the, the Brooks brother, Blake, who's 31 now, he is engaged and gets married in New York a year from Labor Day weekend, next Labor Day weekend. Oh. So okay. So his in-laws live in Atlanta, so we had dinner with them Friday night, too. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. so, so you know, you get that's out. a long day. You got it all in. What's <laughs> going on? Rick, try to be on your best behavior. <laughs> you know, like, Big Papa sleep. <laughs> I've been going a while. <laughs> so, so anyway, and it was funny Man, because, a game. <laughs> because uh, they are, they're extremely kind, wonderful people. And how about this? Uh, uh, Blake's mo- future mother-in-law has really gotten into the show. 
Oh. Yeah, she, 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 and she, good? oh, she's Wednesday Bible study. She does it all. Love it. And, okay. uh, yeah, all and so, yeah, and she says, I've really gotten good into the show. Good thing to know. Yeah, she, she's really gotten into the show, and I thought, note to self. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, uh, someone's listening. Fall <laughs> <laughs> that away. <laughs> we got a few jokes I can't hey, use. Draw a line through that bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, um, I wish I could see. <laughs> right. Boomer really concerned now. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, um, we, Dad, why'd you say that? <laughs> right. And uh, the uh, and I mean, I, seriously, just I'm talking about salt of the earth people. Uh, and they, they've raised, uh, uh, they have many children, but this is the, uh, the future uh, wife of Blake is uh, their youngest. Okay. So, uh, so in, 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 but she's, uh, you know, it's about the same age as Boomer. So, so anyway, we're excited about that. We love her and, uh, and got to sit down and have a, have a great meal with them and, and break some bread and talk about life. And, and, and it was great. But so that, that was a seven o'clock Eastern time reservation. But I, we're not going to be like that now. We, we got to get over. Mm-hmm. You, you, if you're going to Atlanta, you it's almost like flying commercial. You have to think to yourself, I don't care when I get there, but I'm leaving with so much time yeah. that when I get stopped and can't move, instead panic. of freaking out, saying we're not going to make our dinner reservation, you just say, okay. I got time. This, this, just mean, this just means mm-hmm. instead of me getting to the hotel at 3, I'm going to get there at 4. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm still fine on my 7. Yeah. 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 You don't push that 7. You know, and uh, five P. You were right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and and so um, so I, I realized that Atlanta, nothing, nothing's easy, nothing. Yeah. And you know, when Sherry and I get into this thing about two eighty five, <sighs> um, the great two eighty five, mm. baby. The, in our musical, I want you to know that <laughs> what what these what these apps are telling us is. If traffic's really bad on 20, mm-hmm. we'll catch 285 on the front end. Okay? Mm-hmm. Where where Big Love lives, if the traffic's not bad on 20, we'll go on and catch 285 on the back end and then just take an exit a few miles down and be at his place. Do you see what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It's only going to put us on there early if it says this direct shot is full of traffic. Yeah, That's the reason why sometimes it says take 285 now and sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, so whatever it says, let's do that. Yeah. Well, you know, we got to get on 285. No, no, it, it's letting <laughs> us go 20, so we're fine. Right. Yeah. Well, we got to get on 285. We do, but we're going to get on the back, the yeah, back here. Yeah, we're back. Come back yeah, we're not. We're not. We're yeah. not getting on up here. You can get to see downtown, you know what I mean? honey. Well, I, well, now he lives off 285. <laughs> he does. <laughs> that. Let me tell you what. You are correct. <laughs> but uh, but but he's on he's on the back end. He's right. on he's we north of here he's around. north of Atlanta. He's northwest of Atlanta. Okay. So if, if this is all clogged up, we'll jump right here. And if not, though, we're going to go straight and catch it on the back. <laughs> <laughs> when you say 285, you are correct. We will spend some time on 285, either a lot of time on it or a little bit. Yeah. Depending on what we will touch it. <laughs> I, I, eventually deal with I it. acknowledge <laughs> this, 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 this. It's a bypass. Yeah. And, and, and if you need the bypass, you, you just take it. And if you don't, you, you, you roll on. Okay. <laughs> Gonna stay on twenty. <laughs> That's the direct shot. You know what I mean? And uh, so, so anyway, I slightly disagree. Understood and noted. <laughs> Would you like to drive? <laughs> because all that's missing is your hands on the wheel. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back. More, Been there. more Rick and Bubba next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, coming hey, up. hey, after that watch first this, lunge, watch this, watch this. back the kids up. Yeah, we're slowing yeah, everything yeah, right, down right. now. I mean, I know he's cute. Uh, sure. No, nobody's expecting it, Greg. I love the slow mo. Look, yeah. look. Noise. Y'all, I'm sorry I see anger. Look. You see anger? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. I'm telling y'all. Well, listen Mania. to the monsters in there. Yeah. Boy, he's making a horrible noise. <laughs> see, I think he lost his grip when he hit the water and then everybody comes in. How about the guy, though, man? He's jumping in and, and getting her out. That's yep. I just, very kind. It, you love the way he got out of that thing like there was sharks in the water. You know what you know? we just watched, don't you? Asian well, Speedy. Yep. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> well, I mean, we did. Look That's, at his wallet back in his back right pocket. Is that Jackie All I can think Chan? about it just Jackie soaking Chan. wet. <laughs> Jackie Chan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I'm telling you this. <laughs>
I mean, they, you, these animals. You, yeah. you, I mean, there's no animal you can trust right now. No. You can't trust the, the ones in your home. You better keep an eye on them, yeah, too. that's right. I'll well, tell you, they, they, there's a signal that's gone out. Mm-hmm. We get, we just keep hearing that all this, this is bizarre, bizarre behavior. Isn't it funny? I mean, right there, he looks like a you know a retriever in the water. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just he looks so harmless. Yeah, because but, w- well, here's what I don't. Hey, let's play. Here's what I don't get is that when he first went up the first time, he looks like he's just having fun. You know, like you know, and, and then right there, I mean, y'all, that's a pretty violent jerk in right yeah. there. Now the trainer yeah, said that he may have thought the white of her outfit that she had on a little dress she had on or whatever was a piece of fish so right, Rick, and th- this is where the, this is where the animal apologists start yeah. and I, i'm not surprised by that statement rick well, you know I, that, I, that I, they I, would look, say something that he thought it was fish i think he just reached up and grabbed something pull it in the water all right but this guys they got teeth why would you when especially when it jumped the first time at you why would you have your kids sitting down there anyway well, Greg, they got teeth. Well, Greg, when it first popped up like that, you know what they think? Oh, look, it wants us I to know. get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he doesn't because oh. you know why? He's in the wild. <laughs> All right, Rick, this helps. Greg, this you, you've just seen one with a ball in his nose. This is the problem. <laughs> now, you this can pass me, that one. This makes me feel a little bit well, can better. Can you? Nah, maybe not. Ask the folks who were at Shamu's dinner. <laughs> yeah. Rick, look at here he goes. It looks like the man that jumped in is a wow. family member uh, that, that – it says here, the man believed to be the girl's family member – Jumps in that helps me a little bit. Yeah, because if not, if it was just a somebody uh, that just a, a, a bystander that just jumped in, they gave him absolutely no, nothing. I think yeah, I knew. I, it was I, I, Rick, let me. I, he was I, leaving. Run the slow mo yeah. one more time. He he pulls her down. It looks like he lets go. It looks like he grabs her again. Well, that's what I'm talking because I, and I don't know if that's just the process of the guy trying to get her. They right. accidentally go under for right. a minute. Because it may be you can't touch right there, and they may have just both gone under. Ooh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know whether the watch it one more time. Yeah, I know. I, 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 wa- I mean, I don't want to go subdued or film here. I know. I noticed what you said too. Right. I noticed she's too. under the water right there. Okay. Right. Right. Now we can't see. We got obstructed view. Right. She's back up on top of the water. Right. Then goes under again. Was that the process of him grabbing her so, yeah. as he went? He in? was going down, yeah, okay. and he grabbed her. I think okay. that was his yeah. momentum. Okay. And uh, but I mean, he, he shade, needs to go back and get his yeah. glasses. I know. Look, I know. the sea. That's all I can think go. about go today when he's in the sun. Yeah. So what? We'll, so what? What, do you, what color do you think they'll go with on the sign that's going to be there now? That, that red, yeah. <laughs> big red. I mean, that is. I mean, look. I mean, the lovable seal. But I mean, you don't know. You don't know what all wild animals are going to do. Well, anyway, don't wear a white dress around. No. Mm-mm. So I mean, technically, it's a sea lion, right? Yeah. yeah that's what it is. Which is what is the difference? Now? I don't know. I mean, here we go. One's bigger than the other one. Yeah, I think sea lion must be a little bigger. See, right, uh, right there, people. He just kind of snapped at them. Now, which one play the horns? Is that seals or sea lions? Sea lions. I thought that was She's got glasses on too, the little girl. I just mm-hmm. I just well, realized that. Oh, climb back no. down there. He nearly bit you a few minutes ago, so get a little closer. Yeah. Wham. But, in uh, you I go. Tell you, I tell you, when he decides to grab you, he got you. Yes, sir. I mean, he pulled her over like nobody's business. Well, then how about this animal apology? She, uh, 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 he thought she was fish. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, how about this? Wild animals do wild things. <laughs> he thinking she was fish. The only one you can trust is a manatee. He won't hurt you. <laughs> the sea cow. Yeah. He's too lazy. He takes too much effort to hurt me. <laughs> well, maybe he y'all probably wants to hurt you. Once we have a manatee attack, maybe y'all all get on board. <laughs> Animals, hey, look, I'm telling you, you can't trust them. Big ends of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Yeah, they had their last performance Out. this weekend. Stupid done. animal people. Done. How about that? This is what these freaky animal people have done. They've ruined the circus. Circus is over. Mm. They pulled the elephants. It went downhill from there. Well, you know why I don't want to watch a circus without elephants. No, they're on the emblem. We tried. And even though it might have just been mental, because Hamzy said it was a great show, and that they really did a good job, but it was. But I mean, undoubtedly, the end of the elephants was the end of it all. Yeah, it said producers removed the elephants from the show's performance a year ago, and according to a spokesperson, Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba, pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba, ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba, I can't. Stop. Without him, brother. Rick and Bubba, Rick and uh, 21 Bubba. minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show. 866, we be big as a number. So looking back on the, the trip to Atlanta this weekend, I missed all the football games, but we've updated that a little bit last hour. We can get back to that because there were some big uh, upsets and wins. We haven't talked to any NFL. That kicked off over the weekend. Didn't see any of that either. 
Uh, and Monday Night Football, right? First one tonight? Yeah, Russell mm-hmm. Wilson goes home. Uh, Denver goes to That's Seattle. That's very interesting. Yeah, that, that'll be a fun game. So, so anyway, one of the things that, that you know Sherry was talking about when we went over to visit our son in Atlanta, and this is the second son we've had to live in Atlanta. So, Greg, you've had a son in, in oh, Atlanta. Oh, yes. Spent many, many times. It, the that. thing about Atlanta, nothing is easy. And I remember my oldest son said to his younger brother when he found out he was moving to Atlanta, he said, you have to find your part of Atlanta and just stay there. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. like Taylor if you did. Gotta, yeah, if yeah. you're going to a different part, yeah. it's just a journey. Yeah. Everything's hard. You know, so mm. you only go in the city for concerts, ball games. If you have a meeting down there for work or whatever, but and, and unfortunately, Big Love does have to do that sometimes. Uh, but if don't make having to get around Atlanta things for like groceries and no, no. whatever, all that has to be in your part of Atlanta, mm-hmm. and you better get it all laid out the way you want it. And uh, so this was the time where Mama wanted to get on the ground and just kind of look around and see see what what kind of little what com- what, what community your son lives in and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Probably things we should all spend more time on, but I just normally yeah. don't. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm like, well, they're independent. Everything seems to be fine. All good. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and uh, so we. But anyway, she said, "I, I uh, this was something because we were going to go, because I mean, you could you could take pun intended a rock and hit Stone Mountain for where Big Love lives." Oh, okay. we were shocked. How well, close that's not was. far from where Tyler used to right. Be. They're very close. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I see his community every time I go there. Yeah, his former community. So uh, I mean, it's it's that same area. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so anyway, which is a good area. I like it over there. Oh yeah. Uh, so once you get to it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right. It's, it's on, on over there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, everything's hard. Rick. Yeah, everything's hard. So <clears throat> it it the, you, let's all admit, thank goodness, the the doomsday forecast the South got for the weekend never happened. Yeah. It was supposed to just pour rain all weekend long. Yeah, all them games. I mean, changed. I mean, people canceling games before they'd ever even had them. Uh, it was supposed to pour rain the entire weekend, right? Even with some storms. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that never materialized. I mean, it did rain some, but it didn't rain ongoing. But it still had that threat of rain. You know, it was always kind of hanging over everybody's life. So we were going to do, let's go to Stone Mountain, or, or there's all kinds of parks and stuff around there, you know, and Sherry loves to hike. Uh, <laughs> let's let's go hit some of that. We, we, we kind of concluded weather is not really going to work on that. So – Big Love says, what do y'all think about doing something nostalgic when y'all used to take us to the Georgia Aquarium? Why don't we all go to the Georgia Aquarium? And I I said, hey, now, um, you realize how many people are going to go to the Georgia Aquarium today? Yeah. Uh, Threat of rain. Yeah. I live in Atlanta or I'm in Atlanta or I'm visiting Atlanta. A lot of people here. Yeah, This place has got a lot of folk, okay? And uh, it's a big old city. Yeah. And it gets even bigger. It's just big. It is. There's a lot going on here. Yes, sir. Okay. A lot of moving parts. Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, it'll be great. And, you know, then once nostalgia was thrown out, I knew I was done. Yeah. Because that's all mama needed to hear. That's yeah. all mama needed to hear. And I and I thought to myself, last time I was at Georgia Aquarium, it didn't go well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I was almost thrown out of the Georgia Aquarium for getting in a disagreement about grouper. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, and well, a lot of people, I don't know. It's been a lot of years. There's no group. There's no way my picture is still up in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, the person, the problem I have with the Georgia aquarium and it is, it is a premier aquarium. I think it, in many things, I know a lot when it comes to whale sharks, they're the only place in the Western hemisphere you can see. Yeah. Trust me. It's the walking fish. You of, better have of, a big uh, tank uh, for them in it. Six million plus gallons of water. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, trust me, I heard all that. But what I the only thing well, I don't ever cleaned a aquarium. I, imagine that. Yeah, I love wildlife. I'm a fan of wildlife. Sure, right. I was told that I could not say anymore. This is a lot of folks wanting to see fish. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we, I, this, we're not going to say that anymore. And I, okay. And I was told ahead of time we're not going to debate whether grouper overfished or not. We're not doing that. And we're not going to talk about how delicious grouper is. It is good. Okay. And, uh, Especially I, not out loud. And I said, so you disagree with me that grouper is a great fish? He goes, no, I love grouper, and I enjoy it. You know that. I just don't want to talk about it in front of the tank when the volunteer is talking about save grouper. Okay. You're talking about eating save them. Yeah. And, and, I, and I said, the grouper. <laughs> save not. it for later. And I said, yeah, I'll get to I said it. and she goes, so let's get it out here in the parking lot, in the deck, get it out of your system that you don't think grouper overfish. <laughs> Okay, get out of your system. That group, even say what you said the last time. Grouper are not in trouble. 
Okay. So you can't say anything? Right. So get out of your system. You could even say it to a random person walking by if you want to. <laughs> but but please don't get in there with people with name tags and get into it in there in front in front of like like don't do that. Okay. And I said, uh, what about the overselling that sharks aren't dangerous? No, nope, let's don't do that either. Yeah. Let's don't talk about it. Don't say, tell that to the guy who has no luck. Yeah. Remember that? I said, yeah, so don't do that again. Okay. Because so, 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 you know it's a whole PR campaign. Yeah. yeah. The, the yeah, sharks they, don't do anything they wrong. They normally don't attack them. Right. Right. We're in their area. They clearly right. thought it was a We're seal. overfishing grouper. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we could all be more like fish, we'd live in a better a better world. I said, and then, and then of course, I, which I said, well, we'd all be in the water, though. <laughs> We wouldn't do well on land. No, we wouldn't. Uh, so, uh, so anyway. We'd have gills. Uh, so she wants you just to l- walk around and look. Let's do nostalgia, mm-hmm. and let's enjoy the beauty of this magnificent, <laughs> by the way, aquarium. It's a big A fish tank, buddy. It is. It's, it's a big, big, big one. It's a big one. I mean, that's <laughs> and, a big uh, fish tank. And, uh, I have to get in there and swim around to clean it. I, was, oh, I know. Imagine cleaning that. Yeah. Thing. I was mostly successful. Uh, uh, by the way, my favorite, my all-time favorite is watching first-time parents. You try to help them. And uh, so I saw everybody was hot about the dolphin show. Now, it used to be good. Yeah. Okay. Back before they basically guilted us about dolphins all the time. Okay. I thought we used to have so like they, songs, fireworks. Oh. And, and it's still and a they good. They did all kinds of tricks. It's still, a oh, good, yeah. it's still a good show, but it's basically I'm being educated on dolphins. They don't cut them flips. They do, but it's not like it was. They, nobody's got a skirt on anymore. Oh, they're not. They don't put hats on them. I mean, it, it's oh, it's honking a horn. It's it's no. It's it's a little more of you know. Let's let. They're not here for our entertainment, but but yet we want to be entertained. So but, they're not Skipper and Dolly at Six Flags. But you know that, that <laughs> we love Skipper no. and Dolly. Oh yeah. So when we come back, I'll tell you about the Dolphin Show, which in my opinion I think they ruined. Uh, which I can say it, it, they've made it educational. Oh yeah, it's. It, I feel like I'm at school now. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, we uh, it, it's like, it's like, it's I like, want to see a trick. Make him jump through that hoop. It, it's. It's like. Look, we all love dolphins. By the way, do we really have to be PR'd about dolphins? Yeah, we're uh, all anti dolphins. I thought we're all born loving dolphins. Uh, I always yeah. like, none of us are out to get that. dolphins. None. You know? Yeah. Just Does, wow me. Do I think the tuna taste is good now? They're not caught in nets anymore. Maybe not. Well, you know, it's lost a little flavor. You know it, but okay. um, it's kind of yeah. hurt but I'm but no, I'm, I, everybody likes dolphins. But I remember and Sherry <laughs> Sherry confirmed <laughs> that the last backwards. time we went to the dolphin show, it was like going to a Broadway play that featured dolphins. Now it's kind of turned into let's all learn all we can about the dolphins, and they'll flip for us some some. Not, not that's no. not their main thing, right? Yeah, and, and right, we'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Uh, Ticket sales dropped dramatically after that. The company had a long animal rights activist battle in court. Hey, thanks. uh, And the the circus actually won a $15.75 million judgment back in 2015, but apparently lost the larger fight of public opinion. Thanks, guys. Thanks, weird animal people. You've done it again. Ruined something else. Wow. You know I mean, what I else? You've been around what hundred. Hey, we survived years? when you took away donkey basketball and donkey softball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We we all well, we awful. were stunned by that. <laughs> but then and then we, the, you you know you you put us all over that a weird Cirque du Soleil thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're sitting some Pink Floyd video. I don't even know what's going on at these weird things. <laughs> Look, somebody's a pretzel. What is that? Who's the guy with horns with a hammer? What does that mean? I mean have you seen some of that garbage? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so now we, we, Ringling Brothers was the old American classic. Now it's ruined. Mm. Out. You know what, though? There's some small circus. Did you see the video the other day of one of these unknown circuses and the, the, the lion tamer got attacked by the lion in front of everybody and people were screaming and yeah. I mean, it's got him. Yeah, it's wow. throwing him around like a rag doll. And, and then wow. they push it out the back of the tent. But they, I don't think, I don't, they never told us what happened. Hmm. You talk about people getting out of the bleachers. Yeah. Let the lion go back. I'll clear it. <laughs> And people start running in. <laughs> hey, he's got him. It's a like part of the act. That but, scared me, Rick. You know, for but, people. But, but, hey, hey but, but that's why we're all there. I know. Because we think it might happen while yeah, we're for, there. No, for yeah. people who. <laughs> oh, that was close. Who really want to preserve <laughs> these animals. I, I don't know if they're going to accomplish what they thought they were accomplishing with this. Well, they ruin everything. Yeah, they you do. Can't sure have they do. No, you can't even have a circus. Oh. Hey, I was curious. I might have missed it. Y'all may have already talked about it, where the graduates at uh, Notre Dame walked out on pants during his commencement speech. Yeah, we mentioned uh, it in passing, and we just saw some video on it. I mean, what a – I mean, I mean, they're at Notre Dame, come on. which Do they should even, be fairly reflective of Pence's views. Yeah, what is controversial about what Mike Pence is talking about? Integrity, values, 
I mean, you you may not you don't have to be a, a Republican to to believe in that. I mean, what is it, is it just because he's part of the Trump campaign? And and I do. And Bubba, you had mentioned it too. And I, I was looking and trying to to get this. I, I'm trying to decipher. And hopefully, you know, Trump now being in Israel right now, we were laughing about what it must be like to be a Trump handler in Israel. Mm. Oh, he's going to the Wailing Wall. Okay, he's oh oh he's talking to okay Orthodox Jew, Messianic Jew. Oh my goodness, secular Jew, uh, Muslim. Oh my gosh. I mean, and you're trying to keep him in line the whole time. That the comment, and it was really bad play up here by showing him in Israel that when he said this is not a disagreement between faiths, he was talking about the war on ISIS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, he's talking about not, Saudi Arabia. Not Palestinians and, and Jews. Right. 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 Because if, if he's talking about Palestinians That's and Jews. That's what I told you. He was yeah. in Saudi Arabia. And you Arabia said that. And, and, but what it was, they show that quote as he's standing up in Israel talking, not when he was in Saudi Arabia. And you're like, you know, they put that underneath that he's saying that as if that's what he's commenting on there, right. yeah. which he wasn't. So hopefully, I actually hope, and I hope this continues, it doesn't look like he's there to do anything other than to visit and meet when, with Netanyahu, that he's not even there trying to negotiate negotiate the Palestinian-Israeli thing. No, I think that's probably early in the process. I hope not. And again, so so hopefully, because, you know, if it, it, the other he's talking about as far as, even though it still is a faith issue in the terrorist attack since that's based on their faith versus other faiths but i know what he means by saudi arabia and trying to fight against them together yeah so anyway so that's that's not as bad as it sounded uh, thank goodness uh let's go to john in birmingham 1047 wzzk john go ahead good morning guys hey john hey, how you doing hey, um, i'm fine hey listen every now and then y'all throw out a comment and, and you'll leave me dangling yeah rick you just threw something out there and you got me hanging baby yes tell me please I love the sound of this. Tell me about these proposed litter zones. I've got to know. Well, it was brilliant, uh, and it was <laughs> it was it was ahead of its it was ahead of its time. It was not politically correct, right? But right. you you know, I was thinking back to when we you know grew up in the in in the seventies, and I remember riding along with, with my mom and dad and throwing litter from the vehicle, uh, and and it was a lot of great memories. You know, of of uh, you know, you had stuff in the car. Uh, that Before was, we knew it was bad. That was getting ratty yeah. or whatever. And, you know, your dad would thrill you with a an over the driver's side, over the top of the car, oh. you know, hitting a road sign. With a or, bottle, yeah. Yeah, or something like that. You had to and, time it. You had and, to have a mark on your hood right. to time it. And right. your cars were pristine. You right. never had a bunch of trash in the car because right. you threw it all out. And, uh, and you know, you'd say, hey, Mom. That's back before Iron Eyes Cody's. Right. You know, we didn't yeah. know it was bad. Hey, Mom, yeah. can I throw this this out this time? Sure, son. You know, that kind of thing. And you would try to be safe with it, and you would, you know, you would. You'd look. have some blowback on you. You yeah, learn. Yeah. You had to slow down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when we decided that we were all against litter, which we are, I said I believe that there's a way for this to work. And we're back. Thirty-five minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for being with us. All right, so. When you're thinking about our economy and uh, and, and thinking, all right, is, is it going to get better? Well, everything that Washington seems to do uh, involving inflation and recession uh, is um, it, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But uh, but anyway, being in a recession is terrible. So uh, LearBubba.com uh, is here to help. So go to LearBubba.com. You want to take the uh, uh, the information down because uh, they're going to show you how you can invest uh, with your savings and retirement accounts. Uh, you want to start investing in gold or precious metals. And, um, you know, it's a great hedge during a recession. And as the worst things get, the more your gold could be worth. So don't let your retirement take a hit like it did back in 2008. You don't want to do that. Uh, right now, to make it extra important, important you could receive up to $10,000 in free bonus coins. Uh, so if you want more information, call 1-800-707-4575. That's 1-800-707-4575, or just go to learbubba.com. Uh, you'll find that same link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Do this today. You will not regret it, okay? It's a great, great hedge, so so do that. All right, so uh, finishing up the story, so... We, we went to Atlanta. Nothing's easy in Atlanta. And uh, so we, we start the journey uh, to leave the comfort of some of the great little communities in and around uh, Atlanta.
to now go into Atlanta and make our way to the Georgia Aquarium, which, of course, um, we're doing the same thing that tens of thousands of people are thinking. Uh, I did like our idea of trying to go on the back half of the schedule Mm -hmm. because I remembered when you had little kids, you went on the front end because of their sleeping schedule and all that. So we were going to try to go on the back end of the schedule. Okay. Um, now, apparently, uh, Atlanta has a lot going on. So there, there is no scenario, there's none, that you're not going to be in traffic. It's just, just, you just, how much traffic? You just have to live with that. you got to know that. Uh, you, you, the parking deck, mm-hmm. again, I don't understand parking decks that uh, that – make uh, it what felt like to me at least 50% of the parking unavailable to me. Um, you know, y'all told me to come in here and gave me a ticket. I'd like to see a parking spot show up at some point. Yeah. Uh, and and, and somehow and, right. the ticket should run out when all the space is Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I will say that I was thankful <clears throat> to be in a compact car. We That's the other thing about being empty nesters. You, uh, nesters, you don't have to drive buses around yeah. anymore. Uh-huh. You know, you can actually just get in a small that car. corner yeah. spot. Yeah, now we're in Sherry's little car that she <laughs> refers to as cute, in her cute little car. Uh-huh. I was thankful for it when I found a compact-only spot. Yeah. Really, what I've noticed, if you go to park in any of these cities that are run by Democrats, it, uh, if you're not plugging your car in uh, or you're not in some kind of smart car, they wish you would never find a place to park. Yeah. So they they, do, they they cater to all that, and those of us that are still driving, you know, real automobiles, uh, they they basically punish us for that. And our parking is is to make bas- you circle and circle. Ba- basically, and circle. I, I I I found a compact spot, so I got in it. I figured at some point I would see a sign that says "Evil people park here." Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Here's 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 where and evil there's, people there's, are. There's three of them. These yeah. are combustion engine cars that you could actually get four people in. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, we get in. I want to take on the Dolphin Show because the Dolphin Show is one of the things that I really enjoy. I love a good Dolphin Show. Oh, I love a good Dolphin Show. When mm-hmm. Greg and I were little boys, uh, we would be taken to Atlanta to Six Flags Over Georgia where we would watch Skipper and Dolly. Yes, and, and they'd it, have that clock that told you what time the show started up mm-hmm. front. The political correctness was nowhere near that place at the time. I remember oh, seeing Do- them up. Dolly had a hula skirt on. Yes, uh, Hat. You know, Skipper had hats on. <laughs> Uh, they were animals Jumping honking lots of hoops. Animals honking horns. Uh, they were, uh, there was a, a, a round ring of fire. Oh, yeah. I mean, he jumped, jumped right through, through the yeah. fire. Oh, yeah. Apparently, all that's considered bad form now. Now you go to a dolphin show, and you're basically educated on dolphins, and they'll jump up in the air a few times. Now, when they jump, it is amazing. Okay, yeah, it really is. I but, like when they get circling, and get speed up. Right. Yeah. But, but but I but I do I do want to. I can't believe he found Skipper and Dolly. Uh, <laughs> good job, Adler. So anyway, um, I will caution new parents. Tried. I tried to be the guy with the gray in his beard. I know the splash zone. Your kids are jumping up and down. Let's get splashed. No, Let's get splashed. No. I, I saw it happen so many times, and that was parents that were new. That they and I could tell by the way they were dressed to begin with, they thought the splash zone at the dolphin show would be you would get a few drops of water on you, mm. and you're really close to watching no, they, the they dolphins. Mean splash. You know when they're done educating you on them and they actually jump. Okay, so um, and I just wanted to say, Sherry, of course, being a veteran, we just kept moving past the splash zone, and the people were like, well, yeah, they, they, you know, and I, and I mean, we didn't even we wouldn't even look at the splash zone. Sherry won't even sit on the row right behind the splash zone. She wants three to four rows up from the splash that's zone. That's a veteran there. And that's a veteran mother. Um, I felt so bad for people that were dressed when stuff that they thought was kind of trendy. I mm. uh, also felt bad for everybody who didn't have rubber boots on, Ooh. you know, because their shoes are about to be sopping, soaking wet. You'd walk around wet feet all day. That's I will fine. credit the Georgia Aquarium. They try <laughs> to warn you. And for this, they get props. If you're going to sit in the splash zone, one of one of their public service, service announcements says you will be drenched in ice cold salt water. Wow. Okay. Oh. I thought, wow, that's really trying to help, but nobody believes it. They they think oh, in their mind. They think in their mind, hey, it ain't that bad. <laughs> these these animals weigh anywhere from three hundred to six hundred pounds, and the force that their tails can throw water. Makes us hitting each other in the face with water look like nothing. Oh. Yeah, I mean they they are going to oh, wow. drench you with water, and and watching people not understand the level of drench. Now keep in mind, 
once we're all settled in, they don't want you seeking higher ground because sure. now everything's wet and you can slip and fall. And yeah, you got to take it. Hearing the screams of the first time that the, that the dolphins did what you just saw, where they come at you and take their tails and just sling water on you, which is cool. True, because yeah. they thought I I could do that. they thought no, they were just going to get water on them in the jumps. That's yeah. what they thought, oh. and I thought that too when Not I was Not actually thrown at them. Yeah, I didn't know the dolphins actually try to dump water on you. You know, when because when you when you're a rookie, you think Dang, well, skipper. You, they think yeah. well, the, when they jump, somebody's going to jump over. Yeah, on that's us. what I thought, and that means I'm really going to see the jumps. Good. No, no, no. They have they have bits where they sling. You know, water. of course, you know that we used to do a lot of bits with the dolphins. Now we do about three. Yeah, is is because we've been other than that, we're being educated on them. But but anyway, the uh, by the way, I know a lot about dolphins. I don't need to be educated. <laughs> yeah, on them. I've heard it my whole life. Okay, I want to see them jump and and make me happy. I'm here to see a show. Yeah, and I want some pyro. I want I want a ring of fire. I want a hula skirt. I want hats. I want honking. Yeah. I want diving. I, I want I want acrobats that are unbelievable. Oh, and yeah. they did some of that. Don't don't hear me say they don't do any. And you still see how magnificent these animals are. So I'm not saying that. But if you sit in the splash zone, they're going to get you not a little bit wet, really wet. And to watch some of the the dads and moms start screaming and running, and there's nothing mm-hmm. now. This is the rest of the show for you. Yeah. You, yeah. And they're not done. People. <laughs> you don't get one splash and you survive it and that's it. Happy children went from screaming children. Oh. Oh. They, they were some, because your first reaction when water oh, hits you is God. to run. Run right? and scream. Yeah, you right. don't know what Think to do. about this. Think about this. There were literally people who had umbrellas and parkas because they thought they were going to walk in the rain in downtown Atlanta. That forecast was missed. They took all that off and then a dolphin got them wet. Oh, no. <laughs> So, so which was, which, uh, and, and not, please, not a little bit wet. If you're going to go to the dolphin show and you're saying, well, I'll tell you what, Rick Burgess, you're not going to talk me out of the splash zone. It better be the last thing you do because you're going to walk around the Georgia Aquarium then soaking you're gonna wet. Get yeah. uh-huh. You're yeah. going to get galled. You're going to get galled. It needs to be the last thing yeah, you do. Uh-huh. And if it bothers you to ride home with wet socks and shoes, mm-hmm. how about wet jeans? Hey, don't bring cute shoes you love. They're gone. Thing, oh yeah. They're gone. And don't bring those that, that, that cost you a lot of money because they're about to be soaking wet. I and need, the dolphins don't care. I need to know how many were running from the water. All right, so the splash zone is really big. I mean, it's about 12 they're rows. Slinging, huh? So I would say probably 30%, which is a high number. But there was nowhere for them to go. Then they were told by security to sit back down and take the water. Yeah, it's coming back. We told you to get to high ground. It's too late now. It's too dangerous. If you start running now, you're going to fall and slip. It's mm-hmm. wet. And the other seats are taken. Yeah. And now we filled in. We filled in behind. You don't come up here. <laughs> you ought to see me. Uh-uh. I haven't talked in the Whoa. hand. Whoa. Yeah. How, yeah. Wet, how oh. wet were they? Some of them were sopping wet. I'm talking about, you see how much Ring water. water out of the shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Were, they, were, were any the of them wearing something they shouldn't have worn to get wet? Yes. Yeah. Good question. There's, there's always that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, especially some of our big friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suddenly that big old shirt stuck to him. Well, I mean, <laughs> stuck. <laughs> hey, somebody painted it on him. Tire <laughs> blazing in there giggling. Oh, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> the, the double whammy on the big friends is, <laughs> is that nobody wants to see water dumped on us, and we can't really move. It's got yeah. us. It's got us. <laughs> we got to go. That T-shirt. Wow, that T-shirt! Oh, wow, we're white. Oh, one guy really. Oh, yeah, we're one belly guy, button. One guy. I don't know why. I don't know why the one guy didn't draw the line that the corn dog won't work. That's no way. <laughs> he tried. To, he tried to eat it anyway. There's no way. That thing is. That thing so is really it's big. It's soggy button. now. It's so yeah. soggy. You holding yeah. a stick? That's such a soggy <laughs> corn dog now. Oh my goodness! And hey, little lady with the stuff the thing she begged you for and screamed for. Man. Now it's so wet. Oh gosh! Oh, I gotta tell you that beluga whale's wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wet. Oh, and I tried to tell them nobody would listen. <laughs> so it was a great weekend. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it Good. was. Oh, uh, oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Eight six six. We be big is our number. We'll go phone trolling next. <laughs> On any topic you want to talk about, at 866-WE-BE-BIG as the Rick and Bubba Show continues. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I was proposing to the states to consider were litter zones. 
meaning there were parts of the, the litter zones, and you like your kids would be gathering up, which y'all just got at the, at the drive through. <laughs> daddy, daddy, no, no, no. Let's wait for a litter zone. Do not throw <laughs> litter this zone out. 35 miles. 35 miles. And yeah. then the families get excited. Here comes a litter zone. You know, I say litter, you say zone. Litter zone, oh, litter zone. zone. And then when you get there, you go, here comes a litter zone, kids, and everybody throws out, and these are places where litter is. It basically was building landfills on. Right on highways. Right, and then you have you have so you drive through a landfill, and then That's you and right. then you have then you have like kills a, two birds with one stone. That yeah. is excellent. And the convicts come and clean up these litter yeah. zones instead of throwing them up down the highway. Or the like bulldozer, we do. you just push them over into the big yeah. ravine. You're that done. You dug, you know? You're done. We we all litter, yeah. and we keep the rest of our streets clean. We only throw in litter zones. And see, I think that helps two things, Rick. It gives you a place to get rid of the litter, yeah. and, and you don't have to go and build a landfill no. on the side of a beautiful mountain somewhere. Now, those of you that are skeptic, skeptics of this, this would do away what we have now. Litter strode up and down the road for miles. Yeah. Because people are still doing it. They're doing it at a lesser degree than you know the glory days of the 70s and 80s. But, but what, what I'm saying is, if we had litter zones, to me, it puts the family back together. Right. You know, a family that litters together stays, stays together. together. Yeah. And, Everybody and, knows and, that. And, and so, you know, well, you, and, and plus you find out, you know, how good your kids can throw, and right. you, know, yeah. you know, and you teach them discipline. Don't throw where it's not where it's not allowed. You only throw where it's allowed. And, uh, and, and if I learn. see if I see somebody throw another cup out before we get to a litter zone, I'm gonna pull this car over. You know what I mean? Rick, they learn how to aim. Right. See, I knew that I had to be going 45 miles an hour and line up the target yes. with the, the, the hood on them. Right. And as soon as I saw that, you know, looking over the steering wheel, I could launch and, and yeah. hit it every time going 45. Can I tell you all what's I mean, sad right now? You, yeah. Can I tell you what's sad because of no litter zones and no more littering on the highway? And we shouldn't litter on the highway. I, I would prefer to go the litter zone. I guarantee Absolutely. you right now, my kids couldn't hit anybody with a rock. No. No. And when we were growing up, I could take a rock and hit anybody with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, because oh, why? Anything. Because because throwing out of the car. I mean, you you learned how to hit stuff. and Sitting and, still was right. easy after throwing and moving. Right. Right now, if somebody's yeah. attacking my kids, I dare to say they can't pick up a rock and hit them with it. Rick, can, <laughs> can we add a section of mailboxes to hit with baseball bats? <laughs> Can we add that in there? Mm. That's a federal offense now. Yeah. Well, they're I'm not, not I mean, real. They're not real mailbox. Well, you well, you oh, you're just talking about fake ones. Yeah. Absolutely, in the zone. Yeah. Matter of fact, why don't we have that in the zone? That's like what I'm talking. saying. Oh, you yeah. Yeah. The, zone. So the, you the way fake. you come in the zone is whoa, yeah. and then and then you get you get you okay. see a car in front of you. Oh, I hope they don't hit that mailbox before we get to it. Yeah, because it might not be. You have well, to set them have, up every day. You have fake road signs to practice throwing. Yeah, yeah all that. That's what I was gonna. I need to stop. By the way. I like saw the mind. bench warmers again this weekend where they were practicing batting yeah. by going and hitting mailboxes yeah. with Reggie Jackson. It, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, oh, and, and picture this, if you, wrong, picture this if you will. It On is. the litter zone, you know, I have good signage, right. you know, unlike the Georgia, you know, uh, the peach pass. <laughs> we, we have good signage, and it's a picture of a family throwing stuff out of a car. You know what I mean? And, and they're happy all, faces. Yeah, and they're all smiling like, yeah. you know, kind of a Norman Rockwell kind of thing. Yeah, I'd like that. Uh, that's what I'm picturing. It was, you know, pardon me for letting – for being innovative. Rick, up next, drunk driving zone. No. no I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Marty, you literally would drive through the landfill. Yeah. They got the bulldozers there. They're ready to clean it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to keep it clean. Yeah. Don't misunderstand me. I'm simply talking about good, clean, family fun. Littering. Imagine the highway just going through a landfill. I mean, that's what I see. It. I love it. <laughs> I still have a sign for a litter zone back there. Do you remember? I think I'm, Annie I'm just, Litter brought us one. Get past Rick's slogan. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That one was so. It, I couldn't get past it. I, <laughs> I had that good stone face thing going, but you know what I look forward something to. Something about right? family time together. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I look forward to is the idiots that are going to send an email that think this is sad. No, it's a brilliant idea. Let I know, me tell you something. I, I, actually actually I can't believe you feel that way. I actually love well, the idea. We have I, landfills I, anyway. I don't, I'm with you. I'm not. I don't. I don't want people littering all up and down the highways. It looks ratty and it's embarrassing. Yeah. But a litter zone is brilliant. Let the convicts <laughs> clean it up. Right. Because well, see, you cut out the middleman. You just right. take the trash right to the landfill. Right. How long of a stretch are you thinking? It's got to have. Yeah, we're going to enjoy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but we're going to keep we it know you up. get it ready to go. You right. don't need more than a mile. Yeah, that's what oh, I was. A mile. I, I, that's a long my, my, That's a big land. And my vision. We're, it's going to last 30 years. In my yeah. vision, we're three quarters of a mile. Every other day, bring the dozers in to push it back. Right. Yeah, right. push it back off the road to can give you, you a clean target. Can you imagine the fun in the vehicle and how clean your cars would and be? And we're creating jobs. Yeah. Don't are. forget that. Absolutely. Sam's jobs, jobs, jobs. Win, win, win. <laughs> Why this hasn't been implemented is beyond me. I got
It is nine minutes to the top of the hour. Our first phone troll of the day. 866-WE-BE-BIG is the number. And you can reach us. Anything you want to talk about. Make a comment, ask a question, bring information to the table. The buzzer will sound at 30 seconds. Your time on the program will come to a close. We'll get to the next caller. Uh, All 10 lines are available to you right now. And if you make a move, you should be able to get in re- uh, without without problem right now because we got so many lines. And then, because of the buzzer, we start moving through them, and you can uh, talk about any topic you want to talk about. So mm-hmm. Blazing Silverman is ready to take your calls now. Now, let me hit you with a few things that are going on this week, okay, involving the show and involving the manchurch.com. First of all, manchurch.com, a couple of opportunities to plug in. Laurel, Mississippi, Salem Heights Baptist Church, uh, coming up on the 17th, that's this Saturday. Lance Ingram will be there, Dr. Lou, uh, and he'll be part of that man church. He is the speaker. Make plans to be there. On the 22nd of September, uh, First Baptist Church, Opelika, they're, they're in three years now, and Andy Blanks is doing their next uh, man church, so you can be part of that, and they always do a good job of feeding you and everything else. You'll love it. That's on the 22nd. On the 25th, uh, Man Church at Friendship Church in Athens, Alabama. Scott Dawson will be there. They're new to the strategy, but this is their Man Church, and Scott will be there. Also on the 25th, Andy Blanks will be in Starkville, Mississippi, the home of uh, Laser 96.1. He'll be at First Baptist Church, and he's kicking off the men's discipleship strategy there. So that kind of lays out what's happening over the next couple of weeks involving the manchurch.com. Uh, so make plans to find one uh, near you. Uh, also, uh, other things that you need to know, Speedy uh, this uh, weekend will be with UAB. He'll be uh, emceeing at Protective Stadium in Birmingham. Uh, he'll be there for uh, UAB taking on Georgia Southern, coming off a big win, Georgia Southern. Uh, so uh, so make plans to be with Speedy coming up for a UAB home game coming up this weekend. That'll be obviously in Birmingham, Alabama, and then also in Birmingham, Alabama, Next Saturday, Sherry and I are part of a, um, uh, a grief conference called Sustaining Hope, <laughs> Grief Recognized. We'll be there with Mac Brunson, Scott Dawson. They'll have some breakout groups, too. We'll have some praise and worship. It is a ticketed event, and there's limited seating. If you want to be there with us on the 24th, go to rickandbubba.com, look under Upcoming Events. You'll see the link to get those tickets, and we'll see you next weekend. All right, so let's get started. Uh, let's go to Mason in Tuscaloosa. Mason, you got 30 seconds on the program. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I was uh, a monkey grass, by the way. Thanks for the call, buddy. Um, yes, sir. I, we took our family to uh, the Atlanta Aquarium, not this summer, but last summer, and we sat in the splash zone. Me and my wife said, oh, no. mm. how bad could it be? Mm. And those dolphins would not relent. Oh, no. We <laughs> left. We were... Yeah, that was the time of the masks. We couldn't breathe. Uh, my daughter was freaking out. I don't think we can go to that show again. No, it, it, it's so much more splash than you're counting on. The dolphins wouldn't cut on no slacks. <laughs> the dolphins would not relinquish. Take it. Mike in Birmingham listening on ZZK. Go ahead, Mike. 30 seconds. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Um, yeah, we were actually there yesterday. Um, and uh, we were that, that couple that didn't know that it was going to be like that. My wife was wearing something very trendy, trendy and cute. Oh, and, uh, and we sat in the splash zone, but we sat just on the edge, and it didn't get us. But she looked at me like, oh, my gosh, we just made it through something, uh, just made it through a miracle here. <laughs> and it was just so funny. It's a lot of water. It's a tremendous amount of water. And, uh, man, if I you missed uh, by one day, we could have been there together. I did meet some of the fans of the show on Saturday, too. It was so good to see them. Oh, that's good. Shane in Georgia. Shane, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Go ahead, buddy. Hey, good morning, Rick. Hey, just, just wanted to ask, what is the pulse of the Alabama Crimson Tide Nation this morning, today, after a close call with Texas? And second question is, every time I try to call the will meet, it rings and then it goes immediately to a, uh, like a deer. My call didn't go through. So just wonder what was that all about. Uh, well, your call didn't go through, through great today. Uh, you're breaking up a good bit. But I heard your question. Um, the, uh, that just means that the system is being overwhelmed. That's what that means. 
uh, and it can only take so many calls, and at some point it'll start uh, just sending you uh, to that uh, message that there's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. That that just means there's just too many people calling. Yeah. Um, so I wish your voice would come on when things like that would happen, mm-hmm. like an operator's voice. Yeah. Hey, there's too much going on. Hey, there's too, too, much. Hey, too much going on, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the pulse of the Set Bama, the Bama nation is is like it always is. You know, Bama fans, uh, they're rough on their team. They they expect excellence. Uh, most of them are saying they didn't deserve to win. Saw some of that out there. I don't know about that. Uh, well, they get that on, hey, we didn't deserve that. Uh, and then then there's others that um, relish in how everybody celebrates them still winning, but not winning impressively, mm-hmm. and they make fun of that. Uh, and then of course there's always some commentary on penalties. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, that you know, Bama's got to clean it up a little bit. So uh, we're young, and this will help us grow. Yeah, right. Some of that mm-hmm. out there. Uh, the, hey, we needed this we to wake us all. up. <laughs> when, yeah, yeah, but you know, yes, Rick, that's a big trying one. Trying to trying to play the obvious. Hey, this is hey, Saban did it on purpose. No, oh, here we go. Yeah, hey, oh, I'm oh, telling you. Hey, road tide. Hey, hey, Saban. I mean, he's pleased with this. I mean, we get out of there with a W, but we learn something. <laughs> we don't. Hey, I, we don't need to be listening to that rat poison. All by design. And Greg tried to tell everybody last week Georgia should be number one. Nobody hey, listen. Let Georgia enjoy it number one July. Thanks, Helms. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, there goes my hear my computer humming. <laughs> That's so good. Right. <laughs> Chad and Alex City. Chad, go ahead. Hey guys, I'm glad to call this morning and a uh, longtime football fan. First thing I knew other than Jesus was Alabama football. But um Ouch. Question. Wow. I know we're big Football fans, why do high-powered offenses continue to snap the ball back five yards and have to go five yards to get a half inch on fourth down? Yeah, can I ask you why about the Jesus? Can I ask you about the Jesus comment Let's again? Get back to that. You've got a timeout. Let's clear what, what did you say about Jesus in Bama football? Well, the first thing I learned from my mama was Jesus. That's the first thing I remember my mama telling me is about Jesus. Right. And never doubted that Jesus was was Jesus. He was real, just as real as I'm talking to you, Rick. No doubt. But the first thing I learned from my daddy was Alabama football. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's what I was afraid you said. Uh, that, that's, uh, uh, Road time. Themanchurch.com. <laughs> Themanchurch.com. Disciple men change everything. Uh, oh, man. Wow. Oh, he makes boy. a good point on that. He does. Yardage, he man. does. I, now, on the football part of it, Great. That drives me I gotta get nuts. But I'm gonna start five yards behind. Can we line. not take a snap under sitter on yeah. short yardage? Just practice that in one period of practice. Yeah. Top of the hour. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. All right, so let's talk about uh, – it is not a you know, it's not a fun subject, but we're going to talk about life insurance. Um, it, but it is a reality. One, one or two things are going to happen to, to, to every single one of us, okay? We're going to die uh, a, a physical earthly death, or Jesus is going to come back in our lifetime. Okay, one of those two is going to happen. Uh, but if you die a physical death and you're leaving behind people who uh, were accustomed to being taken care of, uh, then you need to be sure that they're going to receive the money uh, that your insurance policy uh, says they will. And you don't really, I mean, we're simplifying life insurance. I want to know that my family's going to get their check. And with the latter, they make it very simple. And let me tell you, speaking from experience, uh, the older you get, the more it costs and the more difficult it is to get the kind of um, you know payoff to your family that you want. Uh, so use Ladder. They've simplified this system. It is 100% digital, no doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, just answer a few questions, okay? Uh, and then, they're, they're, look, they're being rated by customers like me, 4.8 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Uh, they made Forbes' best life insurance list in 2021. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel any time. Get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. You did hear me right. If it's $3 million or less, no doctors will get involved. Uh, and, and it's all done in their algorithms. To find out if you're approved instantly, and they'll get you the coverage you're looking for. They have simplified something that is extremely important. 
and that is life insurance. So go to L-A-D-D-E-R, life, that's ladder, like you climb a ladder, ladderlife.com slash Bubba. That's ladderlife.com slash Bubba, and get this done. saying when I when I went by the store yesterday I, I was going by to take them. They were out of something, and we were restocking on one of the old CDs Don't that we still that. had some hard copies of. And so uh, so anyway, so when I got there, you know how when somebody knows how bad it is in here, if you end up being like the butt of a joke or something, and they don't, they don't want anything to – Yeah, glass, it works fine. So these are – what do they call static? Uh, they're supposed to stick to the front of the computer so that when the computers are up here in the studio, each person was going to have their cartoon and a little saying – there by it and so anyway um how funny is that when i went by there you know how you can tell when somebody's confidence in something yeah. is waning and uh I, I was like okay hey let me have those computers the things they've been waiting on those and she was like now understand it's supposed <laughs> to stick to an apple computer right it's supposed to yeah and i right then i knew i mean i, I could just see the confidence yeah. going <laughs> mm. saw it drain right out so they the, so they're not working but we tried them and she said if, if they don't work then you know we'll try something got else. To keep yeah, but I, i'm like i'm like hamsey now now that we got those uh, rick and bubba decals I mean, yeah that'll work good that, those look hey good. adler show me my shot straight on How, what can you see in the background mm. is it when you zoom in on me usually there you go. I can see it way back yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, I just didn't know. I hadn't looked at the framing in a while. Yeah, yeah. That, that, you can see. Don't be mad with me back here. That's well, funny. Well, I don't want to block the view of the call screener, but I, I just want to test it on some glass. Well, I mean, look, they can still see me. See <laughs> right there. They can see right over your uh, we need right to, shoulder. We need to get all of them and stick them somewhere together. <laughs> since none of them stick on the laptop. Right. I even thought about our doors, and I realized, well, no, that's not stick on that either. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, but, look, we try okay. things here, guys. We try things. Uh-huh. We try uh, stuff. And all right, we we do have uh, a lot to to look at going forward obviously the big news last night another terrorist attack manchester england you know i was sitting there and saw that come across the phone i'm like well here we go again yeah and, we uh, were watching when all that broke last night yeah. ariana grande her concert in manchester and uh, it appeared right as the concert was over that an ied was uh, detonated in a four-year area um it looked like to to do as much damage as it could to people coming out of the concert right. and it was the main entrance way between it and the what is their subway station which is right across the street so um an obvious planned attack they uh, the british prime minister spoke this morning she said they have they think the name and they have made an arrest which they think may be a support person in this so we'll yeah. know more in the next few hours yeah when they first started they kept saying they thought it might be a suicide bomber they say now they don't think it is it was something just set up to go off or do they think no that, they think it was a person they do think yeah. he ran in there and, and yeah. you know there was confusion in the beginning because people said they heard a boom they might have heard two booms yeah, I heard that. uh and then there was a report that it may have been a balloon that went off or some kind of electronics uh on the stage because there was no smoke you know the initial pictures they didn't yeah. see smoke they didn't see fire but it really was a bomb. It just wasn't in the main auditorium. Right. So, yeah, they they were hearing it from in there. And right. plus, what added to the confusion is is the at the concert they dropped balloons on everybody right at the end. Right, mm-hmm. and so. there was some of that you know popping going right. off so. apparently. So, so anyway, but, but the dash cam uh, video and audio from somebody, I guess it's out waiting outside, mm-hmm. yeah, and they, you can hear the nat sound of when it goes off. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's a bomb because it's you big. can you can hear her music and then the the sound of it going off there's a definite difference yeah you hear the in the concert the and compression the, of the bomb right know? yeah and then some of the people that were near it some of the horrible things they saw yeah. and experienced were just terrible so so anyway uh, another terrorist attack another one 22 day it confirmed so far 59 injured and that number's going up right so uh, in uh, 15 minutes past 866 We Be Big is our number, and we'll continue to update on that uh, horrific uh, event again last night as uh, the war uh, from terrorists on innocent people continues. We'll be back. More Rick and Bubba next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
It is seven minutes now past the hour from the no-name studio on the bleeding edge of technology. Here we go. Blazing Silverman, Rick and Bubba University student, taking phone calls at 866-WE-BE-BIG. The gang all here at South Bubba. Bubba back uh, with us, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow. Just doing some additional testing today, which was scheduled. We uh, have uh, broke down a little bit of the football action over the weekend. We've looked back over, uh, you know, our weekend. Still have more updates coming. We must check on Eddie Van Adler's home project. Still got that coming up on the show today. We got to know how that's going. Go! Oh! So, um, yesterday, a somber anniversary for America, uh, 9-11. We have talked about it. I've had people that, uh, even in the last uh, week, that have said, I'll never forget listening to the show that day as it unfolded um, during the live show. That was uh, 21 years ago yesterday. 21 years, guys. Mm -hmm. 21 years. That's, That's something. I mean, that predates Greg and Helms. I mean, it goes oh, by it long way. goes way on back. You realize the show uh, at that time was only seven years old. Yeah. Wow. 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 Try that on. Wow. Mm-hmm. Think about that for a minute. Sip on that. So, uh, so anyway, um, you know, and and looking back on that, and just thinking about all the things we've learned since. But um, so there was a lot of tributes going on yesterday, as they should, as 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 expected, and and were appropriate. Uh, we were not on the air, so we didn't get to do what we normally do. We go back, and we'll actually take the time and play back some of the clips. But, but we definitely want to do something today, even though yesterday was the actual anniversary. But so there was a, a moment that happened. What at one of the NFL games, Baltimore yeah, at and, MetLife? And, yeah, mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens were um, at the New York Jets, okay. and so prior to the game, uh, New York uh, Police Department officer Brianna. Uh, uh, Fernandez uh, was going to be uh, performing the national anthem. And I think either this was planned or it was good on her part. After she started, she just stopped singing and the stadium took over. So oh, no wow. one knows whether this was spontaneous or not? No. Uh, no. It but, was a good idea, no, whatever it was. Uh, well, I, how about this? She doesn't know that everybody's going to start singing, so I'm just going to say it was a good move on her part because it was a moving national anthem here inside MetLife. All right, here we go. Present oh. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we That's um, that's that, pretty that, moving. That policeman sings pretty good. Yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She does. Police person. Yeah, that was. Um, thank you, Greg. Uh, that was. Um, <laughs> she does. That was. Um, was Greg, they don't just put any. They don't put a microphone in from I've anybody in uh, uniform. We've seen okay? some things. There's some talent there. Yeah. Before oh, you even wait start. a minute. No, no. I, I thought she sang really good. Yeah. The way you said it, though, Greg. I'm it was saying, kind of a, she's a you, policeman it, in full uniform. Do you know you what it know sounded like? Many... It sounded like, well, that's pretty good for a woman. That's what it sounded like. No, I said policeman. I'm just saying she's in full uniform. <laughs> just go with officer. Singing, officer. Uh, yeah. You're like, wow, she can really sing. Of course, she bailed out. We don't know. <laughs> right. But, Greg. Yeah. She good. came back in. She did. Strong. She, she did. Back. She did. All right, so do y'all, what do y'all think happened there? I believe that I it was. I think she ran out of breath. No, Greg. I think it was spontaneous. Now, 
I don't know what the Jets fans screamed at that one part where she felt like they. I better get back in here. And, <laughs> You're right. By the yeah, way, they did, did, like did they add yeah. something? Yeah, they, there was something they screamed. What did they scream at? Did do they? You know? Did they do something? It seemed like everybody was on board, and it was like at the oh say part. Yeah, and it was like, is that some tradition that they do? Like, they say, oh, say, oh, or so, I don't. And it yeah, seemed oh, yes. it seemed like everybody was on the same page, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah, one guy with his face painted up yeah. was screaming. It sounded yeah. like one of those things that people yell things out, like during. <laughs> well, there's some that they yell out. I, I won't even yell. Yeah. But I, I mean, I uh, back I to face painter though, Greg. Yeah. You, 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 all right, so you know when you paint your, paint your face up. But it's but it only works when you have your hat on. Yes. Well, when he took his hat off, <laughs> now right. he was only painted from like the cheekbones <laughs> oh, down. That's right. You know? He was kind and of that so, big face. Yeah. I, I will tell you this though: he loved the Jets and he loved America. Well, yes, yes, he did. Well, it, yeah. look in today's time it, to have a stadium full singing the anthem. It it's, was. It's nice. It's no, in New York. Good. It's a rainy day now. The yeah, Ravens. The, the, the Ravens ruined the Jets' day and beat them. But, well, most um, people do. But yeah. you know, for that moment, it was special. Can it, I tell you, if you're a Jets fan, the day you woke, the morning that morning when you woke up, your day was ruined. Yeah, that's true. when you put on that green jersey, football's back. From now, time for me to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, time for me to put on the jersey and go hate this game, this team again. Right. Uh, but Rick, in another mm-hmm. moving uh, rendition, right. uh, you know how the UFC fans are. Uh, they tried to. They had a big event. They tried to do a tribute to Queen Elizabeth. And they put her picture up and everything, and they started chanting USA. No, they did not. No, they did not. No, they did not. <laughs> Drowning out the tribute. Yes, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. But, yeah, that, that felt like a – during that national anthem, it felt like a uh, – you know, like when they go, like, spent my dollar on beer. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Say, Yo, yeah, like, well, yeah. do they have something they say yeah. right there? I'd like to go Jimmy, back and hear it again. Jimmy Buffett fans, they scream out things throughout all of his songs. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, right. that kind yeah. of yeah. stuff. Interaction. Yeah. Salt. That, yeah. Salt. Yeah. Salt. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Can't so. stand that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That. That kind of stuff. Is, and also, well, no. don't get started. All I can think it's about is Lamar it. Jackson's deal is not done. Yeah. It was like a oh say yeah. What was that? That was bizarre. Because yeah. that's when she decided to get back in. They're, they're yelling I, something. Can, can I? I think they just got ahead of it. Either that, that or do you it? think they showed they something that we can't see on the jumbotron or something that created a a, a roar or something? Because it sounds What's like they a, said like, the same thing. I think just... a painted face did something. <laughs> Greg, stop it. <laughs> good night. Here's the officer you think can't sing, Greg. No, yeah, I, I think she can't really sing. Probably not going to give her a mic. Picture this: if you if she was writing you a ticket, you wouldn't think. Well, I bet she can sing. If you, you look know? close, though, honestly, it's just it's Ariane Grande is put on a, a, yeah, a police. It is. Look here. Look here. You reckon he'd crash a can on his head? <laughs> There's a guy that loves America and loves the Jets. That. Amen. Mm-hmm. He funneled three before he walked in. <laughs> oh, ain't no <laughs> doubt about it. That guy right there. <laughs> yeah, let's go in, guys. <laughs> if you want to know what they were yelling during that time, he could tell us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I hate to say Because he's leading it. Yeah. Ari- Ariana Grande is actually a redhead in real life. Well, not with a, not with a police hat on. Right. Right. right that's yeah, true. Right, yeah. But as far as her overall look, she gets a lot of flack uh, for totally changing what she actually Really? Like. Did not know that. Yeah. You know, I'm not. You I'm, know how you are. You can't. You might look like a different culture, and then you can't do that. Right. That's I right. don't care, but yeah, this right. is kind of. Yeah. Uh, My right. pop culture, you know. Yeah. Ariana Grande never enters. Are you saying that? Yep. Mm-hmm. By there the way, uh, y'all, y'all mentioned UFC, which reminded me of boxing. Did anybody see Adrian Peterson? Rick? Yeah. What get, was that? Yeah, get, what was that? Get knocked out, Rick? Did you see his knees give way? <laughs> no, we, <laughs> why were they boxing? <laughs> We've got that for you if you want to look at it. Oh, man. He, he, I jab. Did you see his you knees? His knees say, I'm out. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. First of all, let's try to figure out why a... What, whatever everybody's the comfortable name with, the terrorists who happen to be Muslims. Okay? Does that seem pretty yeah, accurate? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. So so what what's their beef with young people and parents taking their kids to see a pop star perform and they're leaving a, a concert? What What's their beef with Manchester, England? Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 I will uh, submit this to you yep. uh, and to answer your questions. It, they do not – it's not the concert per se. It's not the. It, it's the fact it's a soft target. Yep. And well, they can easily yep. get into it because it's not defended, and create as big a havoc as possible. And they know any time that young people or kids are killed, 
that that will uh, bring more passion to the topic and get more headlines out of it. Which could also bring resolve to to allies who who come after you again. Yeah, well, it does, and they right. don't they don't realize that. I mean, if I if I'm watching World News today and I'm sitting in uh, some village in Iraq or uh, Afghanistan or Sudan or whatever, I think, well, it's just a matter of time to we're going to have things raining down on us in response to this. But it doesn't seem to work because here's the second part. That first of all, so I guess England. And, and any of the people in Europe, they get attacked because they work with the United States, who ha- who also works with Israel. Is that how those, all this comes apart? Rick, how one, does of, it all the, come one of the pages I hate all the West. On, on one of the social media outlets said, basically, your bombs, uh, the, the U.K. has dropped on Mosul right, and okay. several of these other places have now come home to fall okay. in Manchester. Because they conveniently forget why those bombs were dropping on Mosul. They, 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 they've got the circle all out of whack. Rick, pre nine eleven, you basically don't have the U.S. involved in any of it. Right. We we just you know we it's it's a police action. Right. You know we we stop bad people. We try to, mm-hmm. but that that brought it to a new level, and we've been engaged at a new level since then. But you know I, I have to ask the you know this question: Are the way that we're fighting it working or not? It it continues. I mean, we keep having this. Now, what is different in Britain and France and some of these other places? contrary to the U.S. right now. Well, they have open borders. Uh, the, the open borders and the... And they have a much, much larger population of folks from this part of the world who, not all of them, I agree, uh, are car bombers or IED bombers or suicide bombers, but when you have a larger number, your percentage of those people who are radicalized go up also. Well, it, and, and the fact that they, that, that Western Europe, like many Americans, I think, are miscalculating this... They think that we can love them into submission. Right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, if it did, then well, we'd already have to be at peace. Well, France it? would would definitely not have uh, had the Paris attack. Right. Uh, and we would. And they've had more than anybody, by the way. Yeah. If you look, really, and this, you know, this is a general statement. And I acknowledge that. It seems to be the people who try to do the loving approach and everything's good. You're welcome here. No guns. No anything. Get attacked the most. Uh, because of back to Bubba's original point, right. they're soft targets. So I will go back to this again. So they, well, they're, they're bent look, on. Look uh, in America. What what gets attacked here by mad gunmen the most? Soft Schools. targets. Yeah. School. Yeah, soft targets. You got you got the two things that they really Gun love. Free kids. Zones. Kids. Gun free. And they know that there's not going to be a resistance there. It's a soft target. Anywhere that's a gun-free zone is more apt to be attacked. All right. I right. Mean, that's just a fact. And, uh, and, and and it's a general statement because we've had attacks on other things, but you're a lot more likely to see a school, a mall, a concert attack than you are a gun store or a military base. Back, Although we've had them too, but, right. but overall, but just even at in the numbers. But even in those cases, a lot of times it was from within. Yes. Where once yes. again they use our political correctness yes, to infiltrate to, the military, and right. here, here we go. Right. That's the other plan that we fall victim to every time because we just don't think. Uh, but anyway, so the, the they said the fastest growing population in Manchester, England, is Muslim, uh, and uh, they said that the other part of it is it has become almost a completely secular society. Uh, now, yeah, England's been that way for a while. Yeah, now that's that's another commentary. We won't get into all that today, but it's worth mentioning. The other thing is this, and you you were and we always say this, and we should. No, we're not saying. That all Muslim, and we fall all over ourselves to do this. But here's one thing I've said it, I'm gonna say it again today, and I'm gonna watch for it. Where is the press conference? Where is the gathering of peace loving Muslims denouncing this attack? When it happens, and I'm sure it does somewhere, it just seems to be such a tiny little voice, I just can't quite hear it like a Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. 21 minutes now past the hour, uh, Rick and Bubba's show. Thanks for being with us. 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. So um, Ryan is out of Birmingham. Ryan's listening to us on 104.7 WZZK. Ryan, welcome to the Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for your patience. Go right ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Monkey grass, green acres, love the show. Thank you, man. Very kind hey, of you to call. Appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, I was going to make a comment on uh, you guys are talking about what they were yelling on the national anthem when they got to the O part. Yeah. 
with it being uh, Baltimore as yeah. the visiting team, the Orioles, when I've been to a couple of their home baseball games, and when they get to the O part, everybody in the stadium shouts O for Orioles. So with it, uh, with okay. it being Baltimore fans, yeah. that could have been what they were Several people have emailed and said that that's yeah. exactly okay. what's going on here. Okay. That's really right. good. Which is stupid to yell at when the Orioles, Orioles yeah. are not playing. That is stupid. It is. Uh, but, but, but maybe Ravens they just got start caught, up with up caught up with it. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, it. yeah it's, uh, it's the <laughs> Ravens. But, uh, yeah, you're right. And, and a lot of people are agreeing with you, Ron. I think you are right. Uh, let's go to Jim in Northport. Jim, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Go ahead. Good morning, fellas. Hey, Jim. Uh, last Saturday, I was watching the Kentucky-Florida game on ESPN, and uh, all during the broadcast, the crowd noise was so loud, I could hardly hear what the announcers were saying. Is there not some way, I mean, ESPN's not a technically unsophisticated organization. Good point. Is there not some way they could kind of turn the announcers up a little bit over the crowd noise, or does all that come through on one signal? No, there's a there's a crowd mic, and that that's you're right. You're all over this. This is somebody not mixing yeah, it, the experience was well. It was the swamp was rowdy. This yeah, because I was flipping channels. I thought the same there, thing when I was. You're right. Yeah. It was. It was louder than normal. No, that's somebody not doing the well, job. I noticed Jim. on the BYU game that came on afterward, they had a similar situation. I just wondered if that was something ESPN was doing. Maybe well, they're wanting to have crowd noise. Well, maybe it's some of these younger people because I noticed when they're mixing now, like if they're mis- mixing music. They want the music to be really over the singer, and you're kind of like, I, I wish I could hear the singer just a little bit better because I can't even hear the lyrics. Uh, and there was a time they mixed differently, and and I think maybe maybe that's some of that. They think, uh, you know, we want that mix to be like you're in the stadium, but the problem is mm-hmm. we want to hear the announcers, and and, and I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I find I find that annoying. Loud. Yeah. I want to now. I do. I don't like to hear them shut the crowd all the way out because then it's just too dry. But but uh, you know, a little bit of crowd goes a long way. Uh, and I, it, I think they're just doing a bad job of mixing it. And and some of it may be surround sound too, the way your TV set up. Some of that may be in play. But since Greg said it was happening too, oh, yeah, I've flipped yeah. the thing. It may I've just be wild. simple. Someone not doing a good job mixing. Yeah, and um, oh, but the swamp I, was just rocking. Yeah, yeah, that was, was a, of course, Kentucky. I bet silence. Yeah. yeah, I bet the crowd wasn't too loud. Yeah, suddenly it wasn't that loud. That, toward the end. Um, all right, so Greg, this one, this one is for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a video sent. You know, we've got a, a a little bastion of of men who love our show in Arkansas. All right. And anything Arkansas, they want to send me. Bring you know? it on. And they love their Razorbacks. And the show is growing in Arkansas. And so they, we. yeah, they have a highway patrol from Arkansas. Pulling over a couple. All right. And this is from their, I guess, their their car cam. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It is solid go. Oh. Okay. All right. So 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 here we go. And Miss Curtis, thank you for telling me who you are this time. Last time you didn't. Okay. Oh, that was you. That was me. Uh, this is citation for driving on suspended license. Okay. Yes, I'm, and I'm paying on that last one. Okay. Yeah. Just sit tight right here for me. Why is he running? He doesn't even have a warrant. Hey, Curtis. Uh, what's his name again? Robert, Robert you're good, right. bud. <laughs> no. no warrant, Robert. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now, now what? Now what? Greg? Drop it. But that's me, I think. Yes, sir. How stupid, dude. <laughs> I got to see it running. <laughs> Go back now that you know what that is. Watch Robert get out of the car and dig. He's out of there. He's, he's all right, shirtless. And Let's you can see. thank you for telling me who you are this time. Last time you didn't. Oh, that was you. That was me. Uh, this is a citation for down on suspended license. Okay. And I'm paying on that last one. Okay. Yeah. Just sit tight right here. For me. Why is he running? <laughs> he doesn't even have a warrant. <laughs> hey, Curtis. Or what's his name again? Robert. You're good, bud. No warrant, Robert. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Drop it. But that's me, I think. Yes, sir. How stupid, dude. Oh, oh God. Is Rob, Robert has <laughs> got to go. No, wait yeah. a minute. She, he says, the last time you went and told me, <laughs> she goes, oh, was that you? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Thank you for telling me who you are this time. <laughs> that's so good. He's pulled this couple over how many times? Look at Robert. Yeah, Robert. What's his name? Is that Curtis? No, Robert. Robert! You're good, man. Mighty. No warrant. And you can hear Robert going, no warrant. <laughs> but all right, why didn't Robert throw the meth down yeah, when he was way out was there? Running. But what he didn't the want to, he didn't want to give that meth up, did he?
You no. want to get rid of it? No. Yeah. Golly. Gosh, I love that's that. so good. I love how he was very quiet getting out. Gosh, but then he good. slammed the door. I don't right. notice. Right. And he took off. <laughs> yeah. What about when he looks up and goes, why is he running? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's watching slam door. He's quiet. He thinks he's getting away from it. Is that Usain Bolt? <laughs> the guy's got legs. Why is he running? Hey, Curtis. Uh, what's his name again? Robert, you're good, bud. No warning, Robert. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> well, don't miss the when, listen when the. That's math, ain't it? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's go back. Yes, listen to the first conversation when he says, "Now, remember, last time I pulled you over, you didn't tell me who you were. <laughs> was that you? Yeah, that was me. Listen to him talk to you." And Miss Curtis. Thank you for telling me who you are this time. Last time you didn't. Oh, that was you? That was me. <laughs> oh, that was you? Uh, last, time, hey, last time you didn't. It sounds like <laughs> she has a couple of unpaid with not paid on that one. Right. She's yeah. like, yeah. Didn't appear in court. Well, yeah, I was out of town now. <laughs> great, great. Thank you for telling me who you are this time. Oh, was that you? That was me. That was me. All right, so if that's the woods there, all right, so we're showing a shot here. I yeah. love when he Is that where he, he was digging towards the woods <laughs> and just quite, was... couldn't quite get there before Greg, he looked up? Well, it wasn't hurt. He didn't have no more. He forgot to drop the mail. Greg, what about, why is he running? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, about the side and take off. <laughs> Yeah, Lee. That, that is right there is gold. With that. Yeah, it let, is. let me tell the Arkansas crew, keep them coming. That's awesome. <laughs> Please. I mean, they, they, hey, they've sent us some gold. That is that is hilarious. He said his goal is to make us realize that these things don't just happen in Alabama. Okay. And uh, I like really how good. relaxed the police officer is. He's oh, yeah. like, ah. Why is he running? <laughs> I ain't chasing. He don't have a warrant this time. That'll tell you how how much this couple's in their lives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this happening to them is a daily occurrence. Oh, yeah. All right, Adler's got a project at the house. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Got to get an update on the project. I remember you were flying out of here. Was that Friday when you that you had to get because you had something happen with the flash or whatever and you were, or the water? Oh, my goodness, guys. Yeah. All right, bottom of the hour. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I want to hear it. I mean, I, I want to hear passion. I want to hear calling out fellow Muslims. This is not who we are. This is not what we believe. This must stop. I denounce this with passion. Uh, this, this, this reflects poorly on Islam. This is not of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Allah is unhappy. Like, like I, I would be shouting and have shouted when people do things in the name of Jesus that is wrong. Okay? You point out that's not correct. I just don't hear that voice like I'd like to. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I keep – there's this elephant in the room that, that we just fall all over ourselves. You remember back after 9-11? I think what was, you're saying is, much like we've said about North Korea, you'd like to see China take the lead on that. Right. And the news clip every day being the Chinese president said this must stop. The Chinese president – just put the shut the border down with North Korea. Correct. The Chinese president just embargoed North Korea, saying this foolishness will stop. So, by the same token, we like to see the leaders of the Muslim world be the leaders stomping out Islamic terrorism. Well, I think you can go back. Somebody sent it to me yesterday. I think you can go back to September seventeenth, twenty eleven. I think that was it. And and look. I think he did a good job through the process, but even George W. Bush got caught up in wanting to. Hey, Islam is a religion of peace, and he remember he gave that big speech, and there's all kinds of sound clips on it. Hey, hey, I, I, I where, where's the proof of that? Well, I think the immediate concern, Rick, that's certainly a debate right. for another day. Right, but you've got to be able to to cut off this bunch who is right dedicated to this activity right now well but my point still is part of that you know why we don't it's because we fall all over ourselves to try not to look mean like you said earlier and until we decide that we're okay with being called mean you, you you're not gonna make you any safer well the pr- i think what they're trying to do from a strategy standpoint is they say well you got some people who are not involved in this you got some people who are and you got some people in the middle so we're trying to cut off the people who are involved's ability to do this right. without making the ones in the middle turn into replacements for right. them. Yeah. Now, does that work long-term or not? We certainly can debate that. But 
Well, it goes back to the original thing with Trump, where I where I completely supported what he did because it was reasonable. Hey, you know, he even did the PR part. Look, yeah. w- w- everybody keeps saying, I'm saying we're going to get rid of every Muslim. We- He's never said that, never has. But saying screening out through the immigration process of people coming into your country that come from places that have proven that they are cells that train and They're set the up. They're the seedbeds for these things, yeah. It's reasonable to screen those people. Yes, it is. That's yes, reasonable. It is. It's not mean. It's Vet not them out. And, and strategically, it's wise. And, and that is coming to America. We're looking at the future. No doubt. Bubba, no doubt. Rick and Bubba. I will say this. We were just watching uh, President Trump um, as he is speaking now at the uh, Israel Museum, and it really was quite moving. And uh, and I will say this, um, as we always are fair here, if, you know, for something to be critical of, we're going to. We're definitely not uh, homers when it comes to things that we've always disagreed with. But I will tell you right now, uh, the speech that he just gave there, the part I just saw were, was something that was said as straightforward as it could be, and I hope it's something that we stick to. As he said, uh, he, and he went on record, we will always stand with Israel. And, I, and, it, and it's so refreshing just to hear that be said just straight out, uh, unapologetic, just as straight as we can. Uh, didn't realize Bubba and I were talking about you would have thought this would have happened before. Uh, I actually got this from my wife yesterday. I uh, went home and uh, we were having dinner, and she says, do you realize that President Trump is the first U.S. president to ever go to the West Wall? And I was like, nah, honey, I'm not sure about that. And so, you know, we did, don't you? We Googled it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and it, it, it is correct. And I guess, like Bubba said in the break, it's such a volatile place. A lot of presidents, I guess, just politically want to stay away from it. Uh, you know, the, it's the thing we've always said about Trump. There's going to be things because of who he is we're going to go, oh, buddy. But then because of who he is, you're going to get some things you actually love, and that is stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, where he just goes up and, and, um, and, and, and stands there and, and prays there, and he said he stood there and he talked about going to the, you know, the, the church for the Christians. He went to the wall. He went to the Holocaust Museum. Met with uh, the Palestinians. Yeah, and um, and so what he's saying here, you know, the Palestinians probably will not like, but I'm glad to hear him say it, and um, and 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 go on record, and then of course, uh, hopefully he will he will stick to those words uh, in this process and kind of understand the situation there. I think he's, you know I was surprised, like we were talking in the break, that he was the first president to go to the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall. Yeah, I, I guess, like you said, I guess because it was just so politically volatile, like we just said. I, I guess that's why. People just say, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Don't you imagine security there, too, would be an issue? In the vol- it is 35 minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba show with no Bubba today. He's back tomorrow. Just doing some tests that were scheduled. And uh, we'll get an update tomorrow from him. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about cleanpods.com slash bubble. I know I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, here's a new way to do something. But when, 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 when I hear that it's life changing, uh, then I must take a look. And I, I'm telling you if, if some of you will just take the time to investigate cleanpods.com slash bubba, I think you're going to love this. I think you're going to love this. So, uh, so you go there now and, and, and go, just go to our website, clean pods with an S clean pods.com slash Bubba go there. And we're going to get you 10% off anything that you get. And we're also going to get you free shipping. All right. That's just for you. Now you're looking at the cleaning stuff you're using right now. You got this, that, and that. What about a better way to do it with clean pods.com slash Bubba for less than $10 each product will give you at least five full bottles of cleaning solution. Now, I want you to think about that. Uh, when was the last time that you went to the store, got your cleaning supplies, and it cost you two bucks each? Well, that'd be never. So this is, and here's how it works: they they have pods for whatever type of cleaning you need to do. They provide the spray bottles. You just drop the pod in there, add the water, shake it up. Here we go. Hey, it's on. And they've got everything from floors to glass to bathroom, multi-use, thousands of sprays. Uh, and so it costs less, and um, and it works great. Uh, get 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 everything if you want, and in the bundle, or, or get two or three, whatever you want to do. Go now to rickandbubba.com under the sponsors, or just directly to cleanpods.com/bubba. 
Some of you are already loving this, like our wives, and some of you just need to take the step, and you're going to love it. All right, that's cleanpods.com slash Bubba or rickandbubba.com under the uh, the sponsors button. All right, so Adler, we need an update from you. Um, you have a major project. You know, you're somebody's dad now, somebody's husband. You know, got a few projects going on around my house. I'm a homeowner. Uh, so this one, though, is a biggie. It features a deck, and uh, you have uh, – there's been loads of wood. Uh, you even got Greg involved with That's plywood. Right. Uh, you have workers on site. Tell us what's going on. How? What, what did the weekend produce? Whew, guys, you know when you come to work to rest? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm in that mode. I remember those years. I'm in that mode right now. Yeah. Uh, we remember Thursday night, I had the Bill Gaither concert with my grandma. Right. So that was on Thursday night. So I'm, I'm out late that night. Rocking. I got like four or five hours of sleep that night. Yeah. Ouch. Friday, we had, my wife and I actually had a date night planned for like months and months now. Uh-oh. Uh, we had a babysitter. You ruined it. Ruby was going to grandma and granddad's house for a sleepover. And Aaron and I were going to Gary Clark Jr. at Avondale. Don't know who that is, but it sounds like a date, so it sounds fantastic. Yeah, we did dinner, and then we went and saw Gary Clark Jr. He's this like blues Guitar guitarist. Guy. He is he's this black guy that shreds a guitar yeah. just like a like he's like if BB King was born again right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, got it. He is. Uh, I love Gary, Gary Clark Jr. In fact, I interviewed him. A decade ago at Hangout Music Fest, of course you did, and played it, played that interview on the uh, air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh-huh. right. Look who's selling out Avondale. Mm-hmm. You know, all these years you predicted later, it. I'm mm-hmm. just a little bit of a taste maker, guys. I know <laughs> what the people are gonna like a decade from now. Yes, you do. <laughs> now, unlike BB King, this guy can actually play chords, though. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's solid. Great. Mm-hmm. Su- super solid. Super solid. Right. Uh, but with that in mind, I stayed up a little bit later on <laughs> on Friday night because. Ruby's not here. I'm going to get to sleep till who knows what time. Nine? Ain't no telling how long I'm going to sleep. Ten? Mm-hmm. Eleven? No alarm. All day? You know, okay, so. That's, what is, and that feeling, when you think like that, you get so excited. Because oh, yeah. I'm tired, guys. I know. Thursday, but, Friday, I'm, t- I'm real tired. And you think the, this is the time you're going to get up when I'm ready. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At 7.35. Here we go. I hear. <laughs> Oh, yes. That is the sound of joists being attached to my house. Sure. Mm-hmm. So they're drilling into my home. Oh, yeah. At, it was seven. That's what woke me up, 735. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, worse than that. I'm like, uh, how are you? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so this deck, I have been um, kind of the the contract guy. It, it, I'm the I, foreman. I'm kind of the foreman, yes. Tell people what to do. <laughs> I shouldn't be, but I've kind of turned into the foreman. <laughs> oh. Um. You know, when you see them doing something, you're like, I wish they would do that just a little bit better. That is who that is the person that I've been throughout oh, this project. No. Oh, I'm gonna no. be real. They can't stand you. They hate me. Mm. They gringo. hate me. Panic at gringo. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. Really? Y'all. I bet they do. I, I, I don't know I, how to say ponytail in Spanish. So Greg. On a deck, if you just do all the boards one direction, you're gonna have kind of like end grain sticking out of the boards, and the, you know you kind of just have like a bunch of planks sticking out along the perimeter of the deck. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows that. But if you picture frame uh, the boards, I know a little bit He's about wood. If you picture He's frame it, then the frame of the deck, the edge of the deck, just it, it really, it really makes it look really, really nice. So I wanted them to do that, and you know, just a bunch of small things like that, where they would do it a way that it will take probably. Eight minutes, my way will take ten minutes. You and when, know, and when they did the job, they were going by yeah. the eight minute one. Yes, yeah, yeah. they were for and sure. Now you're mm-hmm. running meaning, for, meaning for sure. you'll have to pay more. Uh, I am, uh, I am very annoying to these guys. Uh, I'm speaking through Google Translate throughout all worse. of this, so it mm-hmm. makes it real hard. I'm having to like Google image search. Uh, this, this right here, this is what we're looking for. And so I'm talking through Google. Do you Translate. find yourself talking loud when you don't need to? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They're oh, not yes. deaf. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah. also not hard of hearing. I'll also like mess up the Google Translate process where it's supposed to say the the Spanish part. Oh and I'll yes. push the wrong button. And oh, it'll yes. be like, hey, if you guys could please make sure that you. So the English robot <laughs> voice is really. <laughs> like, oh, stop! 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 stop. <laughs> Spanish. I need Spanish. I bet they're so mad at you. Por favor. Por favor. Uh, And so, y'all. Picture frame, nothing. And so they have the deck uh, laid. And so I'm getting up there as they're doing the, and I'm like walking on Joyce like a a cat. They walk on it like they're they're just 
they're just walking around. I'm, I have all four hands on yeah, these right. joists as yeah. I'm walking around. And everybody loves to take orders from a guy like that. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Sure. Can't sure. even stand up yeah. on the joint. Right, right, right. And so <laughs> I, t- gringo, I, I, I type out. into my Google Translate, um, and y'all, the, the look on their faces was so like worried and sad until the e- I got to the end of the Google Translate message. And that was, if you guys could please start building the stairs right now, and they have this look on their face like, well, what? that's not, that doesn't work with the plan. So that I can get my fat body up on the deck, please. Oh. And so they, uh, <laughs> and they loved it. Yeah. That destroyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I am the Frito Bandito. Gringo, gringo loco. You know. Uh, gringo so, Paquito. <laughs> All right. All right. The word is not. So that, that got some laughs, and that, that, that helped a lot. Um, I bought them lunch. And drinks on on Saturday. Mm. Well done. Yeah, I'm trying cervezas. To, oh, Modelo. Yeah. <laughs> soda, soda. I got him yeah. sodas. Oh, okay. but, um, it's a KCO of water. Everything was going good until um, I had. Everything was going good until. until yes. When, I thought 735 things were bad. Yeah, yeah that would have been bad. Everything was going good <laughs> until I'm having them do the deck. Laying there on the deck, not with just like nails in the top, and not oh, just with man. screws Here in the top. Goes. Difficult client. I've got a special tool. It's he, a, he's it's been a on special. The oh, it's a special gosh. jig. Yeah, it's a jig. You guys know what a jig is. Everybody. <laughs> and it this actually allows it so that the hit the the fasteners for the deck board are hidden and come in the side of the board, so that you just got nice, clean, barefoot approved, smooth decking. Does that make sense to you? Does it that does. Work? Okay. It does. So I feel so bad for them. But yeah. they've never been. So Probably should have went over all this before yeah. they started. Before they gave yeah. you that price. They and so <laughs> I'm trying to show them how to use this jig, and they're like, "No, I'm like YouTube they're and stuff them. and all this stuff." Wait, wait, the, I, you're, you're showing them. Showing them. I'm showing. And I'm you having built how many them. decks? I've built zero decks. Okay, I'm just and, checking. But I show them how to use it, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" And it that slowed them down probably by fifty percent. They hated you. Straight up. What did you Can I ask you where their boss is? Milo. That's a great question, Speedy. Who did you you, you, uh, book them through? That's a great question. That's a great question. I'm just going to leave that right there. Milo. Wow. Milo, Milo. Yeah, I'm going to leave that That right there. That means bad. So I show them how to use the jig. Everything's going good. And we're great. we we become friends. I buy him pizza. I got him four large pizzas for four dudes. Okay, so I've, <laughs> spared no expense. Yeah. <laughs> After that, you would just put them through. But it's a visa. I, I'm I'm out there working with them. I'm out there uh, hanging and stuff. All this else stuff. <laughs> Everything's cool. The it doesn't t- feel like towards the end it? of the day. Towards <laughs> the end of the day, we're we're out there, and I'm looking at something over here, and I'm talking about something stupid. You know, they're like this stupid gringo, and the guy that's on the other end who's digging. Hmm. He's digging with. He's, by, by the way, he's been using my Maddox all all week, but that's fine. That's fine. Greg, uh, you find these people. <laughs> oh my. Well, I hear one of the Maddox go oh. in, uh oh, and up into the air no. like Old Faithful. Water. Oh. <laughs> my. Oh. Didn't think about the water line. It's like being at the Dolphin oh. Show. Oh, oh. Y'all, it was Old Faithful. You like, got to run out to the road and shut it off. It's spraying 20 feet into the air oh, easily. Oh, man. Oh, you man. have somebody come out and mark it? Running over everything. This was actually my sprinkler system, not oh, the main water okay. line. Okay. So they hit they hit uh, plastic. They didn't hit you know okay. metal or anything okay. like that, but they hit plastic. But it goes straight in the How? air. How? Hey! I'm like, oh, hey. I run inside. Luckily, I know where the shutoff is. I'm familiar with these things, guys. You you're, you're very handy. <laughs> I'm, Greg, I'm, here it is going in the air. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I go and shut it off, and um, we seriously all stood around and just looked at the hole for, like, I don't know how long it was. We're just staring down into this hole. Who, no one would be the first one to nobody talk. Uh-uh. Ta- nobody spoke for, like, a good three minutes. We're just like, well... What now? Um, yeah, go the hard mm-hmm. Luckily, I was able to shut it off. It's just my sprinkler system. I still Who have, cares right now? I just still have water working. at my house. Yeah, yeah. keep working. I keep still going. have water at my keep house. Keep working. At some point. And they said that they're going to come fix it today. I think if it's miracle is that Monday? I hope that means Monday. I have no idea. <laughs> Lunas, Lunas, is that what he said? I don't know. Um, but like I said, guys, this deck is going to be a, an incredible thing for my better. family. If uh, I financially survive it, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. 
people Trump. You know, yeah. He's th- pretty volatile figure yeah. even around the world. But, yeah. but, but when you think about people like that were – but again, I want to be fair – George W. Bush was on record where he stood on all this, so he didn't have to go you know, get his picture taken by the wall to prove it. But what I'm saying is you would think he would have been one that would have strolled up there and said, well, yeah, sure. I, yeah. Now, as we said on yesterday's program, when it came to this Palestinian versus Israeli, Israeli stuff, he just said, look, I've, I've read the Bible. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because it, it's, it's not. Well, he, 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 he tried to, to be a peacemaker to some degree, but he didn't, yeah. he didn't make it a priority because – as we have been told by people that that knew him, he knew that it would be in vain. So, right. And I know Trump, you know, art of the deal. Like I said, yes, <laughs> he thinks he's going to be the one to do it. But, but I hopefully he'll understand. He, until you understand the the, the 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 truth of this conflict. But sadly, when you understand the truth of it, you also have to come to a conclusion there ain't a lot you can do about it. It's a mess, <laughs> man. It is a mess. Right. So, well, we look at look at yesterday. We go to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Trump is welcome like a king. Saudi Arabia has been a ally of the U.S. for many, many years. It's a stable place, which is not something you say a lot in the Middle East. But it is stable because they have a complete dictatorship in place, which is something as Americans we, we go against. But many people who've served in the Middle East have told me personally that that, that society is not ready for democracy. They can't deal with it. Can't deal with it. Well, it, it was, well, it, it was like... Um so, but back to Saudi Arabia. So, Saudi Arabia is considered one of our best assets and 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 biggest allies in the area. Well, who was nine eleven carried out? It was a bunch of Saudis. I know. So, you know, there's always this underlying feeling that the Saudis are playing both sides of the street on this by a lot of people. Well, they apparently they do. And while they may be, it may be this simple. They enjoy their kingdom. They enjoy their money they're getting from the oil business. And all of us are propping them up every time we get in our car. Um, that they that they they buy weapons from us to defend themselves. So they're a good trading partner. Uh, they are stable, like I said. But most people think they pay off the terrorist. They pay them a a downy, if you will, to leave them alone. Well, then they go and use that money to attack everybody else. And then, so, we, and then we have people now, come there's out no, of Saudi There's no absolute proof of that. Right. Nobody's ever got the check right. and traced it back. But there's, there's that underlying feeling in a lot of experts that, that watch that area. They think that them and Guitar and some of these other places uh, pay off the terrorists to leave them alone. Right. So then they take it to everybody else. Right. It, <laughs> so it, it's a mess. So what do you do? What do you do with Saudi Arabia? Are they, their, are they our friends or are they not? You know what? What? How do you how do you handle them? What What's the deal? Well, yeah, that it, and it's a juggling act, and all the presidents that really we have great respect for have always treated the Saudis like allies, because you got yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, and and Egypt, you know, it's kind of hit or miss according to who's in charge, but you know, you well, Egypt <clears throat> wasn't on board with a lot right. of the peace in the right. Middle East right. back when Israel became about, mm-hmm. and then they did later on, right. and it got their president killed. And as far as the Palestinians are concerned, I, it just makes sense to me. And I know this doesn't make them happy. Is to say, look, you have a place. It's been given to you. It's been negotiated. So there, you, you got it. You're not getting any more, and 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 you you, you we're not we're gonna let. You know, if you and if you behave and you don't attack Israel, they won't come over and take over neighborhoods and you know the West Bank and all that. If you just behave, you know, leave them alone, and and and, uh, and they'll leave you alone, and, and you do have your place. But I just that well, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's that, a, that, that just ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it's it's thousands and thousands of year conflict, so everybody thinks they own it. Well, I, I know this has been overseen. We, we have our yeah. view, definitely, but, but it has to be said again. Right. You have to understand that. The Palestinians do not want some of Israel; they want it all. Right, right. That's absolutely true. And it, until you understand that, you're you're wasting your time on saying we're going. Here's a few more acres for you. It doesn't matter. No. And and then when they, you know, when then you're going to go and tell Israel, which we wouldn't tolerate. Right. We've said this before. Hey, we had a another marketplace blow up, and we went into that neighborhood and plowed all the houses down. Right. And moved them away further away. Well, now that's mean. Wait a minute. You're telling us we're just supposed to let people bomb us? You know, so we wouldn't tolerate that. Somebody tell well, us. Well, every that. every yeah. action is in response to another action that already happened. And like I say, you go back, so you trace it back two thousand years. You gotta you gotta have somebody decide that we're not gonna do it that way. But back to your point about the trying to bring democracy to some of the uh, the Middle Eastern countries that, that are either Persian or Arab. It 
I saw just a, a touch of that. Now, so, I'm not saying that, but people no, no, who well, are so, experts in that area have. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Eight minutes to the top of the hour, the Rick and Bubba show. Here we go. Uh, and thank you for being with us today. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that project going on at, at House of Adler. That's a, we need to pay attention to that one. All right, so um, we'll get to maybe next hour, uh, Queen Elizabeth. We hadn't talked about that much. Uh, it was it dominated Friday. Uh, but the uh, and, and we'll talk about some of that. But uh, right now, uh, you know what, Adder, we might even be able to get four in here too, these videos. But. So I, I, somebody sent me a video, and I didn't know who it was, and I started realizing that it was Adrian Peterson, right? Huh. right? And, yeah. and I'm like, why is Adrian Peterson boxing? What, what, and, what and, we, and, and, and then he's boxing also another former NFL player? Yeah. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Le'Veon Bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why are they boxing? That's, That's a great it. question. That's what I don't know. Uh, I mean. but, but anyway, um, Adrian Peterson does not fare well. Uh, he gets hit with a with a jab or a left, I guess, not really a jab, uh, from Le'Veon Bell, and uh, hey, this is a straight up real. Bo- it looks like a real body, real body, and, yeah. and I mean, watch Adrian Peterson's knees unable to hold him up. Mm. Not agree with that. I mean, this hit right. Th- oh. Good night. Woo. But w- if watch his knees, he is unable to stay standing. You know how your body just says, "We're done." Uh, yeah, and, and, and he, he tries so help yes. us, Adder, this is your area. Yes, yes. They see this money that some of these athletes have I made by going into boxing. and um, But I, I don't think they did a good job of hyping this at all. It can't be just here's two athletes. There's got to be some hype behind it. And mm-hmm. they did not do that. Evidently, Speedy was talking to me. The ticket sales for this event was pitiful. Oh, yeah, it really Greg, was. He doesn't even cover up at all with see, his left. Yeah. But when we point, were growing up, Ed Tutal Jones played for the Cowboys. Right. And he left football to go be a boxer. And then came back to football. Did he come back to yeah. football? But he was I a remember legit straight-up box. Was he any good? I think he was okay. No, evidently not. All right, here's the All right, so it, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, Peterson's uh, – they, they, they made close to probably to a million apiece, it looks like. Oh, okay. well, I'm in. Yes. I that take was it for the, Rick, um, I'd take it for 500 Well, I know you will now, Adler, because yeah. of the home project. Right, right. right so yeah. that, that was the, a technical <laughs> knockout in the fifth round – of this heavyweight exhibition boxing bout on the Social Gloves 2 card. And that was at um, well, Bank of California lot. Stadium in, in Los Angeles. Maybe they, had a lot of pay, a maybe they had a lot of pay-per-view. I bet it was yeah, tied I, it's to not, there. Well, and they said other sponsors as well. So th- this article says that split between the two, it may be a million. So Still, Like half a million five, a piece? Yeah, but after everything's settled. But but again, to to the point of getting a percentage of what was in the crowd, it didn't look good. No, mm, no. So it may not be. It, it may hardly got anything. By the way, Adrian, Uh-oh. thirty-seven. Now you took a beating in the NFL. Now you want to do this? That makes zero uh, sense. Oh goodness. Bell just got through playing, didn't he? Like last yeah, year. Do you see how much he almost tears his knee up? Watch how his knees just give way. Just stare at his knees. Hey. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a- now. Understand too that um, hmm. that I mean, you, you start looking at the Pro Bowls and and all this kind of stuff between the two of them, and oh, it's yeah. unbelievable. Bell said that he was not going to play this year, focusing solely on boxing. Okay. And um, Adrian, maybe. Wow. Maybe not. Uh huh. This was okay. supposed to happen July thirtieth at the Crypto dot com Arena in <laughs> L A, but apparently two YouTubers, uh, two YouTube stars. Mm. Um, their 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 fight fell through, and so it was postponed until now. Oh my goodness! Okay, all right. So what uh, what's happening here on on video four? Help me with video four. So this is uh, basically the uh, something I've been trying to tell you guys is that it pays <laughs> pays to know jujitsu. You have been telling us that. Oh, you yeah. have been telling us that. So you're gonna see uh, this. It's happened at some like English private school, from what I can understand. This is going all around all the uh, jujitsu social media here, and you've got the, <laughs> the jujitsu social media. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are plugged yeah, in, it, I don't know how plugged in yeah. you guys are today. If you're active on jujitsu social media, this is huge. Oh, you're gonna love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So where's the little kid? Oh, there, there he is. is. Okay, I got you. Mm-hmm. So uh, oh oh. I, oh. So the little kid gets punched by the big kid. All right. So right. then that lays the. I've foundation. seen that big kid my whole life. He's oh yes, uh-huh. yes. Uh-huh. And, and so little kid right here is gonna shoot in and. 
it's really, look, it's really even not that good of a shot, but you can see where he takes it. He oh, fakes the fakes the punch and then goes for the takedown. Oh, and, right. And then he's uh, nuzzling in. Control, control, control. It's all it is, guys. It's yeah, just, it's, it's all, oh, that right there looks good. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. So okay. he's, using, he's going with cross-body control. Now he moves to full mount here. Full mount. Full mount. Oh, my okay. goodness. And the guy on the ground has obviously never been in this situation because mm-hmm. his no. arms are in the air, his legs are in the air, and he's yeah. just getting dominated by a littler person. That, yeah. Yeah. that, that little boy, kid feels good. The crap out That's really, awesome. Yeah. I gotta that say. feels yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Don't let him up. Don't let him up. Right. Can't stuff. let him up. And so he's almost good. And then he takes his back and sinks in the rear oh. naked Look choke. Oh, he's, he's got, got the rear naked choke. And then teachers. And then these are teachers. Yeah, these are teachers coming. Yellow shoes are showing up. Oh, he's got him. Yeah, man. Oh, he's Greg, how about Good that? Stuff. Adler, why is this awesome. why is this video so special to you? Well, you yeah, know, I, I can relate to the about? little guy. I can relate to the little man, you know? I can also relate to the bigger kid because, y'all, I have this weird memory of <laughs> when I was in, like, fifth grade. When I was in fifth grade, I was wrestling with some random fourth grade kid who was smaller than me, Rick. and he did that to me. No, he didn't. He took my back, and he had his hooks in, and I, I couldn't get up. I could not get up. I didn't know you have been the big kid and the little kid. I, yeah, it's the one time I, I right. got beat up ever by anyone smaller than me because I was always strong because I had a bigger, older brother. Yeah. And it, the kid absolutely Hilarious. took my back. Had my hooks in and I could not get. Did up that would make? Kid, did you start thinking about jujitsu then? And I, well, I should have. I should have. And I didn't know. I didn't know about jujitsu. I didn't even know what it was. But I remember standing up and my fifth grade friends were like, "Dude, you let that fourth grader <laughs> just dominate." <you." laughs> and that was a chance for me to go into jujitsu, and I would be a black belt right now, and just you know, I'd probably be some world champion. But you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? Yeah. Yeah. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. me that personally well let me tell you because it will take generations you, you right. wonder if the americans can handle it at times right well <laughs> when i was in, Nic- in nicaragua or nicaragua, in nicaragua i made the goofy assumption that everybody that i was encountering and working with were were anti-communism they were anti-noriega and, right. and all that uh, I, I was incorrect and what it was i had a conversation with even one of the interpreters there that that's all she had ever known. And so she was like, well, do you disagree with the government, you know, helping people? And I was like, and finally I just said, look, let's just be clear. And I tried to present it kindly because you have to be wise when you're doing mission work. You don't mm-hmm. offend the, I said, I was born in America, you know, born in the USA. Maybe you've heard of Bruce Springsteen. Mm-hmm. And I said, so I was raised with founders. I said, now we've gotten away from it a little bit or a lot of bit. And I said, but our founders, they believed in a form of government that maximized, maximized individual liberty and minimize the government in your individual life so you could reach your maximum potential through maximum liberty. That's all I've ever known. And I said, so that is what I love, and that is what I think is best because I look at the standard of living that we've been able to achieve. Now, as we seem to get away from that plan, it seems to look worse than when we – implement that plan but that's all i've ever known you have been born in a different situation and what it was the, dis- the disagreement really was really quite simple they believe that it's good that the government should take care of people we believe the government never takes care of people they always they always hurt people and they never handle it well you don't want an overreaching tyrannical government well their view is well they're not tyrannical they're here to help us All right. they provide this and they provide that and they provide this and all i did was try to be wise and we were looking at the big, gigantic $45,000 trees of, trees of life right. that Noriega's, you know, mystic wife has everywhere. Everywhere. And we were just walking through one of the parks, and, you know, we were just, I said, what are these things? Mm-hmm. And where she immediately, she said, oh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, this is Noriega and da 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 and, you know, all this, and she believes this and tries to bring us all together, tries to get all the religions to blend into one, and, us all be one here in Nicaragua. And I said, yeah. I said, wow, that's a lot of lights on that thing. Yeah, and I said, what do you, what do you think one of these cost? Oh, I've heard American, probably 45000 Wow. There's a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. I said, you would think maybe that money could be used for the people. You know, that's, that's just something to think about. That's just what you see. And, and she agreed with that. She goes, yeah, yeah, that, that's actually a good point. I was trying as kindly as I could to see, is the government really looking out for you? Or do they throw you a little bone every now and then whenever you start kind of getting that revolution feeling? 
you know, but deep down, it seems to be self-perpetuating for them, not so much for everybody. All right. But again, the point to your point though, that's all that she had ever known. So to try to change that mentality takes. I'll let you know how special Bubba, America is done. Bubba. Bubba. Bubba cannot do it. No, you got to get his name right. Yeah, his name is Roger Moore. Got a title in front of it. It does. Is he Sir Roger Moore? Sir Roger Moore. Uh, I, I, I did not. I did not know that. So Far- Roger. So he was my personal favorite. Roger Moore, who did play James Bond in seven movies, uh, they, they're they saying he is dead. We don't believe anything when we read it for the first time anymore. But they're saying that, that he 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 is dead. Yep. At 88, did it say? Uh, 89. 89. Okay. Mm. Oh, Roger. So, yeah, I, that was uh, – I, I didn't really follow the the, the James Bond stuff. Sorry, so I've you seen, didn't. I, no, I didn't. You I, love James Bond? Not I really, it. no. I, I liked it. Greg I, did. I did. I saw, you know, I've seen them like on cable and stuff like that. But the I, early ones I didn't like because I couldn't understand what they were saying. When Sean Connery was on there, mm-hmm. you know, Fireball and all that. Those early Gold ones. Goldfinger. No, I like Goldfinger. That was a good one. That was that Sean was Connery, wasn't it? I know, but that I liked that one. That was the exception. That one scared me. That was a good one. When I was a little kid, I was like, Mr. Bond. people painted, painted gold and all that. That's when he had the, you know, the, the villain that had the steel hat. Yeah. You know, he'd throw throw and cut people's head off with it. Oh, really? You oh, remember Japanese. Jethro Clampett tried to be that guy. Remember when he kept slamming that ho- that hat on his head, knocking himself out? Yeah. I, uh, when he was going to be a double knot spy. Double knot spy. <laughs> double knot spy. I forgot <laughs> all about that. That's good stuff. But, no, I, I mean, I, I watched <laughs> it enough to know who Roger Moore was, and I will right. watch enough for him to be my favorite James Bond. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was mine for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Moonraker. Was that was my favorite. Me, and Live and Let Die was good. You know, he he had a lot of, I think, what the about classic about Octo? One. He was in that one, too. Which one? Octo. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that happened when I was a kid. When they, when that when that when, when, when that when that movie came out, I was kind of looking at mom. She looking at me, and I was like, can, "Well, can you can you name a movie?" That? You know, me, I mean, it was like right. um, me and my posse. I ran with Rick. We your what? My posse. You know, <laughs> your gang. You know, your group. Thank you, Bubba. So when much. we we would go see James Bond on opening night. You well, know, when you. a new movie came out. Would so, y'all all yeah. dress alike? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, when the, and it came out, and that one came out, and we're like. Well, can you just call a movie that? Is that is that a foul or what? Yeah, I don't remember. You know, you're telling your mom, where are you going tonight? Well, we're going to see James Bond movie. What's the name of it? Well, something, I don't know. Just James. Hey, and don't tell them when you go to the snack stand, you're going to get a box of goobers to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> remember, I used to get embarrassed every time I had to order that. But they were really good. Like I said, for, for, how about this? How about this? We I mean, would laugh. Just point. For, we, would get, we would get tickled. Oh, yeah. That get, over there by the Raisinets. I, I, well, look, it, 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 but you, not the Raisinets. It, 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 it would be so bad, like your friend would... So you going Six minutes past the hour. From the No Name Studio, a brand new hour is upon us. Speedy. The real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, and Eddie Van Adler are all here. Rick and Bubba University student taking your phone calls at 866-WE-BE-BIG is Blazing Silverman. Uh, he'll get you lined up and ready to go on the show, and we'll get the phone calls before the hour is done. We'll meet back in play uh, as well because it is a brand new week. What do you kids want to know about now? I made enough to make a young. So, uh, as we make our way back, Bubba not here today. Uh, the testing is complete. Looks like it's all good news, and uh, he'll be back with us, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow on the program. So, uh, so well, that's another step behind us. Uh, there's, I uh, know there's one more procedure that we got to do, uh, but that's not been scheduled yet. But we'll, we'll keep you posted on that uh, when, uh, when we get there. Uh, all right. So we we talked about. Uh, well, the first um, step into the golden tickets seats uh, in the new studio went on Friday. Everybody felt real good about that. There, our guests felt good about it, so that that that's good news. So we'll we'll continue that on Fridays for September and probably October, uh, and uh, then we'll kind of reassess everything after that for the rest of the year and coming back next year. Um, then uh, we we talked about that. We went through nine uh, eleven a little bit. We've talked about that. We've hit the football games. 
from the weekend, talked about uh, some stuff that happened to members of the show over the weekend. Uh, I uh, went over the trip to Atlanta over the weekend to see one of our sons. So we've, we've covered those things. Uh, the one thing that we have not talked about, uh, we, we did talk about the death of uh, Queen Elizabeth. But uh, Friday, you know, it was, uh, it, it was King Charles time. Uh, you know, we, yeah, and some of you, they've been waiting on uh, that for a while. Yeah, some of you who, uh, yes, um, that have asked me over the years when introducing Bubba, what what am I talking about when I say Master of the Kings English? It is a uh, kind of a um, Alabama way of saying Kings English, and uh, when you hear Charles. That's what we're talking about. It, it truly is the King's English. Um, I've noticed why a lot of people like radio over TV. All right. When you're not looking at Charles and you're just hearing him, his voice is quite soothing, and yeah. I found myself driving to Atlanta enjoying listening to him talk. Oh, really? Uh, but when you're yeah. looking at him, you kind of think he's goofy. Yeah. So, so then it kind of takes away. So nobody look. Everybody, everybody, YouTubers, y'all can look. You're all over it, this. In, in here, don't look. Okay. And you're going to have a completely different Charles moment. Is this just that excerpt involving the new titles for everybody? And he kind of gives Harry and Megan, you know, we wish you the best, which is, you know, some people have read into this, whether that was a positive or a negative. I thought it was a positive, but um, so is that where we are? Yeah, it's a one-minute clip, uh, and he kind of just goes into uh, who's going to be what and – Who's going to do what now? Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Not looking. As my heir, William now assumes the Scottish titles, which look. have meant so much to me. He succeeds me as Duke of Cornwall and takes on the responsibilities for the Duchy of Cornwall, which I have undertaken for more than five decades. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales to Wusog Cymru, the country whose title I've been so greatly privileged to bear during so much of my life Rick, and you're, duty. You're looking. I'm not looking. Young look. With Catherine beside him, our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, I know. continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the center ground where vital help can be given. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. Hmm. That seemed nice. I, I want you all to know yeah. that I'm working on King of England. Okay. You are? I'm working on King Charles because I think we, there's a lot we could do with it. Yeah. Um, I got him. I, I know Rick, you do. Oh, I know Rich Little has him over there. And, uh, Frank. Let me guess. It's going to sound a little bit like Charles Barkley and OJ. <laughs> Frank Caliendo, would you like to try it? Give it a shot. <clears throat> I would like to say hello to Harry and Megan. <laughs> What is that? Nine what, what, what is that? Like oh, I'm, I'm actually mad. I'm mad right now. <laughs> I'm <not> frustrated. <laughs> I thought it was him for a second. I thought we were playing another clip. <laughs> right. I, you you, the you got to do more than I'm stopped up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Rick and he don't get his run in his mouth like him. That's good, Speedy. By the way, we're going domestic way. By the way, <laughs> what is that? The world. That's it's like not... you're having an episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greg, by the way, from, from, uh, from Birmingham to Heflin, uh, Alabama, Sherry and I spoke like the King, like oh, King Charles. No. Oh, really? we, were, we were English all that's, the way there. That's pretty good, pretty good distance. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah we, we, about, we, Rick, we, y'all quit about Abernathy. Yeah, we picked uh, right there. We, we, we were right done now. with it. Uh, we were. <laughs> do you believe what he's saying to, uh, about King Harry? Do you, I mean, when he's talking about Harry. Do you think this is when he says good luck to them and their endeavors and their new life overseas? I think he's put out by him, and he's yeah. like, "Hey, is, is what, that the just do your thing? Y'all got no title? Yeah, I could be giving you some kind of title, but not now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, now you go ahead and take that check from me. Because right, it's his son. I mean, he's right. probably I, that seems sincere to me. I would like to spend my love to Harry and Meghan. And remind them the check stops now. <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah. best of luck to the mixed race children. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> you know how the royals are about that, <laughs> right? That's not what I was saying. I, so, <laughs> so, are you yawning? You're right. <laughs> we are wondering what we will do here. 
Um, <laughs> Sherry told me that I drifted into John Thomas, and that's not the same accent. No, it's right. not. Yeah, right. He's but, not uh, yeah. South African. I this am. Is, yeah, the King's English. It's right. more of a King's English, and it has a tone. Pro progress, not okay. pro, not progress. Progress. <clears throat> My beloved mama and papa. <laughs> But anyway, so um, I'm better at the queen. I can't do the king. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I've yeah, noticed yeah. that. Speedy is too. Yeah, <laughs> and we underutilize that during her reign. Yeah, yeah. Here's my qu- here's my queen. Oh my! That's all I've got. That, but that, I, that's I good. You want to try the queen, Speedy? Mm. She's what going on in. You've missed your opportunity. I love. <laughs> No. No. no, that's that's not it. That's she not loved close. horses. Yeah. She loved horses. And, and them corkies and little dogs. They said love, she had thirty something. I, love I think to they're corkies. I think they're Yorkies. The Queen no, loved her corkies. Oh. I love corkies or corky. and horses. <laughs> that's good, Speedy. Very good game. You are, you 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 missed your call. That's beautiful. You really did. Mad with a thousand voices. <laughs> But Charles will do just fine. But but no, no she tried to outlive Charles. Um, <laughs> yeah, she hung on as long as she could. Right? But <laughs> she was she a mid really lover. She gave it her best shot. I mean, she Ninety-six. Have, she had to keep doing her duties. I mean, if she had eighty, she kept going sixteen more years. Yeah. The longest coach in waiting we've seen. All right. Yes. Uh, yes. My yes. gracious. Wow. But, and I like how now one thing about he's Izzy, prepped. I know that one Progress. thing. Yeah, one thing yeah. he has been coached yeah. on, and I can tell he's let. His hair grow out a little bit to hide the ears. Yeah, the ears. You yeah. note it just a little bit. Yeah. He's not. He's not high and tight. When he know? looked like Ichabod Crane, it mm-hmm. was well. Again, she tried that living. It was when he was playing polo when he was younger. Yes, and he'd take off his little. Mm-hmm. He'd had the mirror. Let your hair grow, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't he's, know. he's back to the museum. She sounds, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we uh <laughs> we we send my love to Megan and Harry as they start their new life overseas. Uh, okay. But 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 we're going it's to not quite to speedy. But it's no, good. it's not quite. But we're going to. Um, Bill Maher has already said, and you know we start find ourselves agreeing with him more than we're comfortable. Yeah. But he says he believes having great respect for the crown died with Elizabeth. Oh yeah. That yeah. that she she handled herself in such a way, but the rest of this bunch, I think if William can get back in there, maybe. Yeah. Well, he's, okay, so look at this. Everybody Let's think about William. this. Um, Progress. 73, right, by the way. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, he ain't never worked a day of his life, so Liam, he's, he's in good health. 73. And so, I don't like, look at his hands. They look swollen to me, and his color doesn't there's look actually a, a There's oh actually my a, goodness. a story about that. Wait out a minute. Everybody's talking about his hands. Yeah, yeah they're how bad. Red, they're how like red. a balloon. They're, they're look swollen. At, look at that ring. Yeah. It's got all it can handle. My hands mm. are hey, swollen. That's bad circulation right there. It so, is. Yeah. It's not good. They're going to need an angle grinder to get that ring off his <laughs> You're hand. back to that <laughs> again. All right. All right. <laughs> What's going on with his... Um, Golly, the y'all. finger next to his pinky finger is it just folded up under? I, do. I think uh, so. I think so. Yeah. But a like, lot of you are looking at my hands. Yo, that don't. That's weird that are look. quite yeah. swollen and red. Mama was concerned, as many of you are. He's give up on that pinky ring. What? Yeah. What? He can't get it off. Well, so he, never he, coming he, off. I was gonna say he's seventy three and bad circulation. William's apparently. forty. So even if it's you know if it goes twenty years. Which I don't think it will. That mm-hmm. gets him to ninety three. Let's say he goes yeah. ten. Let's split the wow. difference at eighty three. Then he Williams in there at fifty, which so be which young be young compared to what they've seen him. Oh yeah, these but not years. as young as Mama who took the crown at twenty one or twenty five. I think it's twenty four, twenty five, twenty five. Yeah. yeah, and held on to it. Yes, and served us so gallantly. Well. The- through much of world history. <laughs> we'll be back. Why Phone calls. Rick and Bubba, Rick and oh Bubba. Hey, well, what are you going to get? Uh, <laughs> popcorn. Maybe, maybe Sugar s- babies. Maybe something sweet. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to get what I think you're, I'm going to stand there when you <laughs> order it. Nah, I'm good. I, I can go by myself. <laughs> so, what do you want? Popcorn and uh, something sweet. What do you think? Um, you saw that right there. You got any chocolate covered peanuts? You talking about raisin ants? No, the other one right there. <laughs> Start, starts with a G. Yeah, those will be fine. <laughs> you know, you, you get back to school. Gummer Powell's cousin. Yeah, we, <laughs> we thought that was so <laughs> funny. Right. We we get back to school <laughs> after the after the, Damn, done it. after the James Bond movie, and and you know everybody want to know what the what the Bond girl's name was in the movie because that was always something crazy too, you know. So 
Mm-hmm. But that one was just off limits. I mean, it was well, just like yeah, I, mean, right I don't know how you can just can you just put a movie out like that? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I guess technically. I mean, but it's just so straightforward. I mean, it was just. Uh, I would say for the time it came out, it was a little edgy. I just gotta say, it's a little edgy right now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I mean, you know, I know that compared we can't to what say the name compared to the content of movies, it's not right. But, but oh, I'm, ta- yeah, I'm, still, yeah. I'm strictly talking about the name right. and, the, and all that, and the name of the character, and all that. It was just you couldn't believe what right. was happening. Yeah. 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 You know, how about that? You're like those were things that yeah, somebody might mention the treehouse, but this is right here on the marquee. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep, there it is. It, uh, With lights on it. Right. So you named your group, huh? Well, you know what I mean. What was the name of the posse? Well, I just we didn't we didn't even know we were a posse then. It's just a group. I have a great <laughs> <line>. group, <laughs> but I'm afraid if I try it, it will yeah, burn no, me. No. So I'm not going yeah, to. There was eight of us. <laughs> you say, eight, boy, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> were you the leader? <laughs> no, you know what I'm mean. sure. I'm making a joke to Rick. Yeah. It's not going. We're on it. the same page. Yeah. I'm just moving away yeah, from that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the guy. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> there it is. We all knew it. We didn't have to say it. Yeah. It is an octagon. <laughs> Still saying. <laughs> an eight-sided. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. Eight. That's eight why they call it octopus, because it's got eight legs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> did, you see, did you see me get stuck? My <laughs> heart <laughs> just stopped, <laughs> I think. Is that not I really do. No, it is. But you know, you that'll feed all of a sudden. I, I literally <laughs> felt it hit me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I got isn't it funny what one letter will do? I got, I got oh. punched, Rick. <laughs> Rick, my heart stopped for two seconds. <laughs> I mean, For me, it's if, funny though. If somebody could have jumped in that half a second, they could pronounce me dead. <laughs> when you're discussing <laughs> the sea creature, nobody even blinks. You know. Well, I did. I, I, I did well, you that. add one letter to it. Gosh. Uh, well, more letters. Great. You add one letter, and there it is. <laughs> Take your set, buddy. <laughs> Look, they named the movie. I that. didn't name hey, this it. Ain't on, I think they give you a green. On us. This ain't on us. This is on Ian Fleming. This ain't on us. It's Ian Fleming. Obviously, well, it's not an offensive word, or they wouldn't let them name it. But that. I mean, nobody sat around a conference table, you know, and said, "I don't so know." We about can't that. get away. Yeah, we with can't. That. No, let's can't. We come up with something better now. Oh gosh. <clears throat> I mean, mm. now I learned from another movie that Ian Fleming was actually a spy in World War II. Mm. Uh, is that kind of like that Mr. Rogers lie that everybody always tells? No, he really was. Watch out. You remember really Mr. Rogers was. was a special? No, he wasn't. No, he was a no, geeky old no. man just like he was on the show. He was nothing else. He wasn't a Special Forces Marine. No, no he no. wasn't. Remember we used to hear But Ian that. Fleming was a spy in World War II in Germany. No, I actually saw that. And that's where he got the, the <laughs> motivation. <laughs> you saw he set yeah. up on that. I thought, hey, you, was. Yeah, I thought you were telling me Roger Moore was. And I was like, no. No, no. So why do we think we but have But Roger Moore stories? also was a star oh, in several what? movies. You know, he was in the great Cannonball Run. Well, that was a classic. Cannonball yeah, Run was. Yeah. It was. What, about, what about part two? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you could tell your parents you were going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> when you were buying tickets, you weren't uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Oh, well, you had to go to the window and announce? Wow. Mm, I'll take, two for. I'll take three mm, for the bond. Movie. <laughs> just Greg, yeah. Look, now that we're. Now that I guess I'm. Let me try to get all this in one run. Give me some tickets of that and give me some of those chocolate covered peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be done with that. <laughs> Let's just, let, me get, let me get through my discomfort uh, where I can move on. Oh, the, uh, so anyway. Uh, so Roger Moore, we think we can declare him dead. Yes, yeah. he died of cancer. Uh, he lived in Switzerland. Did he really? He did. Oh, did. Roger the doctor. Sir Roger Moore. Okay. Well, he was crying. <laughs> uh, that was we say it deal. every time. Yeah. You get a nod. Oh, yeah. yeah, but now, nod, huh? you know what, though? They're overdoing it. They're knotting too many people. They've dumbed it down. Yeah, but he was <laughs> deserving. Uh, because Anthony of Hopkins, uh, Elton John. I mean, really? The Knights. Paul McCartney, Knight, because you can sing. How does that make you a Knight? Greg, I'm a knight because I pretend like I'm a 007. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I agree. Why are we knighting these people? <laughs> Seriously. And look, I I think, if there's some of them uh, like a military sir, hero, knight them, but we're knighting singers and actors. Well, look, well, it's our way of giving you the key to the city. And know? we really dropped the ball sir, when we sir, did that. my rump. About, we, we really dropped the ball when we did that for Elton John. He wanted to be made queen. I mean, if you're going to do mascot, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Because none of them are really knights. No, they're not. Right. <laughs> they're entertainers, and we call them knights. <laughs> Sir Paul McCartney's in concert. No, he's not. 22 minutes now past the hour. We are ready to go. 30 seconds to pop. Largest number of people, shortest amount of time. Comments, questions, bringing information to the table. Uh, you, the spotlight is on you. The greatest, most powerful, most influential listening audience in the world. We got Blazing Silverman ready to go. Ten lines are available, so more of you can get in there. 
Uh, and with the old buzzer sound, uh, it keeps it moving pretty quick. Now, we've talked about all the big topics from the weekend. Maybe there's something we've, we've missed or you want to comment on what you've already heard or seen. You got a question, you got a comment, no meaningless shout outs, no shameless plugs. Those, of course, are not allowed. Uh, they get an instant buzzer during the phone throw because we'd love for a lot of you to get on in a short period of time. And if you move right now, you will uh, get on the program because uh, we have so many lines. You got a great shot at doing that now. Manchurch.com. Let's go to the Manchurch.com for a Saturday night. Lance Ingram, Dr. Lou himself, will be at Salem Heights Church and Baptist Church in Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, also coming up, uh, First Baptist Church Opelika on the 22nd of September. Andy Blanks there. Friendship Church Athens, Alabama on September 25th. Scott Dawson will be there. Uh, Startville, Mississippi on the 25th. Andy Blanks will be there at First Baptist Church Startville as they kick off the men's discipleship strategy as well. Some things going on inside the show uh, on the 25th. Uh, of uh, September. I'll also be speaking in the morning services. has nothing to do with the, the man church, even though they're doing our strategy, uh, at West Mobile Baptist Church. I'll be there speaking for both uh, Sunday morning services on the 25th. Speedy this weekend will be uh, handling all uh, the MC um, duties there at Protective Life Stadium in Birmingham as UAB takes on Georgia Southern. And then October 1st, Greg will be running in the uh, 10th annual Crap Run, benefiting Venetia's Foundation. If you want any details about that, it'll be in his home community of Pleasant Valley, Alabama. Find those details at rickandbubba.com under upcoming events and make plans to be part of that as well. Let's start with Gary. Gary's out of Prattville. Listen to I-92, WLWI. Gary, you got 30 seconds on the Rick and Bubba show. Go ahead. Guys, if you're a Cowboys fan, Dak is out to six to eight weeks. The Cowboys are back. Uh Oh. Ham's, uh, where are you on that? Uh, didn't know it happened until earlier this morning when Speedy mm. let me know. Mm. To be honest, I, I hadn't given it much thought. And um, you're the cowboy. Have you let the Cowboys go? I kind of have. Yeah. I think I have. I think I've officially let them go. And I don't have another team. I just kind of have. I've kind of officially let NFL football go. Yeah, just meandering it's around. It's kind of fun to watch it when you don't care who. It wins. really yeah. is. And yeah. I, I've had that in the college world for quite some time, and it is. Uh, Free. It's refreshing. It's free. You just want to see great games. Yeah. Sure. And Sorry. you can enjoy great games. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's go to Jack and Coleman. If you want to get in, lines are available. 866 We Be Big. Jack, 30 seconds. Go ahead. What's up, Rick? Hey, buddy. I uh, wanted to know your, your opinion on Jesus humor. Like, uh, let us pray, uh, Jesus, the stuff that goes on nachos, uh, praise the Lord, stuff you fry, uh, eggs in, statements like that. Uh, are you saying advertising phrases? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying we're just we're at a barbecue and and you say something like that out loud? Right, you're like Jesus, man, or you know, hmm? let us pray, China. I'd stay away from all. Yeah, that. all that. Yeah, any any time that that the the Lord's name is used without reverence, um, and thrown around and slurs and and uh, you know, and, and look, I've been guilty of it myself. Don't don't misunderstand me, but it's something. You know, just I think sometimes when somebody says, well, you know, at one time I, I did the same thing. Yeah, there's a lot of things we did that we say we came to the conclusion we shouldn't do anymore. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're not allowed to say, well, yeah, that's probably wasn't the right thing for me to do. It's not the right for, it's not right for <laughs> right, anybody to do. Right. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the name of Jesus, uh, when it is thrown around, I, I'm not even a big fan of where you take a T-shirt and you take a real known, like, beer logo or soft drink logo and you put his name on it. Those kind of things make me very uncomfortable, and, and and I get a sense in my spirit that uh, that you know, holy, 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 probably doesn't care for that either. If you want to see the and the problem with this, and Sherry's talked about this a lot, uh, we both have, have, have discussed this too. This is where all that big man upstairs stuff comes from. Is I think mistaken. Uh, this is a mistake that either you're you do the big man upstairs because that makes him easier to sin against. All this is dumbing down God to make him easier to sin against whether you consciously know you're doing that or not. And uh, so you don't take sin serious. Speaking from experience, okay. But that's not – if you want to know where Jesus currently, in his glorified state, baby Jesus over, suffering servant over, okay, and, uh, you know, Jesus is my homeboy over, you know, you need to look to the revelation 
and you need to see what John saw. That's who's coming to judge us, and that's who redeemed us, and that's who we serve. Uh, there, I don't bring anything, you know, and taking that and dumbing it down, people think it makes Jesus relatable, and I understand that sentiment, but what it does too many times is it deems him unholy. It takes away the reverence for him as well. Be careful when you're trying to make Jesus relatable that you go so far that you now have made him into something he's not. So, and I think that's what you were asking. Uh, let's go to uh, Alan in Birmingham, 1047 WZZK. Alan, go ahead. Guys, uh, so obviously Nebraska lost their head coach. So mm. Scott Frost is gone. Mm. Where does uh, tiny Scott Frost end up? You know, I heard the guys talking about in the kickoff hour. He's proven that he can win, but this Nebraska thing, I, I don't know what the answer to Nebraska is. I really don't know, yeah. and and uh, but I don't know. Somebody will give him a chance because he's a proven winner. You know, uh, Scott Frost may not be the problem. Nebraska may be the problem yeah, uh, because he did win uh, at Central Florida. And I think one of y'all, Greg, I mean, you may have said it, and then y'all agreed. What y'all said is right. When we were growing up, if you signed with Nebraska, I mean, you immediately, everybody knew when you said that, that meant you were an elite player. That's not the case anymore. Yeah. No. Nebraska well, doesn't reason. it doesn't hold that 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 lure lure anymore. And mm -hmm. it's not no one's in awe of Nebraska yeah. anymore. It's not considered the premier <clears throat> program that everybody's trying to be like. Other programs caught up and passed them. And so you're trying to recruit people to Nebraska. And at one time you go, Well, do I want to go to Lincoln, Nebraska? You didn't think like that. You thought, I want to play for the Cornhuskers. Yeah. But that's not that doesn't really have it, it doesn't have any happened. draw anymore. So it's hard to get people to play there, and you're going to need the right, the right guy. And if Scott Frost couldn't do it with his love for the place, maybe he loved it too much. Bottom of the hour. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba. Bob McCartney from the Beatles in concert. Exactly. Like you're, you're saying, hey, Jude, buddy. You know, I don't. I don't. Look, you're worth eight hundred million dollars. Good. Good for you. But you're not a knight. We'll be back. Your phone calls are next. So, and speaking of evil, uh, sharks. Uh, we now oh. have, uh, and this, um, this uh, also is a little bit of a tech update here. Yes. Whoever pulled that bow across them cello strings the first time. <laughs> well, they had them something, didn't they? Somebody said, I'm working on something. What do you think about this right here? I've got something to say. You know what somebody said? It reminds me of a shark attack. Yeah, somebody that sounds like a shark movement. Somebody said, well, good, because we're doing the soundtrack for Jaws. Oh, did you just say that? Oh, here it comes. Woo! Yeah, that was good. You from being attacked by a shark. Well, it's here. They, they, they're, they're doing some tests. They say the tests show promise. Yeah. And, and, Bubba, this deals with one of your favorite things, the wonderful world of magnets. Oh, buddy. Love magnets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> love them. I know you do. I know you love magnets. That's why they're, I'm excited about this They're story. one of the great mysteries of the universe. And there we go. That's exactly <laughs> what I was looking for. So it um, <laughs> says that uh, Southern California, and this is what, what I like on the, the prophecy that we've been talking about, the animals are now attacking and, and uncharacteristic numbers. I love this first line. The rise of shark sightings around Southern California, the rise more, has led researchers to help people who've been put on edge, who like to surf, and uh, to try to communicate successfully to the shark that you are not food. Now, here's the problem with that statement. I understand we want to repel sharks. Got it. But we are food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they—that's yeah, yeah. all they do is look for food. Right. That's that's their day. When they eat human beings, and I this we're not I, your normal food, right? But I mean, we we, we just as good as anything else. I don't know. You don't. You never know. We may not taste as well as a good old seal. You know, that's know. that's true. Maybe it could be a preference. <laughs> now, and this is one of the reasons when you have getting a hunting. I don't look, really like him. When you have cal <laughs> when you have calves like Rick and Bubba, that's why we don't like standing in shallow water. I mean, because Ooh. if I hey, let me tell you something. You see big old people eating those big old turkey legs, walking around the fair, Six Flags. <laughs> yeah. You see our calves in the water. You want to take a bite? Yeah, of Yeah, that. that's exactly <laughs> how they see them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, how about this? My calf, you'd eat on that for a few days. So, so I just feel like that my calf looks delectable in 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 the Gulf, and I, I don't like it. I, I'm really just fine looking at the Gulf. 
you know, because you know, if I go to the east or the west, I don't want to get out there at all. <clears throat> and I certainly won't get in the water in Australia or South Africa. No. no. Heck no. I, when I was in South Africa, I just looked bait. at it. Well, we've known we've known for a long time that sharks have an ability. Uh, their their sonar is based on electrical impulse, and they can they can literally see and sense what's around them. They've mm-hmm. almost I got sonar. So they they're saying the magnetic force that uh, this bracelet puts out makes them go. Yeah, the I, magnetic field messes, messes them, them up. Yeah, messes, I, they, they're uncomfortable around. When them. I eat a seal, yeah. to Greg's point, when I eat fish, when I eat some floating something, it doesn't give me this signal. Yeah, I don't like this signal. That must not be something to eat. Yeah. Well, think of it. This I'm, way I'm coming too, up on Greg. a boat or something. I don't I'm like it. It's kind of like it's kind of like covering your eyes up. If you're if you're walking in a certain direction and you and your eyes become covered, what do you do? You stop because you're unsure of your surroundings. Exactly. You try to readjust. And they're saying these magnets and the magnetic feel that the magnets throw off mess with the sharks' very sensitive sensors to magnetic field. So they said commercial fishermen started developing this, and they took it further because they hated that sharks kept getting on their lines when that just becomes a hassle. They want to catch what they're trying to catch, and sharks will also attack a fish you're bringing in, you know, bite it in half. So they started putting these magnets on their, on their hooks, mm-hmm. to, and it was repelling sharks. So they put out a dummy floating on one of the, a surfboard or something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and they even put bait in they the did. sock that was yeah. hanging off. Right, a boot. They yes. had a boot. They put, they were testing. I'm it watching in the it right water. now. Pretty intriguing. Yeah. And the shark was was coming on the attack and then turned away. Yeah. Right. And and by the way, it has to get real close before it to work. Mm. Yeah, it's a little closer than you want it to be. Well, I mean, we're talking Look, inches, uh, inches yeah, away. It, it's a it's a permanent magnet. It's not you know a sonar buoy right. type thing. So right. yeah, but still, if they if they turn off the attack, they turn off the attack. So that's better than nothing. I, I would rather it. a shark almost eat me than eat me. Mm, Absolutely. True. Now, everybody, everybody with me? I think I want one. Yeah, now, it's worth it. Whoever's the inventor here, I want you to put one on and dive in if you're so big about it. Where we go. Well, there's no need to do that. You can test it. Did you just say so big about it? If you're so big about it, get in there and and dive in. (laughs) Well, that really would be the true test. Just like the bulletproof vest guy letting somebody shoot him. It is 35 minutes past the hour. Uh, Rick and Bubba show. We'll get more of your phone calls you want to get in right now at 866. We be big blazing Silverman helping out there. Uh, all right, so uh, a brand new sponsor coming to the Rick and Bubba show, and uh, I, I think you're gonna you're gonna love this. Uh, it's called en- Enviro Cleanse. Uh, go go to um, uh, ekpure.com. Okay, that's the letters E and K, pure p u r e dot com. Uh, and um, it, it, if all the home air purifiers are the same, then you have to ask this question: Why did the U.S. Department of Defense Select Enviro Cleanse. That, that, that's who they selected uh, to protect and purify the air on board all of the Navy ships. Well, there, there's a reason they did that, right? They did that because of their advanced mineral technology going beyond the ordinary HEPA filters to destroy airborne illnesses. Uh, you know, when, when you have airborne illness causing cold and flu viruses everywhere, yes, including the coronavirus. This is uh, the new science in air purification, and it really, really works. You can order one for your home to protect your family. This is how you help stop colds and flu. And here comes the cold and flu season. Here here, here it comes, fall and winter. Uh, so uh, we got one here at the studio uh, that, you know, you, you, to keep us healthy. And once you plug it in, you forget it's even there. Uh, but it's always working to protect us and will work to protect you. This is how you destroy allergy and flaming toxins and mold from the air that your family breathes in. This is, in fact, hospital-grade technology, so powerful that it promises far fewer colds and allergies and better sleep. So just take a few minutes right now to check it out. Remember what I told you, ekpure.com. Use the code Bubba. We're going to save you 10% off your EnviroCleanse home air purification unit. You'll also receive a a free air quality monitor so you know how it's going. Plus, fast free shipping. That's a $150 savings. Did you know that the school systems in Georgia have just installed theirs? So so why don't you go to ekpure.com, use the code Bubba, save 10%, Get a free air quality monitor plus free shipping. You'll also find that same link 
at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. And viral cleanse. Put them to work for you. Here comes the cold and flu season. Uh, to John in Montgomery. John's listening to I-92, WLWI. You can join us if you want to. Uh, John, go ahead. Uh, this is Don. Hey, Don. Welcome to Rick and Bubba. Sorry we got your name wrong. Go ahead. No, that's no problem at all. We just had a question. My wife and I have recently moved to North Florida and looking for a new church home. And we're finding several churches down here that are classified as non-denominational and some are interdenominational, which led us into a discussion of what's the real difference. And I was wondering if you could maybe explain that to all your audience of the real difference between the two. Well, you know what? I'm I'm not well versed on that, but from from what I'm like you, as far as uh, for a novice, the non-denominational uh, non-denominational means we don't really adhere to any denominational demands. And the inter seems to be taking do, denom, denominational demands and mixing them all together. Uh, and, you know, meaning we're going to let them all stand uh, as equal and we're going to practice all of the different. Now, the problem with that is, is you probably, John, are thinking, if I have the the inter uh, or inner denominational correct, not inter, um, then there's going to be some mutually exclusive things in some of the denominations that somebody's going to have to give, right? I mean, mm-hmm. so uh, I don't know how all that would really work smoothly. So, and I don't know that if, if that's the correct uh, definition or not. I honestly am not well versed on that. Um, so, um, so what I would try to do is when visiting, the thing that I'm trying to look for the most is, is this a Bible believing, Bible preaching, Bible teaching church or not? And, and if it's not, I don't want anything right. to do with it. And if it is, then, then I probably can find myself serving there. Um, so, uh, but that's the number one thing I'm looking for. Is Bible preaching, Bible believing, uh, you know, expository. Here we go, you know, uh, and and the the Word of God wow. is what everything we do goes through. Um, so, because you know, now just because something's called Christian, it doesn't it doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. I think the last time I think it was anywhere from thirty four to thirty five or thirty nine thousand denominations now that call themselves Christian. So you you got to be very careful with that. Uh, but uh, Bible believing, Bible teaching would would be the number one thing I was looking for, and um, so uh, I I don't know that I got that definition right or not. John, is that is that is that what y'all researched? I lost Don, mm. um, but uh, yeah. I looked it up, and yeah. it, that is correct. Yeah, but yeah. but but you can see on the and I don't know I don't know the vastness of that. I don't know what yeah. that looks like on if you scale it out, but. Your basic definition was correct. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to picture the Armenians. <clears throat> I don't know how that plays I'm out. I'm trying to picture the Armenians and the Calvinists in there saying we, we, we stand on equal ground. That, uh, <laughs> the, I mean, it, and I know, and I know that, we, that, that maybe, maybe in the inner denominational, which I think is actually healthy, when it comes to some of the denominational stuff. Now, when we're talking about, we're not talking about heresy. We're, we're not talking about apostasy. We're talking about, Let's concentrate on the things we do agree on, as Paul talks about to the letter yeah. uh, in First Corinthians to the the church at Corinth, where in, and I think that's First Corinthians, first or second, when he's saying, "Look, we're not going to major in the minors, but now we are going to major in the majors." Right. Sometimes somebody uses that term. Let's don't major in the minors. Then all of a sudden you look and they're saying a major doesn't matter. No, a major always matters. Yeah. Uh, but um, so is is that kind of what we would say? We're going to agree to disagree on this one little element, but we still agree that how we're redeemed, how we're justified, how we're sanctified, uh, we we all agree that we're supposed to be making disciples, whether we believe they were already made before they were born or that somebody's going to choose it. We still know we're all supposed to be doing it. That's the way. Is I that take kind it. of way it would That's work? That's the way I take. Yeah. It. yeah okay. Um, yeah. Well, that could be healthy. Uh, Tammy and Coleman listening to ZZK. Tammy, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I've been watching football for quite a while, mm. and I thought I knew what a horse collar was. Apparently, I am poorly mistaken. Can you guys break it down? I hate to say this in English, um, and, and explain to me exactly what it is. So, on this program and only this show, <laughs> we will define interdenominational and non-denominational 
And in the very next caller, we'll talk about what a horse collar is or isn't. I like that. Uh, and, 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 uh, but, uh, well, you know, in this uh, in this case, this person was going to be horse collar before he was ever even born. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. That's a different conversation. All right, so um, a horse collar, as I understand it, is is <laughs> tackling someone, mm-hmm. grabbing up into the back part of the shoulder pads like, and jerking. Like behind your neck. Behind inside, your inside neck. Where your the collar, collar would be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then jerking you to the ground. Pulling you. But it goes a little further than that. It's mm-hmm. also the side of the shoulder pads or jersey, or grab the jersey at the nameplate or above and pull the runner down, basically pulling him from behind and yeah. in some capacity. It's yeah. not. It's not just inside the collar. Yeah, or yeah. the shoulder pads. Yeah. It yeah. can be the other stuff. Back. Right. Yeah. So did you? Uh, what, From what behind. Did, what did you see that was called a horse collar, Tammy? That you don't think it was? He grabbed the back of the top of the jersey. Yeah, that is horse collar. Not, yeah. not. Not. Not what I I was told was a what was called a horse collar. In the purest so, sense, in the purest sense, he he in the old days, a uh, horse collar would have been grabbing the actual shoulder pads. Not anymore. If they grab the area okay. jersey or shoulder pads and jerk them down from behind, it's a horse collar. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, that's that's good. Thanks, gentlemen. Y'all have a wonderful day. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> now you now matter. you wish you hadn't said to the official what you did. I, I got it. <laughs> no, I, I, she's been. I, something tells me she's been in the break room arguing with somebody. About this. <laughs> that ain't a horse collar. Hold, hold the cord. That over. ain't a horse collar. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> that's it. That's not a horse collar. Uh, so, so, so anyway, yeah. Speedy, run through there and let us horse collar you. Yeah. Oh man, that'd be hurting. Mm-hmm. How about pulling from behind? That's, that hurts. More knees bow yeah. out. Oh, I'm sure. Guys, I go back to early days of football. And again, I know at one time they wanted to outlaw it because so many people were getting killed. Yeah. They, I, I mean, they we, had to come with the forward pass. We had to, to come with the forward, We had to come up with the forward pass to stop death. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but. A lot of head injuries. Yeah. But how about I. Do you remember blocking blow the waist? Jer- oh, jerking yeah. down from all behind. That. All that. Now, we could block. Yeah. When, when I played, we could block below. I haven't seen yeah. a ton of football, but what I have seen. The players seem to be adapting a little bit. Yeah, I mean they're doing a better job of, of maybe instead of just absolutely having a blind side of maybe turning the, their shoulders the blind a little side bit. Block still getting thrown every little, little you're bit. right, but they're trying. Yeah, to get in just to get between them or take your hands. Yeah, and, who's doing better? Are the safeties coming up on maybe a, a <laughs> an inside route where the receivers up coming yeah. across them? They're doing a little bit better on yeah, take, I, taking them out. I will say if someone asked <clears> me <throat> to help and coach a team right now, <laughs> I would have to go to classes to know how to coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would I would have yeah. no idea how to do it. The game has changed so much, I would not even know how to coach it. Yeah. It's different. They don't block the way we block. They don't tackle the way we tackle. Uh, it's um, I would I would have to be trained. <laughs> and and trust me, I'm not I'm not worth that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be back. 15 minutes to the top of the hour. We'll run down stories that we may have missed uh, to wrap up the hour when the Rick and Bubba show continues. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I don't. I wouldn't say that's wise either. Can't we test it on? I dummy? mean, we put chum in the water. Here's the and dummy. It worked. Let's watch it. That's a hammerhead. This is the one that goes away from it, mm-hmm. and then it shows you one real. Yeah, but close. move around with it on. Don't. Yeah, I mean, what if? That, what if? I mean, he made us go. Well, that's just some dead something. I ain't putting with that. Get in the water and move around with it on and see how it does. Well, there's see a, how quick. Mm. Watch the keep watching it. Just saying, there's more to it. Oh yeah. So oh, do yeah. we have one that's coming on the full run and yeah. pulls away? Yeah. It's got yeah. audio, Rick. If you need it, I don't uh, know if it'll help. Now they said for the, those bu- on radio. the the boots full of chum too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Put bait in. Bright light shine in your eyes in a dark room. So how effective? Look. Are oh, shark that bags? close. Well, well that was close. Test, the creators placed a dummy on a board and filled its foot with fresh fish bait. Mm. The sharks, like as slug. you can see, can smell the food and want to get to the dummy's foot. But with the shark bands out, oh, they that. turn away just as soon as they get close. Without the device, the bait, and the foot are gone in two minutes. Oh, so they took it Other off to see if it was true. To- similar shark repelling results. Commercial fishermen use long lines to catch a, you know the whole range of fish that we're eating, and they catch a lot of sharks on accident. And so this technology was originally used to try to prevent sharks from biting the hooks so that they would only catch the fish that they wanted to catch. So what do real surfers and ocean swimmers think about this magnetic shark repellent? I've seen sharks while swimming. Mm-hmm. It's sort of scary. I, I just need it for life. I just want to, whenever I go on a trip or anything like that, I would love to have it. I feel like for surfers, hmm. that's incredible. And it's basically like an Apple watch that, that keeps away sharks. And with shark bands, the inventors assure us you won't end up like their cameras. 
But when you took the old band off, it was a new game. It was. So yeah. the, obviously, it is repelling the sharks yep. at some level. The, 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 there's so more, I'd, I'd have one at, on all the surfboards. I'd have one on both ends. Wait a minute. That, there's some more audio. Yeah, here we go. Now, what is this guy saying? Yeah, I thought I heard about the lamb. They was a lamb. So I just start growling like a lamb. Yeah, I, Right. Well, that won't. That may scare him off, may not. Right. <laughs> no, somebody here says the boy was bitten while wearing. It. Oh, buddy. We well, that's go. my point. If you, I, if you really want to impress on. me, dive in and get around them. How Brad, you doing? Brad. How you doing? Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey, guys. It's Z- better than nothing, yeah. I guess. Z ninety three Gadsting. This, go ahead. I seen this product on the evening news the other night, and they they, they did show a boy uh, that had a bandage on his arm that uh, he was bitten while wearing. You know, one of these devices. So, mm. what neat, though? It's not. It's not a cure all, is it? Well, I tell you this: what That's if he? Right. It, it, it might actually work. It might have saved his life. Yeah, but he you, might have locked in. Because here's my point. You know what work. you have though? There's sharks Wearing out there. Wearing shark though. repellent bracelet oh, yeah. for right. the first time. Teens suffer bitten by shark. Well, yeah. well, here's the deal. What we're trying to do is to repel the sharks that don't have resolve. Yeah, you're not in a steel cage. If you were in a, a magnet suit, but like it's depending on the angle he comes. Like if I got on this hand and he comes from this way. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be covered up in Still them. better than nothing. I'm having them on all fours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? And I'm going to wrap my neck. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to go in with a belt, too. <laughs> my snorkel's yeah. got one. Get on the break real quick. <laughs> I'm going with a belt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a belt. Magnet belt. Necklace. Fall in the water and sink to the bottom. I got it all. <laughs> Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. To the phones we go. Jake and Boaz. We'll try it again. Here we go. Trolling, trolling, trolling. Keep them phones a trolling. Here we come, phone trolling. Phone Phone trolling. trolling. Hello, Jake. Welcome to the program. How are you? Hey, guys. I'm good. I was going to tell you that shark repellent thing, it sets off an emission that sounds a lot like, Don't be mad. (laughs) He got it perfect. (laughs) I'm not even going to play the recorded one. That was so good. (laughs) It's awesome. I mean, he he (laughs) is the standard. That's so good. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yes. David in Decatur, 100.3, <laughs> the river. David, go ahead. Monkey grass and grain eggs. Hey! Go ahead. Have y'all, are y'all familiar with the show uh, River Monsters with Jeremy Oh, Lane? yes. 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 Oh, uh-huh. I'm a big River Monsters guy. I watched an episode the other day, and he was uh, trying to catch a tiger fish uh, because they had, there was um, a theory that they had eaten um some people that fell off a ferry. So he had checked with some ex-cannibals in Africa to see what human flesh tasted like, and they said it tasted like pork. Okay. So pork? he started fishing what? with pork. B- Bubba just gave you a timeout. Hey, pork hey, or like, cork? Pork. Yeah, I don't think it tastes like <laughs> pork. Is, <laughs> what? Is that, is that a meat I'm not I aware can't of? understand what you're yeah. saying. So, Goodness. So, that, so cannibals say. I don't want to talk to a cannibal. I don't want to go up and ask a cannibal, hey, what's human meat taste like? Uh, oh! No, I don't want to. You know why? Because you don't know what he's got planned for lunch. I know. Uh, you turn around, they say, look at that rump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best part. They say that. <laughs> Rick and Bubba to the Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Ten minutes. To the top of the hour, the Rick and Bubba Show, 866-WE-BE-BIG. All right, so uh, those of you that are emailing now, and the good news is you are responding to a a new client, I'm going to try to save us some time and just uh, pick. When I just did the Enviro Cleanse um, filters, um, sometimes we have to guess what the people writing the copy want us to know. I have no idea. Uh, why they, uh, they 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 gave us the uh, website ekpure.com. Because when the copy starts at the very top of it, it says EnviroCleanse with a K.com. And then the rest of the copy, it calls it ekpure.com. Ekpure.com does not work. Uh, it, it And now we've done EnviroCleanse.com, and it does. Uh, so uh, we, 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 we've, we've been given... Um, very confusing information by the copywriters. So um, let me let me make sure you got it right. It's EnviroCleanse.com, and cleanse is K-L-E-N-Z, okay, not C-L-E-A-N-C-E, I mean S-E, EnviroCleanse.com. So E-N-V-I-R-O-K-L-E-N-Z.com. 
Uh, we're, we're getting your emails that ekpure.com does not work, and we tried it, and it doesn't. So enviralcleanse.com does, which is what the copy's called, but then it has a different website throughout the copy. So um, I guess my attempt to try to figure out what they meant for us to say uh, was incorrect. So enviralcleanse.com, and, uh, and that's, all not, that's our fault. So there you go. Uh, that's try that. That should work great, and uh, I'm glad to hear a lot of you going after those filters because that really is a great new client. All right, so uh, here's some things that we uh, that we need to to cover. Uh, let's uh, let's let's hit some of the videos that we missed. This weird thing in Major League Baseball, uh, when uh, the the ump is about to, he's been told by the opposing team that the pitcher is touching his hair. Mm-hmm. And then going to the ball, oh, and, th- and they are they're they're concerned uh, that the pitcher um, uh, James, I don't know how to say his name, uh, that his hair has got a foreign substance in it. What well, leads to a really weird moment when the ump has to go check it. Uh, yeah. So yeah. so here we go. This game with the two strikes hit. See him messing with his hair, and then goes to the ball. Then he messes with his hair and goes to the ball. Yeah. Looks like he's got gel in his hair. <laughs> Which uh, some of them do that. I mean, that's. Do you, do you think that's a nervous tick? It does look like a nervous tick. But the Minnesota Twins coach was not happy. Throwing the ball. Try to see if you can beat him to the punch. You can hear him in the background. Right now, Rocco Baldelli is heated. Mm. All right, so now he's told him to go check his hair. And he's taking his Rocco's mad. Check, and it's the fact that he keeps touching his hair. All right, now the ump is. This, th- call for this is where it gets here. weird. All right, now he's going to want to check his hair. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I don't know the last time we've seen this, guys. Oh, right. yeah. So he's, he's checking the, the hair. Those things where you have a guy that goes Look. to the hair so much. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. And this is how. Oh, my gosh. I mean, That's so much worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> These two teams want it bad from the other one. Yes, I mean. He's, already, he's making weird faces and stuff. I think he's got kind of a tick. Mm-hmm. And you see him like, Greg. What was he doing? Greg, whoa. He was. All right. So the, watch right, him when he walks Right off. there, I kind of find myself wanting them to check my hair. Yeah. I think it would relax me. I think so, too. Hey, I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, check my hair. <laughs> oh, man. When he walks off, he does a weird little like yeah. It's like he's petting a dog. Yeah. yeah. No, so. I, I think the kid is touching his hair just out of a nervous. That's what I yeah, thought, yeah, too. Yeah. What did you see him take the ball and he did this and did this? And or, did this and Greg, okay, we got it, Greg. Or, or Greg. is he got it in somewhere obvious and he's doing the hair thing to get it, throw everybody off? It's yeah. Really on Meanwhile, it's right there in his glove. Somewhere Gaylord Perry's saying this is masterful. Yes. yes. Ooh. Yeah. That that part right there is not necessary. I, I I think part of it he kind of thought this guy's got nice hair. Oh, this is soft. <laughs> yeah, smells. I good. think he was caught off guard by how soft it was. I just read his lips. What yeah. conditioner do you use? <laughs> I did, I just saw it. This is nice, buddy. Yeah, that's weird. Um, all right. So uh, and then um, if, if you want to uh, to enjoy a little of your America, I know y'all thought we were gonna make it. I know. Come on now. How quick? If I'm head and shoulders, by the way, do I get this guy a contract? Uh, oh, real yeah. quick. Oh, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Transportation Secretary Old Pistol Pete Buttigieg uh, says uh, uh, he he is he is all about California banning new gas powered vehicles. Not gonna make any more of them, Greg. Mm. We we got to get off this stuff. Everybody got to buy of course, electric. You know, California didn't have enough power right now until people stop plugging them in at night. But well, you know what? We're going right ahead anyway. I can't even run a night light. Here comes Buttigieg. Uh, here he is uh, doubling down on this. Here we go. Uh, Here in California, recently uh, announced that by 2035, all vehicles that are new, that are sold, have to be electric vehicles or can't be gas-powered vehicles. What do you you think about that? And is that something that could be a national model? Well, it's interesting to see how the states are trying to go above and beyond what we're doing at the federal level. And uh, I'm I'm really interested to follow these developments while we continue to set a national policy that's the baseline for all of this. We need to move in the direction of electric vehicles. And look, industry's already there. At least one major automaker says they're not even planning to make uh, gas cars past 2035. But We've got to make sure that this happens quickly enough to help us beat climate change. We've got to make sure it happens affordably enough that it's not just wealthy people, uh, but uh, uh, low-income people who are the ones who know, most need those gas savings if they can afford the EVs in the first place. That's yeah. the thing. They can't afford the EVs in the first place, buddy. Well, buddy, especially when the batteries go bad. And- Let's be honest. Pete Buttigieg has already proven he picks inferior products. 
All right, so uh, <laughs> uh, he's on record. Right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's on record not to pick the right product. Yes. All right, so but uh, let's very uh, public about it. right. The um, let me say this. Let me tell you where he is completely wrong. <laughs> Adler's still giving props. <laughs> let me, am I right? Yeah. Am I right, guys? Yeah. All right, so so hey guys. Yeah. Am I right, guys? All right, so um, who did you? He where he's so wrong. <laughs> Is it is the opposite? No, we should not do this quickly and recklessly. Uh, that's the last. But he said, "Well, we got to if we're going to beat climate change." Well, no, if you do it too fast, then we're not ready to make the transition. That we even get this from Elon, uh, you know, telling us that that we can't do it yet. Right. Yeah. We look at California already telling people don't plug these in at night. We don't have enough power. The last thing we need to do, and look, if this becomes imagine a su- if everybody had one. Yeah, if this becomes a superior product, fine. But we're, we're but we're not there, and we can't be rushing to save the world and jumping everybody over. He already said they're not affordable yet, and we're not ready for the the draw on the grid. We're not ready for those things, we, and we, we you can't you can't easily and readily charge them. Uh, we've got some work to do on the electric vehicle, and we need to ease into it. When he said, "Oh, we need to get there as quick as we can," no, well, no, we can't. We, we 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 can't. That that's wrong. Uh, that you you it it is opposite. And you know, as I said, you know, the uh, listening to you on on is not not something I'm going to get fired up about. No. <laughs> you know, especially when it just happened in California, having rolling blackouts, and and they couldn't even keep them plugged in in one state. Hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine if, if all of a sudden to some of the communities you said, "Well, the gas power's gone." And they're like, we're not ready for this. No, we don't. We, 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 we came. How, 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 how much are these vehicles? Hmm. Isn't it funny how they always pretend like they're for the working man, but then on something like this, he just when they, well, we need to make them more affordable. Now, how are you going to do that? You yeah. can't just say it. So, well, how are you going to do that? It's going to take time. Plus like the, every new product. Plus, the mining of these batteries is pretty a pretty dirty process too. Yes. We're just outsourcing Disposal. our proposal. Oh, it's going to make it's going to make strip mining like nothing. Uh, thanks for being with us. Bubba, uh, looks like he will be back with us tomorrow. So, uh, we'll catch you on the next edition of the Rick and Bubba show. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba.